saying we should be live. Yo. Oh boy, oh boy, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Look, look, look. It's been less than 24 hours and I, uh, man, I've had the itch. <laughs> All uh, I can think I about back to this. These, are, these are beautiful gray eyes. I just want to hug that gator, man. <laughs> You know, there's a very real chance that this is the stream where we hug the gator. Are you ready for yeah. that? I don't know if I'm mentally prepared to finally hug the gator. I'm gonna fucking blow up. Uh, as the title says, by the way, if anything happens to Olivia, we we are ending everything. This this reality will cease to exist. I will go back to school, become a chemist slash doctor, and kill cancer myself if anything happens to Olivia. <laughs> I like how you keep saying it's cancer. <laughs> we don't even know that it's cancer. It could be some degenerative disease. It could be a second meteor. <laughs> That's not funny. That's really fucked up, Jeremy. <laughs> in lord that killed a lot of dinosaurs are you sure you want to be taking this stance <laughs> bring the meteors back what the fuck <laughs> bro that's like saying do holocaust 2 what the fuck's wrong with you oh shit alright oh. do you remember who all you were voicing uh mostly yeah okay I, think I, I forget remember. how we split up Kane's people, but sure. I yeah. mean, like, I mean, we can. I, I think I was just gonna take had... Ben again. I'll take Liz. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll work for right now until he uh, cross. Oh wait, actually, I just got a text from him. Let's see what he has to say. He will not be joining us. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he'd be working tonight. Yeah, he's on night shift all night. He says. He's what it is. All right, here we go. Well, at least compared to my old schools. Okay, wait, let's let's get like a little bit of a refresher from where we're at. So we ended off here last time being pushed into the pool. We have a happy life. We got good friends. Good friends. And we're good. fucking soaked right now. We got accepted to a, a family that isn't our own because apparently our family sucks. Yeah, our family super that, sucks. <laughs> we hate our family. Our uh, these are our carnivore parents now, and we love them. Mm -hmm. So, that was the end of last session. So, this session, we're starting at the good old September 25th. But before we actually start the day, I kind of want to say that. Go go back to the family picture real Goes quick. Go back to the family picture real quick. Well, I'm not I'm not a dinosaur expert. Sure. But they in this game they have Liz, the long neck what do they call him? Bronchiosaurus or whatever? Yeah, something like that. Brontosaurus. They, I don't know. They something. said that their uncle is the fucking beluga whale. Correct. Is that actually like etymologically true? No, I don't think so. I think this is probably <laughs> kinda like uh I don't know, maybe like family friend kind of uncle type deal. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Or maybe I see. it's yeah, like yeah, adoptive. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that's true. We don't know her situation it fully. Right, right, right. We just know that uh, Mr. Ferris here is trying to drip the fuck out, and that's all we know about Mr. Ferris. <laughs> so. All right. Cool. Answered my question. We're good. We can. All right, move all right. On. Moving, moving onwards. Dude, Ferris is a huge, huge dude. He's he's massive. It's been nearly a full month and things are starting to feel natural in school now. Well, at least compared to my old schools. Except now I've actually made some good friends. I'm pretty sure we're good friends anyways. I don't really know how to measure friendship. Outside of that party a few days ago, I haven't hung out with any of them outside of school. If friends just hung out at school, and good friends did stuff outside of school, where does that put us? Hmm. Well, still early in the school year. I'll figure out the friendship conversation uh, conversion rate at some point. It's not like I'm rushing either. <clears throat> Damn. Already? <laughs> Already throwing <laughs> me to Sally? God. Okay. Just started the day. Shades, focus! Leaving my current thoughts, I realize I've been in the middle of climbing a rock wall in the gymnasium. Huh. Why was I spacing out again? Why the earth upside down? Uh. Alright, all the blood rushing to my head. 
and we're dead. Snapped our fucking neck. It's it's over. <laughs> I don't want to go to gym class anymore, Jeremy. I feel like gym class has only caused us strife. Uh, we I got can die every time I'm in gym class. We got headshot <laughs> the first day, and now we just fell and snapped our neck on the floor. Like you can't tell me that that wouldn't have killed us, right? Like the way we fell straight head first. All right, peel yourself off my majestic gym floor and hit the showers. I don't think that was quite the voice, but eh. you mm. know, just aggressive. Whew! Made it just in time. Take my seat right next to Olivia and let myself relax for a second. Olivia is, as usual, doodling away in her notebook. I take a quick peek at her new work, curious to see who she's trying to turn into a caricature caricature today. Instead, the page is filled with various scribbles of what looks to be a rat. Right. The only piece of shatting... Shatting? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the shat and rat. not even ten minutes in. <laughs> Can we not start this early? Oh, the only piece of shading for its fur is just on its head, save for a white spot around its right eye. Looks like the same one she doodled on the note we passed around in history class. The mirrored mural shows it in various poses and scenarios. I feel like I got like some kind of like burp nestled really deep in my gut right now. Nah, yeah, shit. Whew, let me just breathe for a second. Some basic and some pretty creative. There's even one wearing a cape and wielding a ridiculously giant sewing needle like a sword. These rat doodles of yours are pretty cute. You know, I'm honestly surprised that uh, my voice isn't more croaky, given that yeah, we did I was actually, six hours of talking. I, I saw a post where people, someone was asking, like, does anybody do, like, vocal warm-ups before stream? Like, asking for stream advice. And, uh... I feel like for this kind of streaming, yeah, you might want to. It would be advisable. I, you know, I'm a dumbass, so I just cold cold start, you know, but... Yeah, these, if you're going to be speaking for a long-ass time, it's probably good to give that a little thing. Especially if you're doing it, like, day after day after day. Like, yeah, you can like kinda, if it's your thing. Right, you can kind of get away with, like, one day where you're doing, like, a fucking six-plus hour. But after that, you probably need a day to just let it rest. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna attribute my uh, lack of uh, shredded voice to like the two bottles of water I just went through like the whole night, <laughs> just casually sipping away every now and again. Give it that nice little nice little sippy. It also helps that I didn't do anything too crazy for like the more um, consistent voices. I mean, like Inko is just my voice. Narrator is just my voice. Yeah. Uh, Olivia here is just kind of like a lower. I'm like, I tried to go for us, but I don't even know if that's quite what you would go with. Yeah, well, I don't know if it was because of, like, it was just a one-off instance, but they kind of implied she had a smoker voice. Right, right. I just, yeah, I just rolled with it. It's fine. You didn't do a fucking toad voice? Yeah, no, because I know, I know a thing or two about these kinds of games. If I chose a toad voice for someone, I'm dooming myself. <laughs> Jeremy's lucky that he just chose Vinny and that hopefully Vinny never shows up again. I'm crossing my fingers so hard right now. Just, just wait till the Vinny chapter shows up. <laughs> you have ten fucking pages of dialogue all in Toad voice. You're done, kid. <clears throat> Vinny's the one who consoles you. Like, you have a major falling out with Olivia, and he's like, Hold on. <laughs> yeah, oh, turned on boy. Chris. <laughs> get ready. You're like, I'm so upset. How could I ever get her back, man? I don't know. And she's like, You know, it's okay. Life happens. There's plenty of fish in the sea, Inko. Livia really likes you. I've seen it. You just need oh. to talk to her. Elker, she's getting away. Okay, it makes it sound like fucking Olivia's a fucking criminal and Vinny's a cop now. <laughs> Get her, she's ready. <laughs> we have a suspect at large. Suspect's Watch driving us. a wheelchair. <laughs> Holy shit, she's drifting! <laughs> My god! <laughs> How is she pulling that off? Alright, I'm gonna be honest, maybe we should cut that one down. <laughs> we can't be starting hard with this, alright? <laughs> yeah, okay. We've got like six hours ahead of us, more than likely, so we need to we need to pace ourselves, Jeremy. Actually, before we start, 
I almost got in a car accident today. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah, it was freaking awful. It was a literally like a five minute commute home. And we were on like this highway. Yeah. Um, and it was really empty. It was just us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was like this uh, green truck coming after us. Uh, not like coming after us. It was in oncoming traffic, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it was coming after you though. Like you could tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, then it goes to, like, the center turn lane. You know how that, like, a highway... Right, like a, right, right. Like, an inner city highway has that, like, divide mm -hmm. to, like, turn left and stuff like that. Yep. So it goes there. So I'm like, oh, interesting. And then, like, it was, like, nagging me in the back of my mind because I'm like, there's not really a place to turn. Maybe they're, like, gonna hazard or something like that, right? Because it was just, like, a few, like, a mile or two of fence. Like, there was no, uh, like, side street to, like, turn into with there, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he's in my fucking lane. <laughs> You're I'm like, like what? wait! <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, I, I swerve into the middle. Like, we avoid. And, uh, luckily, this guy wasn't, like, out for blood or anything. Like, literally lost control of their car, went unconscious. I have no fucking clue what happened. But they just kept going like uh us drifting over like the lines and then eventually crashed into a tree <laughs> yeah so you saw a dude die <laughs> they they didn't die apparently well i don't know how many people were in the car but there were at least like two survivors or you know <laughs> they got out <laughs> okay so like did you pull over and check on them or i well we didn't check on them directly just because of how the road was i pulled right. over we called the cops I circled around like the large ass block and then when we got back around the car was on fucking fire. Holy and, fuck. Uh, yeah, the fire department put it out. We just gave our report to, I think it was a firefighter we talked to just being like, hey, this is who we are, this is what we saw. Um, we didn't see anybody actually, like personally, mm -hmm. um, like during the time of the incident just because we weren't at like an advantage to see anything. Right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we were trying to piece together what had happened. So, but we when we left the scene afterwards, when there was like a freaking traffic jam, because now everyone's like held up on the road, there was somebody like sitting on the sidewalk who could have been in the car, but also could have just been somebody. You know what I mean? And then apparently, like some other bystanders were trying to chase after someone else. <laughs> I okay. like they got out of the car and ran. Like, I honestly don't know what the fuck happened. And it was insane because not only was the car like caught on fire, but <laughs> it split in half. Like it was it was like right. a pickup truck. So the cab and the back just like split apart. So like you saw your like life flash before your eyes today. Um, I, maybe. I mean, I definitely, it felt like the reflexes of, like, things going a little slower, and I had time to react to be like, oh, get the fuck, oh. Dude, that's <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah, it wasn't, I don't know, I don't think it was really close of a call, it was just that everything was normal, all of a sudden we have an oncoming car in my fucking lane, <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. And you're like, that's not supposed to be there. Yeah. For a second, I thought you were gonna say like, "Oh, I saw them crash, and we just kept cruising, saw it explode in the rearview mirror." Like, damn, that's rough. <laughs> we gotta yeah. get home. <laughs> no, it was like that was. I think that was my first time actually like being in that kind of a situation. It was kind of freaky. Well, no shit, it was kind of freaky. <laughs> you you passed the QTE. God forbid you didn't. <laughs> Dude, I think we can play Man and Badan again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got my QTEs ready. Yeah. <laughs> my re my reflexes are, are back. <laughs> All you had to do was do a real life QT and you're like, oh, video games piss easy now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Worst that happens is I watch a couple pixels. <laughs> you know, what could have happened if I fucked up there? We do need to schedule that, though. I, I still got uh, the, the rest of the ones. trilogy right now. And I got the... Yeah. Um, what was it? The Quarry, which is um, maybe the same people who made Until Dawn. It's so funny because these games are so old now. <laughs> they, they are old, but like <laughs> they were new when you got them. Right. Well, no, not not necessarily. <laughs> oh, really... Man and Medan. Okay, so what was it? Uh, the Quarry was new, ish, mm -hmm. and 
I think Ashes of War or whatever, like the third episode in the Man of Medan series or whatever, or the Dark Pictures that's anthology. The, I think the, that was the... The Egypt one? Yeah, that's the one with the soldiers. Mm. I think that one was relatively new. It was the newest one, but I don't think it had come out just then. You know what I mean? Because I think I got it on a discount. Mm. But that's a discussion for another time, right? So... Right now we got a we, we've got a, a gator wife in front of us. Let's uh yeah, let's continue. That was my almost died detour. We we can continue <laughs> romancing a gator. Yeah, you know. <laughs> hey, you know sometimes we gotta escape reality and the. Uh, I just melted my brain. Holy shit! You ever do that? <laughs> Where like you have a train of thought and you know what you want to say, but then you just stall and you can't figure mm. out what the fuck the words you're looking for are anymore. So you just kind of sit there. And then you're like, well, fuck it. Like, part of you is just like, ah, do I just give up? No, because that's going to look weird. I got to say something. I don't know if I you... stall. Okay. It's not like sometimes I stall on purpose in the sense of like, there's a word I want and I literally can't think of it. Mm. And it, like, I'll just stop because I'm like, really bothers me that I can't think of the fucking words. <laughs> you might have heard it a couple times in like our, our calls and whatnot, where like, I'll just like start talking and I'll like, be getting ready to make a joke, but then I'll like just kind of stop and like hope nobody like decides like what were you saying? I, like I'm just like can we just leave that there? I just I couldn't finish it for whatever reason. My brain just stopped. I want to move on. <laughs> the time has passed. The time is <laughs> passed. We can't me. we can't continue this. It's gotta be over. Oh. All right, where were we? Yeah, the rat doodles are pretty cute. Rat doodle. <clears throat> All right, let me know if this Talk is uh, the right voice here. Thanks. Nah, that's not that, quite yeah, right. that's good. You got it. Is it? Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Keep going. that reminds me. Look how else I drew over the weekend. Is that it's it? Me? I think that's it. Mm. You don't gotta worry. I think it's good. Yeah, I'll, I'll refine it. I got I got uh, all stream. She flips a couple pages of her sketchbook and holds it up for me to see. Much to my surprise, it's none other than Mia. For those who can't remember, oh. Mia is the pink... Um, kind of like punk rock, maybe? Yeah, but like what kind of... They didn't specify like what animal she was. Oh, what dino? I have no fucking clue. Like she wasn't... She wasn't like a, like a shark. I mean, I thought she looked like a shark, but then she had like the tail with like all the spikes on it. True. Hard to tell. Maybe a touch it's like less. Like a triceratops kind of megalodon. Oh, maybe she was a shark. Yeah, I, I think we thought she was a megalodon at first, but I kind of changed my tune after she threatened us and like used her tail with a spike, and I was like, uh, well, <laughs> I don't think megalodons have that. They kind of just have a big fin. Is that what it's called? <laughs> like the, the shark tail? Is that a fin? Yeah, I'm sure that's a a fin. <laughs> what quantifies as a fin? I know a dorsal fin is the top bit for dolphins. Okay. And I guess sharks too. Tail fin. Those. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So it's a, it's a specification <laughs> yeah. of fin, right? So It's like pinky finger. Right. Because, index finger. because I was thinking about fucking Nemo and his little fin, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, that's not what the fucking tail is. I'm just a dumbass. That's all it is. <clears throat> so, all right. Olivia's been doodling Mia. Olivia decided to draw her as what I can only describe in the most flattering of ways as a druggy harlot. Her clothes are even more ripped than her usual attire, her jacket is filled with all kinds of unflattering patches, and her hair is styled into a gaudy mohawk that only detracts slightly from her face full of piercings and rings. In fact, she has a couple of rings piercing her eyelids to the point that I think it would be impossible to keep her eyes open from the weight. And that's not even getting into all the tattoos that Olivia has drawn on Mia's face. I can't help but let out a snicker at the sight. <clears throat> you like? She's sporting a smug grin as she looks my way. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, but how can she breathe with all those nose rings? Doesn't need to. She's full of hot air already. Yo! The girl chuckles at her own joke. <laughs> but if she saw it, steam would blow out her ears. <laughs> yeah, she'd stomp around uselessly and then do nothing else. Seems like you have a pretty good idea on how she works. She's just predictable. It's not rocket science. Oh, hey. 
We, we vaguely hey, remember these two. Saw him first day. She took a selfie with us yeah. and Ben talked to her. Yeah, 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 I got you. We're interrupted by a pair of students. I recognize them, though I only know one of their names. Oh, uh, yeah. Yo, Inko. Hey, Kumi. Or my Kumi. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not your Kumi. Yo, can she uh -oh. say that? <laughs> Is she <laughs> loud? I mean, I think we could say Dino. <laughs> my sore. So I saw you submitted for the contest, and I just love it. Love it. I don't know if this is mocking. It was so good, I just had to show it to my friend. Okay, so this is her, I think. Yeah, man. I just had to come see who made it when Lenara told me all about it. And when she told me, I was like, oh my god. I just knew when I saw you, I had... I just knew when I saw you, you had that artistic spirit. Pretty damn fantastic, even for a newbie. I'm a bit taken aback by her. Backhanded compliment. Still, it is a compliment. The first one, real one I've heard since coming to Saint Amon. About my art, I mean. Oh my gosh. I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Kiara. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. Cool. I mean, it's not that great of a piece. It's just something I had on hand. Last minute? Damn, you're selling yourself way too short there. Oh, I thought I got confused on who's who. Yeah, because we didn't know her voice... name. We knew her name. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, your work, work is absolutely gorgeous. Does, does that change your perception of the voice? <laughs> Should we do? Yeah, well, I was just like, <laughs> I don't know who I'm voicing right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, I'm thinking we should hang out sometime. Oh, Whoa! You slut. <laughs> Fuck you. Stop trying to get into his pants. Hold up a sec. We're in high school. Can we talk about how Olivia is just like side eyeing here and then is like, what? <laughs> what are y'all fucking talking about? <laughs> oh shit, the bell's ringing soon. Already. Oh. Damn. It was nice seeing you again, Inko. Keep up the great work. So is this like, were they honest? They think it was good? I don't yeah, I think they actually thought it was good. Okay, cool. I thought it was insulting the whole time. I was <laughs> you like, thought they were just shit. coming for our neck? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. Be s yeah, be soon, you real soon, Inko. Can't help but smile as my new friends, exclamation points, wave their <laughs> goodbye and depart. A heady feeling of joy washing through my head as I replay their words of praise repeatedly. In the corner of my eye, Olivia's smile reflects the overwhelming cheer I'm feeling. Though, it seems to vanish the moment I look her way. <clears throat> seems like you're becoming the talk of the school. I mean, I hoped that I'd get some positive feedback about my work, but I didn't realize it would be that good. Olivia chews her lip in contemplation before turning to me. Say, Inko, can I see your submission? Sure, give me a sec. Luckily, I'm prepared, as not only do I have my portfolio drive, but I finally set up a cloud drive for it. It's as simple as opening up the application on my phone and swiping to the exact digital copy to present it to Olivia. Wow. Ta-da! I consider it my magnum opus. Magnum opus! Finally got to say it! You keep a copy of it on your phone? I've got my whole portfolio in cloud storage. I wonder if it was a good practice from a couple artist blogs. So, what do you think? Oh, uh... Olivia shit. squints at my phone as she does her best to formulate her opinion. Yo, this is kind of mid, Inko. I don't know about this. <laughs> it's, uh, nice. Nope. The compost of is really... something. You mean composition? Yeah, that. You did great, Inko. Huh, getting a compliment from Olivia for my work feels a bit alien to me. But maybe, just maybe, this was the start of something new. Yeah, I can almost feel it now. Inko G. Nido, ace photographer capable of capturing masterpieces through a photo lens. Yeah, that has a nice ring to it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Run that back. <laughs> I don't know. 
Maybe if yeah. you chop it off there, you know? Inko G. Nito, ace photographer. His, His middle, middle name, name is G. G. What does the G stand for? Incognito. Oh, God. Fucking damn it! <laughs> <sighs> God, that Flip fucking... That, that pisses that. me off. That pisses me off so bad. <laughs> did either of you not see it going there? I'm pretty sure Jeremy did. I'm just a dense fuck. Oh, shit. Can we stop owning me on my own stream? <laughs> Please. This is supposed to be my turf. I'm supposed to be the big dog here. Why do I feel like the little guy? <sighs> All right, yeah, let's continue. Olivia must see my self-congratulatory grin because her own drops. All right, you did good. Don't let it get to your head. And the grin remains. Oh, I'm letting it get to my fucking head. You don't know, Olivia. Ooh. Dude, I'm so fucking good right now. I had three different people praise me. Are you kidding me? I'm riding this dopamine rush to the grave. On top of the fucking world. When the grin remains, she forces it off by elbowing me in the chest. <laughs> Why aren't you? That's gonna leave a bruise. With that exchange behind us- Oh yeah, remember that Olivia's strong enough to just catapult Vinny into the pool, so like, that elbow probably did break a rib. <laughs> With that exchange behind us, Olivia and I get ready for class. Duh! That's a bend over level of troll and you got caught. Yeah, guess what? I'm really, I'm really foolish, you see. Especially when I'm streaming and my brain isn't working at full capacity. I'm going like autopilot when I'm reading here, all right? <clears throat> As was the norm by now, Mr. Yadakan began class with some violent abuse of school property. Good morning, good morning. Now settle down, we've got announcements to go over. I sit back in my seat, subtly feeling at the spot where Olivia smacked me to check. What? Owie. Oh, yeah, okay. Don't understand that. Yep. Bruise. Sheesh. As the pale pterodon continued on reading from the announcement sheet like he did every day, I found myself lost in my own thoughts. Nothing else really happens that I'd consider out of the ordinary. Things that are new, like the school itself, are finally starting to become mundane. Later at lunch. Yeah, it's lunch. Look, the smile's becoming the default. Let's go. That's actually nice. <laughs> Later at lunch, I'm rattling off my best stand up to Olivia while Damien's out getting seconds. Lizard retreated to her usual space in the rafters. And then he says, Oh, god damn! <laughs> Olivia's hand flies to her nose, trying and failing to contain the snort filled laughter. It sets off a chain. What kind of story? <laughs> I, I don't know, like. I'm, I'm sure there's something that I can think of that would be funny where if I, I finished it off with, oh, God damn, you know, and people would mm -hmm. laugh. Ugh. Gotta readjust myself in my chair real quick. It sets off a chain reaction as my own laughter spills over my mouthful of cheap school burger. I had a burger tonight. Nice. Motherfuckers skimped out on my shit, though. I like I, I got I asked for like fried bacon and truffle aioli and they didn't give me either. So like I was, that was four dollars that went to waste. That kind of fucking yeah. sucked. I, there's this burger place near me where, uh, I haven't gone in a while, but there was this like period of like three visits, and they got my order wrong every fucking time. Oh shit. See, th this uh, burger place that I'm talking about, it's got my order wrong twice, and it's in like like over such a long span that it like it happens between that the first couple times after they get it wrong i check the orders right and then i get complacent and then later i just get smacked in the face i'm like this isn't my order <laughs> fucking <laughs> god damn it like it'll be burgers you know it'll be both the burgers and some fries but then it'll be like oh man they forgot something yeah literally okay so mine is like <laughs> I just want a crispy chicken sandwich. Uh -huh, like, literally, uh -huh. this was called on the menu. Um, put an egg in it. Put a fried egg in it. So the first time, um, what happened? I said crispy chicken sandwich. 
and I guess it was loud, maybe I mumbled, but the fact that I said crispy in the front added a word, quote unquote, they thought I said spicy. So I got a spicy chicken sandwich that day. Okay. And I was like, fuck. And then the second time, what did they fuck up the second time? Did I even have an egg in that? I feel like I didn't have an egg with that because it was a group order too. So I think they lost the fact that I wanted an egg in it. Okay, got it. And then the second time, I didn't get an egg in mine, but it was a normal chicken sandwich, which was like closer. And then I lied. It wasn't three times because the third time I just got a fucking burger because <laughs> I didn't have faith they'd get it right. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you. <laughs> uh. And I haven't been since, actually. <laughs> you said, back. this is the final straw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm done. You guys had you, you, you three strikes. You're out, motherfuckers. And mo- you just struck out. <sighs> All right. Ooh, that's the final crisp. <laughs> you know, Jeremy, I really do need to get on that model because I- I've said it before. A lot of like my mannerisms are me doing something to my face, like mm-hmm. reading oh, okay. something and then putting my head in my hands for a second, you know, and that doesn't you- come across that just... <laughs> That actually would put a new dimension for me too, not just your viewers, because I get I, I feel your your size, your inhales, but I never knew you'd like touch your face. Oh yeah, no, sometimes I'll just, like if something happens in a game that I'm like, no, I'll just go, oh, oh. <laughs> and I'll have both my hands on my face up under my glasses, just rubbing like oh, no, man. But ugh, okay refocus okay <laughs> god you suck at comedy Inko Olivia drinks greedily from her canteen to alleviate her so her sore vocal cords the vodka canteen is that why you're all out of breath it was a pity laugh stick to <laughs> photography <laughs> got a better one day, Joe. the mood is slow to settle but once Olivia has caught her breath she speaks with a snide smile in fact, I do. So, a Triceratops, a T-Rex, and a Rhinorex, Rhinorex find a lamp. Her mouth clamps shut and eyes go wide. A live? <clears throat> oh, what, what voice did I do for Ben? I don't know, but Kane gave him a nerdier voice yeah. than you did. Well, I think I gave him kind of like... <clears throat> okay. Ah, perfect. I was looking for you too. Olivia casts her eyes down to her lunch, spearing her mystery meat roughly with a talon. And here's the Ben Dover. Is his last name Dover? Because I'm gonna fucking punch somebody if that's the case. <laughs> I no, I don't think so. I think his name's something like Long. Hey, <laughs> Long. <laughs> hey Ben, what's up? I figured I'd come by and congratulate you on your submission entry. This again? I mean, it is my best piece, but all the praise for it is still surprising. It's exhilarating, all these compliments and everything. Uh, thanks, man. That's kind hey, of maybe I'll be the winner of the contest. What do you think, Olivia? The Green Gator girl flinches. Ben shakes his head. Also, Olivia, great to catch you here. Principal Scaler wanted me to remind you that you need to clean up after yourself. Leaving messes in classes can disrupt students in other periods. Scaler said that? Why not tell Olivia herself? She's busy and tired of reminding you. Olivia scoffs at the mention of our principal, yet keeps her mouth firmly closed. Must not be that important, then. Inko, I just spent my entire second period cleaning up her mess because she's not taking anything seriously. I'm not supposed to be Scaler's errand boy, and I'm certainly not supposed to be a personal janitor. I'm left to frown at Olivia giving Ben the silent treatment. Is it wrong of me to think she'd be more open with everyone else like she is with me? Hey, turning into... I forgot his name already, but the pink dude. Damien? Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to scrub baking soda out from the carpet once it's dried? Baking soda? Can you just try not to make other people's lives harder? Ben? 
I put my arm over his chest. Step back. <laughs> Damn, Ben's getting a little aggressive. Ben, what the hell? I... I didn't mean that. I went too far. S sorry. Olivia tries shooting me an indifferent gaze. Cracks a bit into embarrassment when I don't return it. Ben's comment is completely uncalled for. I can't just stand around if she's not even going to defend herself. Come on, Ben. Leave her alone. My point being, Olivia, this is completely ridiculous. I expect better from you. Expect? I can't have expectations for her. That came out a little wrong. <laughs> well, I expect her to do the bare minimum and not waste my time. Olivia doesn't even bother looking at Ben. Instead, she's looking at me with that sad face until she quietly wheels away from us. I think I went a little too far there. Man. Man. He pinches his brow and sighs. I'm left standing here with the student council present. I wonder what I had done that earned me Olivia's ire just now. That bad? Mia really wanted me to have lunch with her today. She's definitely going to give me an earful after school. He glances at his phone and grimaces care? at the notifications. Well, Mia's his girlfriend. <laughs> and why is... Oh, with her as in Mia. Okay. Right. Spoke too soon. She's giving me one now. Well, you should probably grab your lunch while there's still time. Ben glances up at one of the clocks in the, cl in the lunchroom. There's only about ten minutes of lunch left. <sighs> You're right. But the lines usually close five minutes ago. His fist hammers his palm in epiphany. Oh! You use the vending machines out there, right? Anything good there? I've been enjoying the Atomic Hot Taquitos recently. But Damien tells me he's a bigger fan of the Bitter Melon Bites. Bitter Melon it is. I don't think my tail could handle that amount of capsaicin. Ben gets up from his seat. Alright, I'll go check it out. Let's... One of his feet gets caught on the stool and he stumbles head first. Uh oh. <laughs> right into Damien's tray, stacked high with mystery meat. Oh, you messed with his meat. I expect her to do a pit maneuver. I will have expectations. <clears throat> okay. Jeremy? Yeah. Do you think Damien's gonna get mad? Damien's a pretty understanding guy, and we haven't talked to him, so I don't think he's but, agitated right but now. But the meat got knocked over. Oh, the meat did get knocked over. He likes his meat. I'm ready to be angry. All right, psych yourself up. What the fuck, Ben? Oh, he face, he face plants guy. right through the tray and onto the floor. On the bright side, the mystery meat cushions his fall. On the dark side, the mystery meat cushions his fall. Well, Ben, you all right? Hey, Susie. I jump from my seat and go to help him up. Ugh. Instinctively, I take a look around the cafeteria. All eyes are on us. I already hear it starting. Various murmurs about the safety of student council president. Murmurs that start breaking into jeers. I know how this song and dance goes. It's over for Ben. He gets up and dusts off his blazer. Not exactly what I meant when I said meet and greet Damien. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. All of a sudden, the entire attitude of the cafeteria shifted before my eyes. The jeers were deflected into a general amusement that permeated throughout the room. One of the nearby students stands up and hands him a few napkins to wipe his face off. Hey, thanks. I'm saying he managed to stay composed while covered in school mystery meat. Both impressed and jealous. You okay? Thought you couldn't eat meat. Nah, even if I swallowed any, it'd take a lot more than that to really be an issue. I'll be fine. Thanks for the concern, though. Even as he brushes off the lunchroom grime, Ben carries himself with dignity. If that had been me. This guy's some seriously quick wit. No, there's probably a little more to it than that. Man, I was looking forward to eating that. Why on earth did you even have that much meatloaf? 
<laughs> I asked the cafeteria lady early this morning to let me have the leftovers. <laughs> Although, now it's gone a bit to waste. Damn, Dover is the main character. He's suave, that's why he pulled Mia. <laughs> he eyes up the remains on the floor. Some poor janitor is gonna have to mop all that up. Maybe. Don't even think about it. But I could. But it's such good meat. The floor's not that dirty, right? Dude, I could not imagine eating anything off of a school floor. Oh, totally. It's either it's either just plain like straight chemicals or COVID 8.5. You know what I mean? The bell signaling our next class tolls. The fist fights and gang wars cease on command, and everyone starts milling towards the exits. Five second rule, besides it was on a it was on a hot boy's face. Uh-oh. <laughs> Are we employing the hot boy rule? The, the I mean, it's not just hot boy, it's hot girl too, right? The attractive person rule, I think we'll call it. The cafeteria empties enough that I can see, I can clearly see the Ben shaped meatloaf angel on the floor. Damn, how much meat was there? There's a shit ton of meat. There's a familiar rubbery and textured feeling on my fingertips. My instincts have kicked in. Hands going for my camera to capture the moment. After which a sense of shame rolls over me. I don't even consider capturing something like this, especially when it's happening to my friend. I get up from my seat with a heavy sigh and finally head for my next class. No, nope, Ben will have the time to clean up before photography. He's got five minutes. On my way to photography, I'm still a bit caught up by what had just happened. I think I'm starting to see how Ben accomplishes that, or accomplished that. I mean, ordinarily an incident that embarrassing would be just detrimental to your social standing. That photo would have been juicy. Class president, face plants into meat pile. Here's the scoop. Nothing fucking happened. <laughs> On my first day, I went through something like that. An event so humiliating, people were spreading rumors for days. Sure, they died out pretty quick, but the fact is, it happened. One moment everything's fine, then suddenly something you couldn't have ever seen coming just upends your life. Stuff like that can happen all the time, and to anyone. It's something that's always terrified me. Something that just happened to Ben, only... He was exempt. He was quick on his feet, and fused the situation faster than it could have even really started. It's like... Disaster avoidance. I seriously think it's the most important skill one can have. To have everything under control. To see trouble from a mile away and make it a non-issue even when it takes you by surprise. That sort of social capital is something I need. Maybe it's a little selfish, but if I were seen that way, then any sudden happenings would be forgiven instantly. Of course, Ben isn't alone. The world is full of people with that skill. Only I'd be lying if I said most of them deserved it. Most people able to get away with stuff use their unique ability for just that. Getting away with stuff. What should be seen as a blessing of social buffer is just some enabling trait of theirs. A charismatic get out of jail free card. If I had that ability, I'd use it to push myself to my limits both artistically and productively. That's my ultimate goal. Ben is one of the good ones, definitely. He's definitely earned my respect over this. The question remains, though, how do I get like that? That line of thinking is caught up as I run the next corner. I need to be really cool. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. Uh, did we have anybody voicing Mia? I think we did. I kind of did. Wanted to talk to you, Olivia. At the center of the hallway intersection, I see Mia and Olivia. She's a shark. Oh, come <laughs> come to fuck now, Olivia. Don't be such a killjoy. I, I don't feel like that's... I feel like this could be like, worded come differently. come to fuck on now? Yeah. 
I'm trying to be nice here. Hey, wait, it's uh, Kiara and Lunara, right? Oh, it is. Yeah. The grin on Mia's face is jovial as she stands before the wheelchair-bound girl, her tail lazily swaying as she eyes Olivia. And I never realized how lethal those spikes on her tail look. After all, <laughs> have to be nice to someone as talented as Livia, don't I? Behind her are a pair of similarly smiling Saurian girls. Actually, Actually, wait a minute. I know them. Those two. They're Mia's friends? I mean, she knows her way around a paladin campus. Right, Livia? A paraplegic Picasso here. Dino Picasso. <laughs> That's you, right? I can't imagine how useless you must feel otherwise. You know, I would feel the need to step in if I didn't already know that Olivia could just like fucking tail swipe all of them and chop them in half. <laughs> I'm so glad you're able to put those thoughts aside and paint some things you like. Mia takes a oh, step towards Olivia. The doodle or something? Probably. <laughs> Her previous expression taken on a more ominous air. Yet, for all that talent and untapped potential, you seem to lack some basis, basics expected of a functioning young adult. Mia's lips part, revealing a cruel grin. I hear you've been really <laughs> dirty, messy little baby, leaving your stuff everywhere in class and getting it all over the place. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Oh, no, this is man. the weirdest bullying. It should stick you in a cute little bit. Kara and Lunara laugh, jeering loudly at Olivia. Mia snaps her fingers, causing the two of them to go quiet. Oh god. I still don't want to believe it. Those two. They're so nice to me. What are they doing with Mia? I know them. They're smart. They know if this is what it looks like, it's horrible. And they're not the kind of people to punch down like this. But they all decided to do this, right? So, what's going on? Is there more to this situation? Mia takes another step forward, her figure now looming over Olivia as she looks down with a cruel sneer on her lips. Normally I wouldn't waste my time trying to single you out, but I'm gonna use this moment to make you get the picture. Benny was supposed to join me for lunch, but he had to stay behind and clean up after your mess. You got your issues. You can't ride a bike, whatever. That's your fucking problem. Stop making it mine, Livia. Or do I need to start being a problem for you? Let's see, there's those tail spikes. I mean, it's just Dino Shark. I'm sure they had tails. Yeah, sharks. does Ben look like your nanny? Well, she does come pre-packaged with the stroller. Come on, Mia. That's crossing the line. It's not like she can stand up to you or anyone. What? I'm just chatting with Liv here. They, they're all smiling. This is they're in on it. Okay, they're sorry. Oh, oh absolutely. But if I did hurt your feelings, I'm really, really sorry. You, you know what? You know how we could destroy them right now? Mm -hmm. Reaches into my bag, pulls out my camera. Wouldn't want this getting out, would you, ladies? Too bad this isn't a camcorder. Kara's beak clicks loudly and repetitively, while Lunara's hand covers her maw to hide a giggle. Oh, don't take it so personally, Livia. I'm just teasing you. Right, Liv? We're all one big happy family here. Lord knows some of us could use one. What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't... I don't even know how to respond to that. I want to hear both sides of the story here. What history me and Olivia have for a confrontation like this? I think getting this upset over her missing lunch with Ben is extreme. Mia's friends remain by her side. Completely steadfast against Olivia. Is it that bad? Did like Ben and Olivia have history or something? Uh, maybe? I mean, they at least knew each other for a while. 
because like Ben was like, oh, you're hanging out with Olivia. Well, because I'm, I'm like trying to figure out why Ben and Liz have like a negative impression of Olivia. I'm thinking for Liz, it's because Damien cares so much about Olivia and Liz likes Damien. Mm -hmm. Ben, the only thing I could think is maybe they like dated in the past or something or were close yeah. in the past. And now because Mia's with Ben, she feels like this need to, I don't know, I guess put her in her place or something. To be honest, I know that is actual bullying, but you'd think Olivia wouldn't be that easy to push around using a disability card. Yeah, I mean... I don't think Olivia... I mean, it doesn't... It's hard to tell if she even cares right now or if she's just like, whatever, just get this over with and we'll keep moving on here. Because, like, what's she going to do right now? Like, lash out and attack? You know what I mean? That's just going to paint her in a bad light. And yet, Olivia says nothing to her. She has her head atop her knuckles of her hand, like I would during Prockling's history lessons. There were moments where Olivia's tail would press into the floor, shifting her chair back or to the side. It looked like she was attempting to sidestep the conversation with that muscular tail, but Mia's own movements cut her off, cut off her escape attempts. Mia returns the calm stare. There's no motion, but the staring contest was a fight in its own way, and the first to look away would lose. Olivia's frigid indifference against Mia's piercing gaze. Bozo moment. Kira ends up dropping her phone and both glare at her simultaneously. A draw. Hmm. Sorry, I was just like thinking they're like they're staring at each other, but I'm like, they couldn't change the eyes for this scene. Just, you know. Yeah. Is anyway. <laughs> Kiara, I swear I'll kill you one of these days. <laughs> Olivia takes the opportunity to move past Mia. Bye. Mia takes no time to toughen her stance and continue her spew of insults. What? Leaving so soon? Don't you off class? <laughs> Don't you guys got somewhere to be? <laughs> no response. And so quickly, that's almost normal walking speed. Man. Like, I would have stepped in at this point, you know? Like... Dude, just fucking cool it. Like, your boyfriend wasn't able to hang out with you. Big fucking whoop. I was honestly thinking, you need a cooler nickname to go with your need for speed. Hot wheels. <laughs> In an instant, oh, that Olivia actually got her. Stops to a, squeak, a squeaking halt. Ooh, why did that strike a nerve? I don't know. Maybe her parents got killed in the car crash. Maybe. Gone was her stoic face. In its place were her eyes wide with shock. How the hell? Olivia's pace falters. Mia quickly steps ahead and places a foot on her left wheel. Because she's hot, duh. <laughs> Real. <laughs> you brain-dead, fin-head friend took me, told me back in gym class. <laughs> took me back in gym class. Damn, Davey, what the <laughs> oh, fuck? Oh shit, damn. <laughs> He went on about how you had it back when you were still soiling your diapers. Oh, she was just playing with Hot Wheels? Honestly, I think you should embrace it. Hot Wheels are cool. They are cool. So say it. Well. I played with Hot Wheels. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Are you... Stupid bitch, fucking say it. It's okay. It's 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 like when you see the the the, the word in an old book. <laughs> You're allowed to say it right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that's how that works. God, do you need <laughs> fucking speech therapy too? Say it. <clears throat> Hot Wheels. What is going this on is really here? Hot Wheels. I don't know. See, I knew you could do it. Kind of fitting. I agree with half of it. 
Olivia's claws dig into her armrests. Maybe it's that's the nuance. The point is, only half of it works. Inko, my oh god, my please god. step in and Why are you say just something. This? Mia turns to look at Kiara and Lunara, eliciting some more giggling from them. I'm sure you wouldn't mind making it cool again, though, right? I mean, you were such a winner back then. Mia leans in close, her voice now a harsh stage whisper as she glares daggers through Olivia. What's wrong, Hot Wheels? <laughs> Don't want to talk anymore? Am I not good enough for you? What is going on? Even from afar, I can tell Olivia is starting to lose her composure. Her tail lies li lays limp on the floor, as if the energy to hold it was drained away. Oh my god. <laughs> I think this is bullying. Oh my god. I didn't want to believe it, but it is undeniable by now. This is textbook bullying. It's unfair. Dentist, it's like when you're dude. in line to use the restroom after hours and hours of waiting and someone cuts in front of you. Completely inexcusable. What the fuck? Is this the part where I should step in? What do I even say? I have to at least try, right? Inko, what the fuck? Yeah, no shit, you dumbass. It's my duty as a fellow student. Man, this is like bullying. You know when you have to use the bathroom real bad? So fucked up. <laughs> yeah, as they're like verbally harassing her. Maybe I don't need to say anything at all. Just being present for Olivia against the horde. It certainly wouldn't help if I got an even bigger target on my back from Mia. Fuck it, I don't care. Let her come. <laughs> Me Olivia is your friend. Help her. Olivia wrenches herself free from Mia's foot and continues down the hall. They just fall like vultures. Oh, man, I need to think and act fast. My legs move on their own and I cross into the hallway. I'm instantly noticed. Mia's already registered my presence and her expression changes. My heart starts beating quicker and harder. Time's up for being indecisive. Ooh. Defend! You know, I haven't felt the need to do this, but I'm just going to drop one right here. Hmm. Sounds good. So I'm trying, I'm like, we're trying to weigh the options here, right? Obviously defend is like a pretty clear choice, but is there any drawback to it? No. We don't really know their history and I don't know what the fucking Hot Wheels thing is about. And so if we try to defend without knowing like the context, is it just going to make things worse? Oh, I see what you're saying. What would be support? Would you just like, let's get out of here, Olivia. You don't need to hear this. Something like that. Yeah, you know what? Fucking Inko is so fucking dumb. If he were to defend Olivia, he would not say anything right. He barely said anything right when things were going okay back at the party. Right. That's why I dropped the save, because I'm like, oh, I don't know. This is one of those things where, like, you could work either of these, but it just depends on what fucking Inko decides. Defending Olivia, he'll be something like, you girls gotta stop it right now. So yeah, maybe she can't use her legs. Yeah, maybe she does look like a fucking Hot Wheel, but that's not the point. <laughs> that's like exactly what he would say. I think, I think defend, I think I'll go with defend because like one of the, like, obviously there's some kind of history here, right? But the issue is that they're targeting her specifically like around her disability, which is just fucked. Yeah. So like you can defend against that, like, yeah, defend. Screw it. If Livia's not going to defend herself, then I will. Livia needs my help Definitely here. Definitely won't appreciate that. Support will just be pity at this point. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, generally. Oh, hey, what's going on here? Yo, he got the stance. <laughs> yeah, stance up, motherfucker. You got that wingspan. Oh, good lord. It's basic Baldy coming to save the day now. It's like, uh, it's like when a... <laughs> It's like with those dinos that fucking flare up their frills to make them seem bigger. I gotta, I gotta look big right now. Yeah. Piss off, new guy. You won't score any points doing this. I grit my teeth. As if this were for popularity. Luckily I know what to do in this situation. 
Hey, I can go to a teacher right now. This is how my classmates treat each other. I'm disappointed. God, this is like right from the infomercial. Especially you two, Lunara and Kiara. Kiara and Lunara look a, uh, aside a bit. More aware of their situation now that I pointed it out. You know him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me Lunara's gotten cozy with him. But come on, dude. We weren't ganging up on Olivia. <laughs> You were! I saw all of it! You- how you all bullied her! Bully? Really? Mia spits out the word bully like it's the word of the day in kindergarten. So it makes German me feel dinos, silly German for saying dinos. it. <laughs> you, are you- do you feel vindicated? Yeah. <laughs> you gonna tell me to pick on someone my own size next? But, oh, he got you! Did you even <laughs> hear me? I said I'd go get a teacher. All my people, my own size. I think I killed that. She didn't even hear. She didn't even listen to you. <laughs> Kidding. You really need to loosen up, huh? Are you ignoring me? I said. I heard you the first <laughs> again. <laughs> she likes slinging that one around. <laughs> really? No wonder she's making fun of disabled people. Instead of repeating yourself over and over like a freaking idiot, how about you try a threat that actually scares me? Suspension doesn't scare you? <laughs> my my fucking screen judged, uh, stuttered for a bit and just said sus. For like a <laughs> sus. <second>. <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> Let's just call it friends in high places. Look, just cut Olivia some slack. Shut that gullet of yours. Hey Olivia, I think your paladin here hasn't graduated night school yet. What? He wouldn't <laughs> like it if you were you. I, I think he's doing it. I think he's doing the. If you were in her shoes, you would not like this, right? Now. He's like. God, Eko, you're so like fucking the, bad at this. The elementary school, like, anti bullying uh, fucking video. Yeah. He's just, like, re replaying it in his head. Shit, what do I say next? Try something that scares me next time. Sus! Sus! Mia Sus! Eject now! You wouldn't like it if I were you. Mia laughs. Dryly. Why the fuck are you trying so hard? It's hilarious. Are you trying to get a piece of that leathery gator tail? What? What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> fuck, exactly that. <laughs> Let me slip something that works into those pants. <laughs> can I just get into a fight? Can I, can I just throw hands? Am I allowed to do that? I don't care if I get my ass beat at this point. I'm done. This is so fucking annoying. The other two start chortling again. Mia's forced me lower on the social skills. They're compromised. My face heats up, I'm starting to see red. Yet I'm frozen in place. How can she just claim something like that without hesitation? Oh my, he's not responding at all. His head is so red, he's totally gumping into gumping it. This... this was a mistake. No, it's for Olivia. They're not focusing on her anymore. I can still fix this. Take a step forward and continue my argument, but Olivia grabs me by the wrist. She gives me a pleading look, one that makes me, my thoughts stop in their tracks. Oh, isn't that sweet? See, she knows you shouldn't be embarrassing yourself more than you already have. Is this true? She gives a single solemn nod. How touching. Hey, it's getting late. You gotta clean up your fucking act or what? She glares at me, then back, then to me, then back. Another single nod. Oh, so I can base, I can try basically anything with you and it's no dice. But when things get rough for him, things change. Good to know. Oh no. The three saunter off and round the corner. I turn to look at Olivia, who in turn scowls and wheels past me without a word. I reach out to her. Olivia. <laughs> Olivia, are, are you? you? I know. She it smacks wasn't my me, hand just... away. No. I'm sorry. It's just that I couldn't sit back and let Mia trash talk you like that. Olivia stops in her tracks for a moment, her head turning back towards me. In her eyes, I don't see anger or sadness, only disappointment. 
I just... Her citrine eyes are downcast, her claws kneading the cheap leather of her armrest. It takes me a second to realize he isn't talking to me. Forget it. Olivia doesn't even wait for me to say anything back to her request. Her arms push roughly on the rims of her chair, which takes off down the hall, without so much as giving anything or anyone the time of day. I kind of want to see what the alternate route looked like. Yeah. Like, what does support do here? Yeah, so, this is the first time we had a branch like this. As much as I wanted to go off on me and her posse, Olivia wouldn't want me to try standing up for her again. I wonder I tr how I tried to handle it with Ben. Besides, I'd probably thump the words and make myself look like a fool anyway. So there's really not much I can do. What I can do is nothing. Say nothing, do nothing, just wait for Olivia to pass by. She stops a bit in confusion, but quickly remembers she's currently on the run. When she passes by, I follow her down the same hallway, slowing my pace to be slightly behind her. Olivia turns to look at me with equal parts surprise and dread. I think a part of her fears that I'm about to say or do something really stupid. Instead, I didn't really give a warm smile. To be picked on by that many people at once, all certain they're going- all certain they're doing nothing wrong. It's terrifying. It's moments like this, she should know that someone's got her back. Even if I have nothing to offer, at least the playing field will be less one-sided. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. that makes no- this makes no sense. I, f I personally, I feel like the def defend Olivia options better, but Inko's just not the guy to do it, I guess. Yeah. Also, the music is saying otherwise. This was the right thing to do, It apparently. seems like it, right? Now that she has someone beside her. The hell? Hey, I know that jacket. And I know that bullseye for a head from a mile away. The group starts following behind us. Olivia glances over to me and I return another small smile. Well, well, if it ain't Baldy. Coming in to save the day or something? I don't respond. Instead, I keep my head forward and keep on walking with Olivia. That seems to catch me off, a bit off guard. And I can hear the gears in her head and her mind visibly start to turn. Hey, I'm talking to you, Hot Wheels. Sounds of shuffling boots start to gain on us. <laughs> Run! Just because you have Baldy here to protect you doesn't, uh, isn't gonna save your hide. Hide? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Neither of them are any of your dipshit friends. Oh, fuck. I can see Olivia's claws digging into her arm rest of the nickname, but otherwise she maintains her apathetic leer. The more we walk, the more obscenities Mia keeps blurting out to try and get a rise out of either of us. This is it. <laughs> this is why you don't have any real friends. You skipless salamander. I don't know if Olivia has a plan, because I can't fully understand why she's letting Mia walk all over her like this. But I remain steadfast and believe that she knows what she's doing. That's all I really can do. Who'd even want to be with a cripple like you? I think maybe earlier when they were talking about how Mia's just full of hot air and she's not really even gonna do anything, that was supposed to be a hint to not, like, go at her. Just uh, let her maybe. fucking go off. Mm -hmm. I can hear Mia laughing at her own words. Olivia, please change your mind and waste this bitch. Ah, so you got something to say now, Hot Wheels? She shrugs. That's how you feel, Mia. What? Olivia doesn't say anything else. She only turns around and begins to wheel herself down the hallway. For a moment, I stand in place and watch as Mia tries to process what happened. Even her posse looks confused, unsure of what to say. Uh, you, you really got her, Mia? Y yeah, definitely showed that leathery bitch. Mia jerks her head to their cohorts and glares at them, angered by their pity comments. Then she stares me down with obsidian daggers in her eyes. Oh, that's my cue to leave. With the grace of a headless chicken, I scramble down the hallway to catch up with Olivia. Rounding the corner, there's no Olivia to be found. Where'd she go?
I suddenly hear Lunara's voice echoing down the hall, followed closely by Mia's. Mia, what are you doing? Get back here, you fox! <laughs> oh no. Oh no no no. Not alone, not with them. Dread fills me as I hear the pursuing predator's heavy footsteps approach me. I'm grabbed from behind. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm- Whoa! Suddenly I'm violently pulled aside, right into the school's elevator by the collar of my jacket. Oh thank god it wasn't Mia. She jams the key into the slot and smashes the, s the button to the second level. As the doors close, we hear Mia roar out for us. Next time I see those two again, I'll make sure that oversized cue ball has to use that wheelchair of hers instead. Thankfully, the elevator doors close shut, and the car jerks upwards before making its ascent. I knew I'd feel grateful to be in this death trap. <laughs> Just saw her run by. <laughs> yeah. As I catch the breath I had unknowingly held, my eyes aligned with a pair of silver serpentine eyes. Hmm? I, uh... I appreciate what you did for me back there. I'm surprised. Not sure what to say back, really. Said I smile back and nod. In return, she gives me a half smile before recomposing herself. You should, uh... Go with me in the elevator now. How come? Well, you've just become enemies with her. If she sees you, you'll be a wad of gum under her boot. Oh... Joy. Yeah, your best bet is just to avoid her now. This way you stay out of the hallways. I appreciate it. Don't mention it. Wait, the elevator will stop Mia from beating the snot out of me in the entire rest of the school? Yes. Alright, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> we hear the small electronic bang of the elevator and the doors slide open. History class is as bland as it usually is. So yeah, it looks like... Yeah, we're keeping this one. Yeah, it looks like the defend option was the wrong call. Again, I hold that it's only the wrong call because Inko doesn't know how to fight back. <laughs> yeah. He's not much of a wordsmith, let's be honest. But we should have known that. He was just like verbatim, like, you wouldn't download a car kind of situation. <laughs> yeah... It would have been easier to like lay into Lunara and Kiara as well though, you know? Like, cause yeah. obviously they were like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Proclam we continues prattling on about some sort of historical event. But most of my attention is on Olivia. She has her hoodie over her head and looks lost in thought. That altercation must have shaken her up more than I had thought it wouldn't be. Shame on me for trusting in a guy called Incognito. <laughs> Shame on us all. <laughs> Why is his name Incognito? I think it's supposed to be like anonymous. Not like because I think oh, uh, I think in the sense. Snoot game, like it's like supposed the main character's name is supposed to be like a play on anonymous. So this one's just Incognito. Anon. Yeah. Part of me Reaches wants to ask if. Part of me wants to ask if she'll be okay, even though I'd already asked three times already. <laughs> Too many alreadys in that sentence. I imagine that's in rapid succession too. Yeah. Can you be okay? You sure you're good? Can you be okay? Yeah. Everything good? Okay, okay, okay. But the last thing I'd want to do is prod at her. Soon enough, class nears its end, and Olivia uses her accommodation to leave the class early. Besides, we can talk about it after school if she wants to anyways. The more I think about it, the more I realize that I had my first real confrontation with a bully at a school. I would yeah. heard once that when you get into a fight for the first time, you throw up from the adrenaline. No fists were thrown, but I feel about the same right now. I wring my hands together to try steadying them. Jeez, I'm a wuss. I stood up to me with Olivia and I end up in this mess. The final class ends and I'm set free for the day. Stepping out of St. Haman's main entrance, I'm surprised to see my friends huddled together in a tightly knit group. I usually don't see any of them after school. I always assumed they left as soon as the bell rang. 
Hey guys, what's going? Inko. I mean, looks exceptionally worried as he glances at me. Inko, you believe me, right? Oh, right, because the meat? No, Damien uh, mentioned something to me. I remember. Oh, about the yeah. Uh huh. Pardon? Olivia's nostrils flare with an exasperated snort. I didn't mean for any of that to happen. What's, uh, what's the matter, Damien? When Mia asked about that nickname stuff from so long ago, I just blurted it out. She said she'd use it for something... I didn't think... Oh, she didn't say she'd use it for something so unscrupulous. Never expected a word for Damien to say <laughs> Jeez, Ben, maybe, but Damien? Yeah, I'm ashamed it took me more than a moment to figure out what was happening. Guess Damien feels culpable for what Mia said, but why? You don't know what that word means. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Inko, really, I didn't mean for any of that to happen. Hey, I believe you, man. Your heart was in the right place. Olivia told us what happened with Mia, calling her some nickname. Damien leans back over an unresponsive Olivia, hands spread in supplication. She said you were there, too. I... was, yeah. Olivia, you Oh, Olivia, you love that nickname way back when we were kids. Damien's words were dismissed with a roll of her smoky eyes. He didn't really mean it, Olivia. I know already! Back the fuck off. For a split second, she bore row upon row of sharp teeth before gnashing her maw in frustration. Olivia's nostrils flare out with a huff of hot breath again, and I can practically see everything from her day finally weigh on her. You were just being you again, Damien. Sometimes I wish you weren't, but whatever. There's a grittiness to her voice once more, but she continues on. She holds her canteen up to her lips, but drops it immediately. Empty again. She written her voice is back, but she presses on. And the nickname is just that. Nickname. I'm just... I don't want to hear it again. Especially from her. Especially if it's just again under my skin. Olivia stares at Damien for a while before breaking contact to glance at Liz and I. Why not? Wait. Did I say that out loud? Oops. Why did I ask that? It just kind of came out. Liz notices Damien still organizing his thoughts. Seeing as neither of the others are going to answer coherently, she sighs. Well, I wasn't around for this, but... When they were freshmen in middle school, Damien and Olivia would take the bus every weekend to go uh, to an arcade in the city. Guess he came up with the nickname around then, and it stuck. Uh, that's half right, but I didn't come up with it. I bought a chunk of change for us to play stuff with each other. <laughs> Him fading over again, Olivia. <laughs> a match on just about anything there was a quarter. Probably still is. But I don't think I won even once. When she stood to win something, it's like a switch went off in her head. I'd never seen Olivia get like that. Some of the teenagers were watching too. They saw everything. A couple challenged her once. I uh, ran out of cash and sure enough, she ended up clearing house all afternoon. She was all, she talked about it as, it was all she talked about at school all week until we can get go back for more. Only took like a month for her to be recognized by some as some local champion. Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. I don't remember really who or when, but I do know it's proof she got that fire in her. She got that dog. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's. I had fun back then. Guess I forgot. I wasn't supposed to bring it up. 
Have things really changed that much? And you did. Again. Damien hisses to himself. <laughs> Sorry. Just can't help yourself. But you're right. It was the best time of my life. The name Hot Wheels belongs to ten-year-old me. Not current me. Hey, that's a great story. You recognize so well that you get a cool nickname? Sounds amazing. Being a champion. Being a winner. Well, the disdain for the title. I'm not. What? I'm not a winner anymore. Because you don't go to the arcade anymore? If it's the if the one I'm thinking of, it's only like a half hour away. Olivia looks at Liz like she just recommended everyone watch the newest Netsticks anime. <laughs> Netsticks. Okay. Well, if this story is anything to go by, I'd like to see you be a winner again. Olivia's breath seems to hitch for a moment. And I'm sure these guys want to see it too. Damien's the only one that dragged you to our lunch table all this time, right? Look at him. He's nearly keeled over because he's afraid of losing that part of you. And Liz? I'd like to see why you and Damien are really close friends. Yeah. And just as quick as I gained the bravado to speak up, my words left me immediately. Um, I think I actually put Olivia on the spot there. Whoops. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, her tail rolls along the ground a bit in contemplation. This feels like it's about to be like the fucking freak out moment, you know? <laughs> but we're good. If you guys really care that much about it, I wouldn't mind it from you guys. All at once, Damien lights up. Pog! Yes! Alright, Hot Wheels is back! You guys now refers to Liz and me and Inko. <laughs> Damien's shoulders drop for a moment, but he quickly recovers. Hey, if we're getting the name out again, we should go visit the arcade together sometime. I'd rather not. Okay, then how about a better name, like... Death Roll. Olivia swings her tail around to trip him, but he's fast enough to jump over it. Damien's words flood out as he contemplates new nicknames for Olivia to try and appease her, many of which are shot down by her or leave Liz and I chuckling. Gradually, our giggles died down, and the four of us chatted a bit more about the day in general. Eventually, Damien and Liz headed their respective ways, with Olivia deciding to stick around. Most of the school was filtered out in their various homebound rides or to their after-school activities, leaving Olivia and I all alone. <gasps> Let's go! Let's Yo! go! We got the solo Olivia hangout! Hey, I'll roll with you. Really? I mean, I don't mind, of course. Yeah, it's nothing. The house is only a few blocks away anyway. Besides, I'm sure someone would beat you up and take your lunch money if I didn't. There's plenty yeah. of time to make it to the next train, so the two of us take it easy. The sun finally managed to break through the autumn clouds, making the walk almost unseasonably warm. Man, I thought the last day of summer was weeks ago. <laughs> it was. I don't mind it staying warm longer, though. Feels pretty great to me. Olivia gives her chair an extra hard push, letting herself glide by unaided, letting herself glide by unaided, for long enough to stretch out her arms to bask in the sunlight. I might have figured you'd like the heat. Oh, what? Because I'm a dino? N no, not like that. I'm just plain. Relax. Because you're a fucking dino. Pretty touchy on that stuff, aren't you? The two of us finally make it to the train platform, nestled as it is off the main street. I can see the train a few blocks away, our walk timed up with its arrival perfectly. Hey, Livy, you wanna, like, I don't know, go hang out hang more? Out. <laughs> Puts my fingers together. <laughs> I just think it's important to be educated, is all. Even if you're, what, the only human at our school? Olivia flashes me a cheeky grin as my train pulls up. 
Got to admit, but her mischievous nature is a little infectious. As the train doors open, I leave Olivia with one final jab, something I know she'd appreciate. Hey, whatever you say, Hot Wheels. I neatly dodge out of the way for slashing claws, stepping smartly onto the train as the door closes. Ingo, you son of a bitch! <laughs> Get back here! Can we talk about that? <laughs> this one's a pretty good one. <laughs> Listen up, you little shit! <laughs> as the doors ding shut behind me, I can see an irate and still blushing Olivia waving her fist as the train begins to pull away. Straight tail. Dude, Olivia's tail is like a fucking... should be a registered weapon at this point. Like, we've seen the power behind that thing. Still giggling, I managed to squeeze myself into a seat next to a yellow-scaled woman smelling faintly of hot dogs. You know, I may pay for that comment later. But the look on her face was totally worth it. Kicks back. As the school year progresses, the days start to feel like they're moving along much faster. A part of it may be the change of the season, however slight that change may be. While the calendar says it's officially fall, the only thing I've really noticed was the increasing number of clouds in the sky. Better safe than sorry, though, which is why I, brought, uh, why I bought my fancy compact carbon fiber umbrella. As a mouthful. Still, things have started to be routine for me in the mornings. Wake up, throw on my clothes, consider eating breakfast before realizing I'd wreck my stomach, walk to the station with a feather light umbrella in hand. And wouldn't you know it, I end up having another chat with Mr. Ferris on the ride to school. Hello, Mr. Nato. How are you this morning? Doing fine, sir. Thank you. And how are you? I'm doing well. So, my niece told me over the weekend that you and Olivia were in a predicament of some sort. Uh, yeah. Olivia was being picked on by... someone. But it's not a problem anymore. I see. That's unfortunate to hear. And strange. Considering the substantial funding the school gets for its anti-student harassment programs. What good is all that tax money if classmates are still ragging on each other? If it means anything, Olivia knows how to handle herself. I was there to support her. That's fine, but the issue is this sort of thing shouldn't be happening to begin with. <coughs> that aside, Liz has gotten somewhat enthusiastic recently regarding Olivia. She's surprised at how animated she's gotten. Ever since that get-together at Randall's place, I think. I'd wager you'd have something to do with it, no? Uh, maybe a little. <laughs> uh, it though. Yeah, it was certainly rocky in the beginning, but we've been warming up to each other. It's nice seeing a different side of her, even if it's brief. I don't know. Can I take credit for that? We all have unique chances to make a change, Inko. If you're good at grasping them, that in of itself is something to be proud of. How do you know it's really a chance to do anything? He lets out a deep, reverberating chuckle. Well, to flip our usual script and let you know an old phrase, a friend of mine once said, if you see a fork in the road, take it. Yeah? Thanks, Mr. Ferris. Like my mornings, the school days have become a routine as well. Slay through PE with Damien, see Olivia's new doodles and sketches in art class, watch Liz lose her mind tutoring Damien at lunch, talk shop with Ben. Though now I have to avoid Mia like the play because she's surely out to kill me. All said, I think St. Hammond's been my best school experience out of... Man, I've lost count of how often I moved. Must be the fresh head trauma. That's for today. I will say she, I like I like the hair like this. Yeah. It's been raining pretty often recently, so Coach Solly made us play more dodgeball in the gym. Mia was definitely gunning for me with the way she launched them at me with the speed of a catapult. I rest in Iadakan's class, popping my spine against the curve of my chair. Apparently today is a short day because of some assembly, so the period will end much earlier than usual. Also means we got most of the period to slack off. 
do homework, do homework. I glance at the desk next to me in the hopes of catching Olivia's latest artistic masterpiece when I know she's not drawing, and instead only fidgeting. Hey, Olivia, you seem a bit nervous. Everything all right? Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, it's just that I... I've been hearing rumors that the school's shared drive might have been corrupted. Wait, really? Yeah, really. How would something like that happen? Not sure, but I'm scared that it might have messed with the art contest submissions. I think you should check out your entry on the website, just to make sure it's okay. Technology, don't fail me now. With urgency, I take out my phone and type in the school's website. Fast fingers lead me to the art contest tab. Can this loading bar go any slower? Finally, the page loads in, and... Oh. Looks like the submissions have been closed. What? I hold the phone up for Olivia to show her the page. The submissions have been closed since voting started last week. Oh. Sheesh, I thought Mr. Yadik had spooked me. Olivia's all seized up. Well, that's quite reassuring. With the submissions closed, there's no chance of any hacker messing with them. Olivia doesn't seem convinced, still drumming her fingers on her desk. Hopefully she'll feel loads better when the preliminary winners are revealed. Speaking of which, when are we- As the bell sounds, the class begins to pack their things, and the Yadikan corals corrals everyone into a single file line. Alright everyone, we haven't assigned a row, so stick together. Oh, is this assembly? Yeah. Before I join the rest of the line, I look back at Olivia, who seems to be stalling. Come on, I'll walk with you. It seems to stir something in her. She glances up to, uh, to me with haste, while hastily shoving a notebook into her bag. Y yeah, I'm coming. As we head out the door, I notice Olivia shuffling her hoodie a lot. It's not a long walk to the auditorium, and despite Yedekin's best attempts, most of the class splinters off to sit with their friends. Having expected this, he shrugs and makes his way over to the back of the auditorium where the other teachers are. It's like, not my fucking problem. Olivia and I are left to the struggling crowd trying to filter into the cramped theater of the school. It's gonna be difficult finding some seats. It's fine, I have a spot. Olivia wheels herself down the pathway to which I follow suit. She heads down the aisle until we're at the first row of seats. There's a vacant spot where a typical seat would be with a faded handicap sign. Olivia parks her chair into an empty spot, to which I take a seat next to her. Best seats in the house, right? Can't complain. As the hall fills with more students, my anticipation rises. Oh man, I could hardly wait for the announcements. So... Do you think I have a chance? Huh? Oh. Maybe. Photography isn't super popular, but... Olivia Fulter... I meant with you. What'd you say? I meant with you. <laughs> Olivia, can we maybe, like, I don't know, hug? Smile? I would like to complete the namesake of the game. <laughs> Finger touches. I was doing that, th that's what I'm talking about, I was doing that the whole time. <laughs> <sighs> Olivia folds her hands on her lap. Staring straight ahead as her voice trails off. I knew that, but I'm still hopeful. Hey guys. I have to remind myself that this is normal. Hey Liz. I can't believe it's finally here. Gosh, I'm so excited. Me too. By the way, where's Damien? <laughs> hey guys. Can we just say that again real quick? <laughs> I'm over here! I mean, he's in the far back of the auditorium, yelling and waving his hands in the air to catch our attention. He's gonna get in trouble for that. Frills, sit down! Damien immediately stops and takes a seat. With tempered expectations, we both sit in silence for just a few minutes before Principal Scaler walks on stage and taps on the standing microphone. Oh yeah, a screenshot, Jeremy, because uh, we didn't get to show Kevin oh. Scaler. 
That's right. I'll send it to him. Give it a second. <clears throat> okay, what was the voice I did for? Okay, everyone. Got a whole bunch of important announcements to make, so I'll make them quick so we can all have an early lunch. As soon as the idea of going for an early lunch is brought up by Principal Scaly, the entire room goes as silent as a vigil. I guess when it comes to an early lunch, it's serious business. Over the next 15 minutes, Principal Scaler goes over important events coming up in the school year. <laughs> the gator do da ding. Most I would consider standard things, like pep rallies for the sports teams, or bake sales to fund raise for upcoming field trips, and even something about new clubs being formed, such as the Japanese Animation Appreciation Society. Not the best acronym I would have, if I have to say. Okay, hold up. What's the acronym? JAPS. Oh my, that's why it's capitalized. What the fuck? Oof. <laughs> Otherwise, it's all mostly being uh, boring housekeeping stuff when one got right down to it. I almost wonder why such announcements warranted an assembly when the mood suddenly shifts with Scalar, Scalar's next big announcement. Now that we got the main stuff out of the way, I've saved the best announcement for last. St. Hammond is proud to announce the five semi-finalists for the annual Fresh Starts Art Contest. <laughs> Cheers and applause roars. Loud enough to make my ears ring. Yet I'd be lying if I said I also wasn't excited for the reveal of just who had made it to the semi-finals. Maybe I was giving myself a bit too much credit, but I really wanted to be among those semi-finalists. I could almost taste victory. Fact. I turned to face Olivia and prepared to cheer alongside her, but I'm stopped in my tracks when I notice that, unlike the rest of her peers, Olivia seems to be uneasy about the prospect. Almost scared, even. Before I can ask Olivia why her sudden change of mood, Scalar continues with her next words, cutting my train of thought off. And here we have the five semi-finalists. The pieces of the five skillful students who'd beaten all the other competitors came up, followed by the names of the victors right above them. Alas, I see no photography submission in sight. Well, at least I gave it a shot, right? Oh man, I didn't make it in. Liz's neck droops down like a melancholy noodle. Can't help but feel pity for the bummed out brachios Brachiosaurus. <laughs> Checking my phone, I see. Tell Liz to come back here, bro. Okay. I'm sure Damien's got that handled. Despite my sullied mood, I look back to the semi-final winners and can't help but be amazed by them. Each artwork is impressive in their own right, their colors blending wonderfully, and the figures beautifully designed. It's easy to see why these were voted as the winners. The last one especially catches my eye. The scenic landscape with a setting sun looks, um, looks stunning. If not for the slight stylization of the skyline and fantastical color palette, it could probably pass off as a real photograph with some filters post, uh, pasted over it. I'm no art critic yet, but if I were, I'd label it as a masterpiece and these are the best out of all of them. Let's give a win as a big round of applause. The auditorium fills with the usual kind of clapping one would expect in an event like this. Polite, with an underlying tone of disinterest, though one person felt compelled to constantly make a piercingly high whistle. I swear that neck gets longer each time. It's plot neck, right? <laughs> it's as long as the plot needs it to be. We'll be displaying the winner's art pieces in room 237. You're welcome to view them during lunch and after school today. Oh, neato. Principal Scaler continues the rest of the assembly, announcing other events for the school and other minor reminders. Behind me, I see the teachers start psyching themselves up for the Herculean task of getting some 200 hungry dinosaur teenagers out of the room and towards lunch without anyone getting killed. STAMPEDE! Principal Scaler finishes and waves back at them to signal it's time. Alright, we're gonna start a journey into lunch. You all know how this goes, so no just going for the exit. Being in the first row, we're the first to get up. Follow behind Olivia until we make it to the hall. Hey, Olivia. She stops and turns a bit. Jesus, is she still anxious about the sight thing earlier? She looks a little pale. I wanted to check out the winning paintings a bit more. Wanna come along? 
She considers for a moment. No, go on without me. I need to use the restroom. Alright, I'll see you at the lunch table. Then. Olivia nods and starts off down the hall following the flow of students towards the lunchroom. Let's see, the principal said it was room 237. First thing I noticed walking into the classroom was the amount of people checking out the gallery. While I didn't expect to be filled to the brim with eager students, there's a decent amount of people here. About a baker's dozen or so. Maybe more will come when they finish up their lunches. Well, I'm here now. Let's take a look at the lucky winners. Pieces are all set on easels in the back of the classroom. Some desks and chairs are moved closer to the front to give each one its own space. One by one, I take a moment to give each canvas a thorough review. The auditorium screen really didn't give the art justice, because now I can really take the detail of each one being up close. The color palettes, the brushwork, the subtle nuances. Yeah, I can definitely see all of them having a good shot at getting first prize. But now, it's time to see the one I've been eager to look at since I, it was first shown. From what I recall from Mr. Yadikin's lessons, it's made with acrylics, explaining why the colors of it seem more vibrant. It stands out in defiance of the other paintings in the contest, most of which are either violently absurdist and meaningless, or muted still lifes of ordinary objects. It's a meadow of mystifying colors, the organic lines drawing the viewer deep into the piece, and I feel as though this would be a place I'd wake up to within a fantastical dream. There's no rigid structure or forced metaphors here, just a fantastical merger of creative expression and real-world beauty. I feel my fingers itch for this familiar weight of my DSLR. This is a piece that I want to immortalize in my portfolio. It tans down the winner of the contest in my eyes. Simply must find out who made this. It's like this breathtaking show of artistic talent was created by semi-finalist winner... Oh. Oh no. What? She submitted it in our name. That's a problem. Yeah, that does seem to be the case, huh? I mean... Mm. So, okay. Let's think about this then, right? Because I'm assuming there would only be one submission per person, right? Yeah. So... Do, do we think Olivia actually did it? I think so. Okay. So how would she have done it, though? Do you think she directly did it, or she had help from Liz? Um... I think... I, I think... Mm. Because she's friends with Liz, so maybe she, like, used that as a way to get into the database, since the treasurer has, like, a lot of information, but I would assume... Yeah, because she had access to the system, right? That's how we got our, our uh, account, right? Yeah, but I don't know if it's the same system. Well, given how privy she seems to be to that whole stuff, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if she did have access to it, you know? Uh -huh. So, okay, let's say... And, like, I think the reason that Damien needed Liz's attention during the assembly is because he recognized that as Olivia's painting. And was trying to notify her. Probably. Hmm. <clears throat> ah, Inko, I'm glad you swung by. Looks like you're admiring the art contest entries. I told you that St. Haman's artistic programs were unparalleled. That's not mine. What's not yours? I try to say more, but the words won't leave my mouth. Ben's eyes follow mine to the bottom of the painting in front of me. And watch as he makes the same realization as I do. Uh, Inko! You didn't... Did you paint this? I had no idea your style was so developed. I so literally humble. just said that. If I had known... That's not my entry. I it's not? No. Mine was a photograph. But... What's your name doing on this one? Must be some kind of mistake. 
Millen scenarios come to mind. They must have gotten the wrong name somehow. If they did, I think the real artists would have come forward by now. Then the submission website must be hacked, or problem, or broken. But our school checks for stuff like that. If it was, we would have known by now. Then... Inko, you're sure you didn't submit somebody else's piece by accident? Of course I didn't. Why would I do something like that? Y you're the only one who can log into your account, Inko. Freeze frame. Record scratch. You must be wondering how I got here. <laughs> Suddenly, everything stops. My account. Did somebody... Look, relax, alright? We can get this sorted out. Just don't panic. Ben lowers his voice. But Inko, just to be clear... What? You didn't just get a bit of extra help, right? Ben looks at me through the edge of his glasses, eye to eye. There's some real stakes in the contest. Cheating is taken seriously. Especially fraud. The word echoes around inside me. Fraud. Makes my bones chill. There's ingenuine, faker, liar. They're all bad in different ways, but... Fraud is just dripping with frigid condemnation. No, I swear. I submitted a photograph. Ben relaxes his shoulders. Alright, just making sure. Sorry to alarm you. It's perturbing how you can go from deadly serious to jovial like a flip switch. You gonna be alright? Sorry, I... need some air. Hey, feel free. I'll let Scalar know, okay? Yeah. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> I fucking read ingenuine as linguine. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding. Hold on, let's... There's linguine. <laughs> Faker, liar. They're all bad in different ways. Don't you fucking say that bad thing about Linguini. Linguini's great. Okay, we were right Well, here. to be fair, Linguini is a faker. Remy was cooking all that food. Little Chef! Is... <laughs> is Olivia our little chef? <laughs> we don't have any hair to get pulled on, though. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. She tugging at something new. <laughs> Tug tugging on her sunglasses. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I was... Don't be weird. <laughs> ben offers me an earnest smile, waving at me as he steps out of the room down the hall. After some time, I follow him, shambling down the hall as I try to make sense of what just happened. I thought everyone actually liked my photography. They all thought I was some kind of expert painter instead. I don't even know how to express it. I feel empty. I thought maybe my hard work was finally paying off, but... I submitted the right entries, so what happened? Did somebody change it? And if so, how? It's such a good piece, too. What even is there to be gained by putting my name on it? I wander aimlessly through the halls. The thought of missing lunch passes through my mind, but there's a different sort of emptiness pervading my stomach. I will say, it's obvious to us right now that the most likely culprit is Olivia, right? Mm-hmm. But that's because we're playing the game, right? If you think about it in the context of like, okay, put ourselves in shoes. Would we expect a, like a friend to kind of like betray us like that? Probably not, right? Is this betrayal? Well, for, for us, it kind of is, right? Because we submitted a photograph. We wanted it to be recognized for our photography. But instead, someone else substituted it with their art and kind of devalued what we're doing as a, a photographer, you know? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's our last year here, right? This is our one chance to be recognized for it. And that's been taken away because somebody's changed our submission. That's yeah? true. Yeah, it's basically saying, like, your shit wasn't good enough. Right. The thought of missing lunch... Uh, okay, pervading my stomach. Why is this rattling me like this? Man, it's not like I'm in trouble or anything. Ben's helping me sort this out. I don't lost what to even think right now. Oh crap. Olivia mentioned something about the server issues before. I couldn't see my submission, but... Was it just that? Maybe Olivia was right to be worried. Well duh, who else would she be... Why else would she be so nervous? Mamus walking leads me outside of the principal's office in the gala. 
There's that one cityscape painting from the start of the school year. The very first painting I ever saw here. Still one of the best. Vibrant cityscape that morphs into a rigid structure of urban planning into a soft and inviting utopia, as if viewed from the eyes of a child. The sky above the city is a beautiful shade of crimson, with radiant clouds clustered along its length. If the art contest submission was the best painting I've ever seen, then this one comes close. I can only imagine the accolades she must have gotten for the painting back then. You know, for a while I got to have that experience. I got to step in the shoes of an artist much better than myself. Maybe that was the intent? All the praise, approval, everything I'd been wanting. Just for a while, it was given by an anonymous stranger. Whatever that may be. Actually, this gives me a bit of an idea. If I'm clever and Olivia's up for it, this can be a cool way to get her to show off her painting more. Everyone would like that. Maybe that's what she needs. I could act as, like, a personal publisher for her so she doesn't have to deal with people. <laughs> Honestly, the dream. Wait a second. I peel down the empty hallway. <laughs> I need to find Olivia. He's piecing it together? She couldn't possibly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But why me? Why would she... I think about it only increases my worries and desperation to find who I hope to raptor Jesus isn't the culprit. I haphazardly check all places where Olivia would be, but can't find her anywhere. My hunt for the Baryonyx uh, leads me to the second floor of the atrium. Feels like there's a lead, a lead brick in my stomach, of, in the pit of my stomach, as I internalize my current situation. The soft pattering of rain hitting the window grabs my attention to see a gloom-covered Volcadera outside. My eyes wander along the school's pathway, covered in mud thanks to the earlier rainfall. Wait a minute. Those look like... tracks in the mud. Oh no. I burst through the main entrance doors and am met with the feeling of droplets hitting my head. Outside, a dark overcast has rolled in. The forecast called for on and off raining, on on and off rain during the day. Oh, just like I thought I had gotten the text. It was just like a brief notification. Uh, the forecast called for on and off rain during the day, but pretty gnarly clouds. Makes it look almost dusk around. What am I wasting time for? I follow the trail with urgency, fearing that the rain will wash it away. Looks like it goes down the whole pathway. I ignore my clothes becoming progressively damp and the water collecting on my shades. Eventually, I round the curve that leads to the bridge and see a distressing item at its end. What the fuck? Uh-oh. A wheelchair. Olivia's wheelchair. Empty of the occupant toppled on its side. A new fear grips me at me, born from the mental imagery provided by that sight. Those cruel thoughts push me up the steps faster than humanly possible, even as my rational mind tries to reassure me. Running across the deck, my breath is caught in my throat when I reach the middle. She's on the ground, head slumped down. There's damaged and soaked school supplies scattered all over the walkway. Oh god, is she okay? My foot shifts, trying to force me closer. Slowly her head lifts up from the sound of my shoes squelching on the floor. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh Ingo. no. Her tear stained eyes stare at me with a dead expression, and her voice sounds weak. But Olivia. Before you continue, he was walking towards her like. Did you do a bit? I did. Uh, I turned off Chris. Come on. I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> Whatever. I, I kind of heard it there. You're going. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of got like the fucking uh, SpongeBob boot sound, you know? <laughs> it's under the floorboards. It's in. Remember how he deep fried them things in here? <laughs> Crabs is wild. Right. Feel like I can finally breathe again. Slowly, Olivia pushes herself up, and I know she's lying atop a pile of paper shreddings. The feeling of relief slowly fades away, and I remember just why I was looking for her. We stay silent. Only staring at each other as the rain continues to bear down on us.
She simply sits there, letting herself grow more and more soaked from the rain. Do you want to talk? No. Not out in the open. I grab my compact umbrella from my backpack and unfurl it. It doesn't do much to dry Olivia off, but at least she's not getting more soaked. The umbrella is placed between us and the elements against the ledge, forming a personal canopy above us. Here. Now we're alone. There's space next to Olivia to take a seat. I missed it. Uh, what's up with the painting and why the heck is it raining now? Uh, Olivia went right. outside. Um, so we went to uh, we went to find her. We saw tracks in the mud and followed it. And she was outside. Her like wheelchair was thrown into the mud. Her uh, school supplies were scattered everywhere. And now we're kind of going from there. It's odd. We've sat together before, but sitting on the ground in the rain and the room is just a little claustrophobic. There's bits of paper melted onto the pavement, soaked by the rain. Though torn apart and, torn, torn apart and waterlogged, I can sort of make out a tree, or a sketch of one anyway, but the one that stood prominently in my false submission. So you did do it. Inko, please, I can explain. I didn't have a choice. What? I know what I did was wrong, but I didn't have any other way. It wasn't a choice to not trick me? She avoids looking at me, focusing on the scraps of paper scattered about the floor like confetti. It wasn't to trick you. I just... <sighs> I get it. You're mad at me. I'm not mad. I'm just confused. I thought we were good friends. I wasn't expecting it. Expecting you. She pauses to give her throat some respite. Her usual water bottle isn't anywhere nearby. A shaky breath escapes her mouth. When you came around, I thought you were no different than the others. You were some self-centered, pretentious midwit who only cares about his image. That's when I got the idea of using you to swap out your art with mine. You didn't seem like the kind of person who cared about how he gets the attention from others. Just that he gets it. The description of my character feels really reductive, but... The ache in my chest tells me it hits a little too close to home. But that's not what I think of you now. He had against the one person I can trust. So, when he went to bat for you, saying we'd make good friends, I was worried. What's so special about this guy? I honestly got scared he'd be wrong. I should just be like everyone else. I'd be setting myself up for failure. But worse than that, Inko, I was afraid he'd be right. And I'd have to face what I'd done to myself. Now I've gone and done something like this. Switching my Kanto century? She nods, swallowing hard. I wasn't thinking. Suddenly everything was out of balance. Everything I'd created, all my work, my own little world was suddenly changing and I had no control of it. I just had to do something. I didn't know I was doing that. I'm sorry. She stops to process my words and continues. I knew I'd get caught. It's stupid. I was hoping for it even. So I'm gonna figure out how that it was swapped so it would be changed and everyone would be none the wiser. She turns to face me with silver eyes welled with tears. I'm sorry. Please don't aid me. I just don't want to go back to being the person I used to be. The person who didn't care about hurting you. Her head tilts downward with a violent hitch of breath. Ivory claws extend and grip at her knees in a painful display, yet Olivia chokes back any sound she'd make. Her body shudders with every breath from her, with every heavy breath from her. I realized that every last defense barrier she had was completely gone. Olivia's laid herself bare, even only the crying girl desperately trying to silence her pitiful tears. Hmm. I can't hate you. I love you.
drops a safety save. <laughs> safety save. I mean, it's pretty obvious why she would do this, right? At no. least, well, because she can't submit, right? She already won once. First round. Yeah, but then, so if she submits it under uh, her, what our name, and we win, then it just like validates her. Well, she gets some validation for even being voted up to semifinalist, right? That people mm -hmm. like her art. Can never be too safe with that doofus. Exactly, incognito isn't exactly the most uh, well put together. So, but why do all of this? I mean, you get an explanation, but the the only like I, I'm leaning more towards I can't hate you just to, you know, reassure her. Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't like the phrasing of it, you know? Yeah. Like, I would prefer I don't hate you. I can't hate you. This game is adorable. You guys are going to love it. Yeah, we loved it. Or, well, I've loved it so far. Jeremy, I, as far as I can tell, has at least enjoyed it. It's pretty good. I like it. I'm going to go with I can't hate you. Faced with those sudden, unbidden words from Olivia, I'd have to be heartless bastard to do anything but accept her apology. It's clear that the guilt has been rotting in her conscience ever since. What she did was wrong, no doubt about it. Then again, in her circumstances, how can I blame her? How could anyone? Probably would have ended up having to do the same thing in her shoes. Olivia's perfection serves the hugs, that's all. We're hoping that we get to the hug this stream. We want to hug the gator. Please. At this point, Olivia's put herself through enough stress as is. If there's one thing she needs to hear right now, it's that I forgive her. I don't hate you, Olivia. You don't? No, I don't. I won't lie, I definitely felt hurt when I first found out. But the fact that you're willing to admit your mistakes shows that you're growing as a person. I'm really glad to hear that we're friends. It's refreshing to hear her say it. I was worried she was only just putting up with me. Olivia seems understandably puzzled over my lack of anger towards her. Figured you'd be more upset. Is is this just your pity? If so, I don't want it. It's not pity, Olivia. I'm accepting your apology. I don't want you to feel guilty about it. The sooner we can put this all behind us, the better. But I can tell you're a good person, so don't worry about it. All right. I offer my best smile. Olivia slowly nods. When you put it that way, I. Yes, but still, truth be told, I deserve to fail, to actually face consequences. I'm such a fucking fraud, all over a damn painting. Olivia, you did what you thought you had to do, and you're saying sorry for the consequences. It's all that matters. I scooch closer to Olivia. Huh? How was you taking action in a way I never would have guessed? A uh, crime of passion, I think it's called. Probably wrong, but she gets the idea. The world runs on those. You don't need to change. I don't think you did anything wrong. She leans her head against the wall of the railing before looking at me with a half smile. Thanks. You're right. I'm just throwing everything away like an idiot. I'm just scared. I'm here with you. I coax the rest of the tired grin from her. She looks down at the shredded papers again. After that, after everything was said and done, I just became quiet. Beneath the solace of my umbrella, I relax together. At least until Olivia begins shifting uncomfortably. I sit and watch as she takes her calves and shifts them to the side with one hand. Her tail comes around and presses into the paper-filled floor before her, keeping her upright as she starts to lean forward. Finally, with the strength of her tail and one arm, Olivia lifts her hips from the floor and swings her shins fully beneath her. She smiles as she kneels over me. You just gonna sit there? Crap, I guess I was gawking stupidly. It was just so fascinating, seeing the girl maneuver herself in these odd yet well-practiced ways. I'm kind of jealous, actually. I wish I had a tail, too, to do some of the things she could. I press my hands down on the floor and push myself up. I don't know why. I had thought to stand, but instead I shifted myself to a kneeling position too. 
we're face to face now. The hug! No. Let's go! <laughs> For a split Thank second, you. I feared the worst as Olivia drew me into a hug. Gator hug, let's go, now be good to her. Cherished moment. Snapshot. <laughs> After so many years, we finally got it, boys. Gator bros, we did it. I don't know what she, why, uh, bleh. I don't know what she would do, but this? I like this. For how strong her arms are, how they're wrapped around my chest feels exceptionally tender. She's so gentle. <laughs> my own arms have enveloped her, returning the embrace in a seemingly soft way. And as her arms loosen, I draw back, though I don't want to take my hands off her. That was... nice. Don't make it weird. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> through the sound of... Through the sound of rainfall hitting the umbrella, my ears suddenly pick up the noise of what sounds like... Squeaking? I look down and see that there's something shuffling in Olivia's pocket. RATA! La rata! <laughs> Why is there a rat? She has a pet rat. <laughs> She's had the pet rat the whole time. That's why she does the rat doodles. A little beast emerges from its hiding spot with a squeaky yawn, to which Olivia offers her hand for it to use as a platform. Little chef! <laughs> she had her own little art chef. Here's the Holy boy. Shit. Hey, little guy. I nearly forgot about you. Had a nice nap? It was like you're suffocating me. That's a rat. Oh, right. You two haven't met each other. Inko, this is Guts. Guts, meet Inko. Everything oh, like the uh, Manga Berserk. Hi, Guts. I really wave at the apprehensive-looking rodent. This is where all the art is, Jeremy. You were talking about where it was earlier? This is where yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia lifts Guts to her shoulder gracefully, like her hand is an elevator for him. You brought him to school? Well, yeah. I just really needed him today since, you know, all the crap that's happened. She gives Guts a few scritches under his chin. I bring him sometimes when things get rough. And nobody noticed? You haven't. Touche. He had a Ken did once. He just told me not to let him run around the school, otherwise it would be considered a health hazard or something. The tardy bell rings out in the distance. We're, we're late for our next classes. Fuck school. <laughs> we hang out for the rest of the day. I'm sure Yadikin will understand. We uh, should probably get back to class. Here, hold this. I give Livia the umbrella so she and the rat can stay dry while I go fetch the wheelchair. He has a name! <laughs> the rat. By now it's settled, summoned the mud. The wheelchair has definitely seen better days. After dusting off the dirt and pulling water the best I can, I make my way back. Thanks. She offers the umbrella back, but I make sure to hold it above her. I keep the wheelchair steady with one hand as Olivia climbs into the seat, using her tail to help herself up. <gasps> above shot. Oh, we're pushing her. Bookmarked for later. Yep. <clears throat> we stand in the rain in silence for a moment, only sharing content glances. So, what do we do about the contest now? That's a good question. Ben was there when I saw my name on the painting. He already went to tell someone. So, like you said, no harm, no foul. Get a girl's precious, absolutely. What about your own submission? I ruined it. Scratch the back of my head. Yeah, I wouldn't want anyway. It's just a picture. Oh. I thought it was pretty okay. Hearing those words from Olivia sends a strange flash of heat to my face. It's not unpleasant. Again, those honest words from her really do cut through me for some reason. Thanks. A loud squeak draws my eyes to guts as he stands atop Olivia's shoulder. Uh, you too? A wry smile stretches across Olivia's face. Mm. I think it means Guts is saying it's actually so-so. Hey! Cut him some slack, Guts. Inko didn't have time to make anything for the contest. 
It's got some high standards. Yep. That's why I've gotten so good. The sheer absurdity of it. We don't know which of us broke first, but our laughter fills the air. Heard only by us as the rainfall cuts off all other noise. So, uh, now what? I don't know. I don't want to go yet. I'm still pretty worn out. Silent cheer for the follow. Much appreciated. Worn out. A smile crosses my face as a wicked idea comes to mind. Well, too bad. What? I walk around uh, behind Olivia, grinning like a mad idiot. Inko, what are you doing? Inko? Inko! Have a nap, y'all enjoy the game. Very true to good. We will true to good. Have a good rest of your day, night, evening. Whatever time it is for you, silent. Her head tries to follow me as I stand right behind her chair. I figured that pushing your chair around is really tiring, so how about I help you out? Olivia blushes and looks away. Fine, but just for today. Returning to campus was certainly awkward. Passerby shoot, passerby shoot us looks. It's not the most common scene to see a girl in a wheelchair just roll on in a sopping wet and tracking mud in. More likely though, it was because said girl had taken to using my umbrella to hide herself from those looks. She was already extremely red in her face. Tokyo Drift, let's go. Fucking fly down the hallway and flatten me in now. <laughs> it was a conundrum. Drop the umbrella and let people see her. Or keep it up and draw more attention. Hmm. I shall name it the Nito Theorem. She's gonna kill me if I ever attempt to publish it. But making her way back to Olivia's current class, she simply shook her concealed head. I didn't really have much of a choice. From all of from all that I knew of the girl, her last classes were all in the upper levels. She was in possession of the elevator key. And I was in possession of the weakest knees here in St. Hamond. At least according to Coach Solly. So I wheeled her to my current photography class. On the way over, she keeps bending her head back to peek at me. Like she's making sure I'm still there. Knocking on his closed door, but the pterosaur, the, the pterosaur, I think that's how you, because the P is supposed to be silent, right? Yeah, probably. The pterosaur professor didn't even bat an eye at the poorly hidden girl. He simply stepped aside and let us through. Ben was looking our way, but I chose to pay him no mind. After everything I heard, why are his hands not white in those shots? Hold up. Is that different from- I, I mean, I guess it's uh, a bit peachier, right? <clears throat> After everything I heard, Olivia didn't even register he was there. He was here. She simply rolled herself to the back of the classroom and threw a door into what I always guessed was Yadikin's supply closet. You know what? I'm an idiot. It's a dark room, isn't it? The stares of my other classmates abated, thankfully, as our teacher continued his lecture. Taking my own seat, I focused on the yet again. As much as I could, at least. My muddled thoughts kept me distracted the whole period. Just before the bell rings, the Etikin stares me dead in the eye. He points a stern finger directly at me, then to the floor to signal, <laughs> You. Stay. Oh, were you, did you want to do that? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> it was silent. <laughs> Got it. Once everyone else has left, he closes the class door and locks it. Cool. Okay. So, care to explain? Uh, looking at it, I think the hands are about the same in those in the wheelchair one. I think it's just up here. He's more flat colored. <laughs> oh my! No, no, no! We can't start going down that. Kane already said that he gave him groomer vibes. We. Can't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Explains her? He opens the door in the back and signals Olivia to come out. Oh, uh, give me a second. I was drawing and I realized my iPad's at 1%. Damn! <laughs> Alright. The mud, the drenched clothes, the declaration of sanctuary. Oh, it literally just died as I plugged it in. Fuck! <laughs> Owned. I was having a bad day. She's looking a bit better. Still drained, but she's not shivering. 
Her rat sits on her lap, and the Attican extends a finger down to scratch under its chin. I can see that. Oh, shit. Hold on real quick. This was 30 minutes ago, but Jen said that 30 minutes ago we were on chapter 6 of 19-ish. Whoa, wait. <laughs> Is there another stream of this? Fuck. We're not done. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna be honest though. Cool. <laughs> More gator. Let's Fucking go. Down. How long have we been going? A little over two hours. Holy shit, it's that long? That's what I'm fucking saying. Uh, I mean, $15 visual novel. I, I'm not complaining. It's just I thought this would be quick. <laughs> I'm fine with it, you know? Like, slow burn is perfectly good for me. I prefer it. I, th I think you... At this point, Jeremy, you can tell kind of the type of pacing I like after everything we've watched together. Mm -hmm. Like when we watched, I, not to go too far into tangent since we actually, I guess, do need to pick up the pace just a little bit here. Um, but when we watched fucking Has Been Hotel and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> too much it's stuff happened in these fun. eight episodes. Yeah. Was it even eight or was it six? I can't remember. It was eight. Yeah, it was eight. Like so many different things or so many different plot points happened in those eight episodes that it was like this should have been like three seasons this should not have just been one season mm -hmm. so he takes a seat against a nearby desk and waves a hand for olivia to go on when she doesn't he shifts his hand to me i look between the two of them mr yadikin's expectant leer and olivia's pleading eyes ultimately i shake my head in the negative i just helped olivia get out of the ring <laughs> of course. You weren't He's... fucking in the rain. Were you? <laughs> I'd never tell. Were you? Whoa, calm down, Mr. Attica. It was just a joke. <laughs> he slouches further <laughs> atop the desk. Can I tell you some other time? Sure. Whatever it was, it looks like you've recovered pretty well. Good teacher. Olivia doesn't answer verbally, instead giving him a bashful smile and nod. Uh, it was about your work again? Yeah. Oh, this girl. He turns to me and points a thumb at her. You know, the work she's so concerned about absolutely wrecks the grading curve in my class. For the sake of the other students, I had to put a limit on extra credit assignments. Really? <laughs> Yeah, before I would even I would even consider such a restraint. Why punish someone for working too hard? I would think to myself. Then four years ago, this little green goblin comes rolling into my class. Half a semester and more than a few angry calls from parents later, my hands were tied. Young sim young lady simply does d too dang much. Olivia smiles but doesn't look up from her pet. Was that much better than all the other students? Well, no, I don't grade by technique. Uh, if I did, you'd be in big trouble. Hey, though. yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> Olivia's work was very good, even then. But the main thing I admire is how motivated she could be. You know, I say, hey, yo, what? But can we, like, smash cut back to why Cers? <laughs> fucking joke. And, and it kind of <laughs> makes sense again. I haven't seen someone so enthused to just paint in years. Certainly haven't seen anyone so enthused. I had to change the rules like that. You weren't worried and stop me. Was I? That definitely sounds like me, but it didn't stop you. Not even a little. Heck, that year you even got me to see some things differently. <laughs> I don't think I ever did anything like that did when you came after class the Friday before Mother's Day? Take a look at this. I'm handed the quill pen, and the first thing I note about it is how soft the feather portion is. It's the special pen you always use. It's actually from my wife. Whoa. Inspecting it closer, I can now see more of the intricate details. From the faded engravings on the shank to the maintained but worn point. It's well made and kept. 
And yet the feather and brass showed its age. She came in that afternoon with a whole stack of crumpled painting drafts, so frustrated she couldn't get it right and so determined to make it perfect. I say any of these would be great. Your aunt would love any of these. And she fires back. If it's not good enough for me, then why would it be good enough for someone I'd love? I did not have an answer. So I tell her to take a step back. We take a few hours to go over fundamentals once more. I send her home to try getting it right over the weekend, and come Monday, she returns and hugs me first thing. Imagine using your wife's body parts in your work, like shit hair in a brush. Where's layers of fear all over again. I feel like people do use like either their own or their partner's hair to make brushes. I wouldn't be surprised. Do you? I mean, I don't paint. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I paint. That's a lie. <laughs> Pain. I don't do anything artistic, dude. You lied to me? Dude, sorry. I'm just a little guy. You can't persecute me. Yeah, that, that Friday night, though, what she said was on my mind. I talked about it all night with my wife. Then that morning, I decided to make a change for myself. My wife was molting at the time. So there was a few, there was always a f new feather or three in our blankets each morning. I took the biggest one, preserved it right, got a bit of help to make it into a real pen. And I've used it ever since. It helps me remember to do my job right for the people I care about and for the student, or the people my students care about. I think uh, what it was, it's that childlike reasoning that comes so naturally for youth. That reasoning, it makes a type of innocent, earnest dedication, something I think I would lost for a while. Don't give me so much credit. You haven't lost it, have you? Good. Don't lose it for me, okay? Okay. Yerken yawns and stretches. You feeling alright to go to your next class? Yes. I'm ready. Great. Claps a hand over my back. <laughs> we should do this again sometime. Mr. Yadikin <laughs> ushers us out of this classroom as the late bell trills, handing us a note he'd rapidly scrawled on. Now what we can use from Gator that'll help us with photos, her fangs as a tripod? What could we? Well, I mean, Dude. we can just photograph her paintings, and that's like our portfolio of how well we can photograph and a great painting. Yeah, but like, we're, like we're talking about kind of like the quill, right? Like, what what would we be able to take? Do do gators molt? Like, they do they shed their skin? Yeah, I'm sure they do. Do they though? Like, I know snakes do. Did you say you were looking it up? Do alligators? Shed. Yes, alligators and crocodiles do shed their skin. Just like lizards and snakes. Using dead skin, though, I don't know what you'd really be able to do with that. Maybe packing material? <laughs> I mean, you can use a fang as, like, a, a knife. You can sharpen it. Yeah, but, like, for our work, relating to our camera, you know what I mean? Well, it's not like the teacher, like, his work is using the pen. Like, he just used, everyone uses a pen, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I think, eh, you're probably right. Skin her? No! <laughs> we are not skinning the Gator. Was he implying with that quill? I don't think, what, he was just saying it's a nice, uh, a nice way to represent the ones that you love in your work. I think is what that was supposed to be going on there. Miss Prockling didn't seem enthused to see us come in late, but she sighed as she read the late note from Yetikin. Does it have to be? It could be an accessory. Fang claw mm -hmm. accessory. I mean, you could use like the fang for like a necklace or something. I'm trying to think though. Like, do you think? Do you think gators like typically like lose their teeth and just regrow them? Yeah, I'm sure that happens. Yeah, I, we it gotta would make like sense. Yeah, most living things need to recycle 
something you know well yeah but that said you think about like a human we only get one recycle for a tooth you know not another one doesn't come in after the adult tooth comes out no, okay hold on and do <laughs> alligators lose teeth like sharks regrow their teeth I, I would assume that gators do because their whole thing is their their chomp right so if they broke a tooth on something for whatever reason it would make sense that it would need to be able to regrow right mm-hmm <laughs> okay alligators and crocodiles use their formidable teeth to tear into prey they often lose some in the process unlike humans they are able to regrow their teeth many times over the course of their life there you go there you go works okay that's fair we just got to find good players we are not ripping out our teeth that'll just be something where she bites down she's like oh my tooth fell i'll be like hey can i have that i want a keepsake as i took my usual spot me of you <laughs> Just rub it and you're like, ah, yeah, it's my girlfriend's mouth. <laughs> That's, you, but you think about it, you really can't do that, you know? Because, like, imagine if, like, for example, let's say Jen lost a tooth, right, Jeremy? And you decided to uh -huh. make a necklace of that tooth and just wear it around. <laughs> You'd be looked at like you're a fucking freak. <laughs> it reminds me of her. <laughs> Real prize from this game is the science we learned along the way. I like when we take little pit stops for little trivia bits. <clears throat> Alright. As I took my usual spot, I felt something odd in the corner of my eye. Looking up, it was to see Olivia looking my way. With that smile on her face. One that spoke so many words, yet I couldn't figure out what. All I could do in turn was try to match it, before focusing on Miss Prockling's la uh, latest lecture. As more time passes, the art contest fades into the background. Last week, I had a scare with Principal Sc when Principal Scaler called me to her office. Feared that they had figured out what Olivia did and assumed I was part of it, just as she predicted. Luckily, that wasn't the case. Instead, she just wanted to inform me that sh they had no leads as to who could have done the swap, and since it was tampered, it'd be removed from the contest. No skin off my back, honestly. I wonder how many t uh, teeth or smile is missing already. She seemed to have like a pretty solid set of chompers. As compensation, she gave me one of the runner-up prizes, a coupon for some pizza from some Italian restaurant called Dino Mo's. Not the biggest pizza fan, but not a bad prize to get after all of this. Fuck you, Nico. Pizza's ballin'. Saving it for a rainy day. I already don't. I don't like this guy anymore. Can we <laughs> yo, stop playing yo, this can, can we throw can we throw Nico to the fucking water? Just get him out of here. Drowning? We did a new MC. Where's my pizza MC? However, I found myself in a conundrum of my own doing. My peers' concerns about my entry were resolved, but I hadn't accounted for the new questions about my portfolio. Now Inko can take her on a date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza date with the yeah. gator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't think of that. Can we have Dover as an MC? I don't know, mm. I don't like Dover. Ben's fine. Like, he has his moments where it's like, alright, come on, Ben. I think the biggest L at this point is that he's dating Mia. At first it was like, wow, he pulled the bad bitch. And now it's like, wow, he pulled the bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, sure, she's a bad bitch. My paint portfolio. The few times I showed off my photography work, they'd be mildly impressed at best. And were never upfront about it either. <laughs> no, instead I got the runaround. Oh, uh, yeah, these are nice, Inko. Not bad, not bad, but, uh, what about what you did for the contest? Can't even be mad about it, since it's just another misunderstanding. Unintended lie, from my side of things. But then I had a thought. What if it wasn't a lie? What if I was actually good at painting? And after working at it for the past month... Yeah, no, I can't unscrew this. For the past three weeks, I've been staying after school, making use of one of the club rooms to practice. Hey, Shinko, did you listen to any of the tips I gave you? Using everything I had at my disposal, namely the textbooks from Mr. Uh, from Mr. Ayerakan, and how-to on uh, tutorials online, I'd say as late as possible trying to get to the same le skill level as Olivia. Not gonna happen. Impossible. And as I stare at the okay. horrid acrylic monstrosity before me, I could do nothing but weep at my own inadequacies. Not actually weep, but squinting at the Lovecraftian horror before me, and I can maybe see a little progress drowning the madness of the excess paint. 
Olivia had made good on her promise to teach me around the time I asked Mr. Yadikin to borrow the keys to the spare room. And while I memorized all of her teachings down to the letter... What am I even looking at? Are you trying to, an abstract sort of thing here? It was an attempt at a self-portrait, actually. Could probably post it online and some rich asshole would buy it. Is that good? No. Never trust the opinions of people on the internet. Looks at chat. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that the hard way. After a brief period of awkward silence, I let myself collapse on the stool behind me and toss off the oily apron in frustration. At this, at this rate, I'm going to be a double fraud or something. Oh. I don't even have the energy to get angry. Probably looks better now, at least. I don't believe you get so good at this. Olivia, please, you've got to have some actual advice for me. She quietly hums to herself, slipping away a notebook she had splayed across her lap into a nearby bag. Well, when I want to draw, it's usually because I've got something on my mind. What, like inspiration? Kinda. More so that I just envisioned something and I wanted to put that on the campus. Well, hey, that's me. well, uh, fucking really rude of you, Olivia. I have Aphantasia. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker can't see the end. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Amused then. I don't really get it, but. Door gets kicked open. <laughs> the door of the studio flies open, and Damien quickly storms inside. Inko, Olivia, are you guys here? We're the only ones in here. He takes heavy breaths as his vision darts across the room. After a moment of surprise, I raise my arm to catch his attention. Damien? What's wrong? The hyperactive Dilphosaurus spots me, taking a final breath before jogging over. Guys, I need to ask you something. This is going to be something dumb, isn't it? <laughs> what? Is everything alright? Is something happening? I can't help but panic. I've never seen Damien this flustered. Do you want to come to the arcade with me and Liz? <laughs> I fucking roll my eyes. <laughs> is... Is that it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Wait, when was this decided? We always see Damien this flustered, always. Damien's always worked up about something. Hey, can we talk about this real quick? What is this on his shirt? Like the white? Damn. Mm, I've noticed a couple times and it like flops to the other side as well. Like it's mirrored. And I, I don't know what it is. Like what is it supposed to be? It's just supposed to be some uh, reflective shine, I guess. I thought something bad had happened. Nope. <laughs> Just asking. Liz already has the car prepped and everything. Oh. Probably should have expected that, but still. How did you know we were here? I didn't. I just kept opening doors until I found Big you. Big Okiyasu vibes. <laughs> oh, shit. Might be spray painted? Hmm. I guess I could understand that, yeah. Like oh, I can see that too, yeah. Yeah, because it's been consistent. It's not like a visual error, you know? Yeah. I've been at it. Oh, wait, that's you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I've been at it for a while, actually. I'm Damn. sure Liz is wasting so much fucking gas. <laughs> Liz is going to be so pissed when we get outside. You guys don't even believe it. Damien's eyes dart to the canvas that lies on the floor next to me. You're working on your next masterpiece? Ooh, painting sideways is probably one of your trade secrets, huh? Olivia hides her snicker with her hand. Don't worry, I won't tell a soul. Yeah, that's right. Don't tell anybody. I lean down and pick up the canvas and place it upright, deciding to remove the ugly painting and place it in the corner of the room to dry. <laughs> anyway, how about it? To the arcade? We all have Baryonyx fidgets. Her brow lowered in contemplation as she considers the question. The arcade. Uh, 
It's not like I had any other plans today. Yeah, sure, why not? All right, let's go. Wait, don't just... <laughs> Fuck that easel! Inko, Livia, there you are. Damien was taking so long to get you, I was about to come find you myself. This time both Damien and I are wheezing for air. Despite Olivia's protest and hesitation, Damien had wasted no time in grabbing her by the handlebars and sprinting for the exit. I had chased after them, all the while Olivia screamed like a banshee as she was pushed through the hallway at a breakneck pace. Yeah. <sighs> Just... <sighs> Take a deep breath and stand upright. Olivia's claws have dug into her armrest, and she's definitely trying to kill Damien with her glare, which he happily ignores. Why didn't you just message me or something? You have my number. I wanted to, but... <laughs> I joined too late to know for sure. Is it possible to romance Liz, or is it just one female? It looks like it's just one. I think it's just one. And like, yeah. there, there's, I, I've seen that there's four endings, and I think it's just varying shades of how your relationship progresses with Olivia. has <laughs> no fucking brain cells. You know, I, I, I like it when there's a character with few brain cells, but they got a heart of gold. You know, because <laughs> you never have to guess with them. It's not like, are, do they have ulterior motives? Like, no, there's, there's no way that stupid little brain can have ulterior motives. <laughs> Yo, Josuke. <laughs> Oi, Josuke! <laughs> Almost fucking died, dude. Uh, <laughs> didn't want to ruin your concentration, man. <laughs> just pivot straight from the JoJo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just. I, I feel like every time I say Oi, Josuke, I just go to that scene. We've done it multiple times. It's, it's just so good, man. I love part four. <laughs> I'm so dumb, I escaped death. And then he like waxes on philosophically for a few minutes and then Josuke is like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> don't do that nope. ever again. I don't know what it was what it was really all about, but something just told me I needed to live my best life. <laughs> my brother said, do you really want to die? And I sat there and I'm like, yeah, I guess I don't. <laughs> like when the character doesn't fumble simple conversations. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like that too. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, right? It's okay for a character to fumble a situation when even I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't know how to approach this. But when it's something where I'm like, no, clearly that's not the right thing to say, dude. It's like, come on, man. But then again, some people just don't pick up on social cues. So like, eh. Mm. So instead you kick the art room door open. <laughs> yep. Liz had to get had the good grace to look embarrassed on Damien's behalf. <laughs> but yeah, it <laughs> gave you a bit, a little bit extra time, right? You've been staying late for forever now. I can't hide the wince. Hadn't occurred to me that more people would notice. Oh, relax. Not like you're the only one. Yeah. Sometimes you need to stay behind for student council and club meetings. Right. Sure. So, uh... <laughs> Come on, the car's in the student section. How is she gonna drive? Easy. Wait, I kind of want to see the car's design now. Right, right? <laughs> she just goes to the sunroof, probably. <laughs> That's a requirement for a car selection. The dino duo started toward the student parking lot, headed towards a rather old but well-kept sedan. Olivia grumbles silently to herself, but follows after nonetheless. Uh, come on, dude. It'll take a few minutes to get Olivia in, and then 30 to get to the arcade. It won't take that long, damn it. Olivia huffs and wheels herself to the passenger side, opening the door for herself. Do you need any... It's fine. To punctuate her statement, Olivia uses her strong arms to lift herself on her armrests. Then, with more grace than I thought possible from the olive-scaled girl, she manages to flop down into the passenger seat. I stare at the abandoned chair, wondering where to put it. 
I got ruined the trunk, Yinko. Dunk. The trunk lid pops up with a heavy thunk to punctuate that. Well, it said clunk, not thunk. It takes me more time than I'd like to admit to figure out how to undo the locks to actually collapse the chair, but once it's done, I'm able to slide it into the spacious storage area easily. Is the little icon after all the text a little paintbrush? Yeah, it looks to be so. Yeah, I didn't want I didn't bring it up the first time we played this, but I was really confused why it is in this in the case because Inko's like a photographer, mm -hmm. but then Olivia's an artist, so it's like yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we've leaned more into like like painting and the art side of things other than photography here. It's just been kind of like Inko's flavor more than anything else, but that hasn't been like the focus necessarily. Yeah. Damien had already hopped through the window of the front passenger seat by the time I'm done, as if he'd practiced the maneuver. Clack, clack, clack. Well, I have a quick question for uh, Jen here, since you like kind of looked it up. Is each chapter like defined by I like the when we get like those close-up art pieces? You know what I mean, of like Olivia and stuff. Because if so, we haven't had that many just trying to kind of like gauge when we hit a chapter yeah, yeah. where like i'm looking out because like obviously we're in a new arc now we're gonna go to arcade arc arcade arc oh, i'm so i'm so excited dude we're gonna see fucking olivia kill it in the arcade she's gonna f destroy us at something yeah you're on arcade arc make sense <clears throat> i simply open the door behind liz's seat and watch as a pile of soda cans empty out onto the pavement below uh, sorry. Those were from this morning. I just toss them into the back seat when I'm done. I don't know how you can tell when the chapters end. I'm assuming that it's kind of like usually when like the transitions happen. Um, because I can get, if I really thought about it, I'm pretty sure I could probably pick out where each chapter ends. Oh, yeah. It's like I basically every major thing, right? So I feel like there is the bully arc or something. Mm -hmm. That was its own thing, I'm pretty sure. And what else happened? Missed too many of the beginning sections, so I don't know about the close-ups that you're talking about. Uh, we're basically just talking about, um, like these. Uh, essentially the more detailed art pieces instead of just, um, the characters. Surprise Liz doesn't make you use a bag. I do. Damien pulls up an overflowing plastic bag as if it were a trophy. Uh... Why haven't you tossed all those bottles out already? I'm saving them for a project about recycling. Plus, I'm also going to use a couple of them for a sculpture. Saves me the trouble of going out and finding aluminum. Yeah, I get to drink as much soda as I want. I don't really say anything as Damien scoops out the rest of the cans from the floor of the car and puts them in a new bag, which he then stuffs in the car's trunk before giving me and Olivia a thumbs up. All right, dudes. We're good to go. Damien. Damien. I nod and slink into the semi-clean seat. My hand searches for the buckle of the seatbelt and brushes against something warm and soft. There's a tiny gas next to me, and the comfortable mystery in my hand is yanked away. Huh? I look to Olivia, her hand held to her chest. Her green face has a scarlet tinge, and her mirror-shade eyes glare holes through my head. Now she looks chill. <laughs> Garrett. You okay? The emerald scaled girl turns her maw from me. So, <laughs> okay, I just want to make like a quick remark on it. Like, cause I read fan fiction from time to time, right? And it's always yeah. funny to see the ways that like people use to describe like a character, you know? Like yeah. we've, well, we've, we've had about 10 different so ways, right? <laughs> It's just kind of funny, right? Yeah. Also, one. oh good. <laughs> have we ever have we seen Olivia from the front? <laughs> Can you see Olivia, Olivia from the front? We've seen we've seen front facing Olivia, yeah. Have we? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, hold up. Let me let me plop a save here because I think around here we have front facing Olivia. So we're saved. Uh, let's see. I want to say it was before this, right? When we first see her here. That's kind I of front-facing. 
kind of. No, I want. You like, want complete front face? Goofy ass. I don't think we've gotten that just yet. Barney ass face. Loki hate that in fix. It definitely is like it's not my favorite, and it definitely is something that jumps out at me every time it's used. And it's like, how, it's, how many different adjectives can we use to a different noun? You know, like because you look at to it, the same noun. emerald scaled girl. <laughs> Adjective noun. We've got baryonyx gator. It, it's it's just it's a little goofy, but I understand. Is what it is. Imagine they just have the hexadecimal code <laughs> for green. <laughs> Tucking that one in the back of my head. I stifle, I stifle a mystery chuckle at that. The warmth on my palm fades, however, and leaves my hand feeling lost. Sorry, hold on. I'm reserving my eyes. You're good. Okay, the safety checks are done. What is that? Oh! Wow. <laughs> That's what that is. I, you know, I don't know what I expected. I I guess it wasn't that though, huh? I mean, that's safer than just having your head out the sunroof the entire time. Yeah, yeah, it really is. But you, it, it almost seems like her neck's long or like shorter here. You know what I mean? Cause she like reached all the way to the back of the fucking auditorium before to talk to Damon. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Liz gets in the driver's seat and grips the steering wheel. Outside, she's craning her neck to check on the mirrors and tires. Wait, Liz drives with her head sticking out the window? Liz pokes her head in. What's that? Her neck snakes inside and coils around the hook in the middle of the car. Oh, so... Wait. Hold up. Was that there before? Like a hook? It was there. Oh, oh before. shit. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, right there. Huh. Okay. I was like, what the hell is that? You can only imagine how she twirls and untwirls each time, doing hoops with your head. You, you like that has to not like you have to be so used to that 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 doesn't become dizzy, right? Like just inverting your worldview all the time, or being able to invert your worldview as easily as that, because like a human can't just like upside down easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that makes sense that she has a thing to rest on. Yeah, because otherwise that would be very annoying. I would assume. Then with a the practice motion, her neck continually coils till her head sits atop the neck roll, as if no different from someone putting on shoes. It kind of looks like a giant scale-covered scarf. There's even still enough space for her to see the window and check behind her. Nico? Hmm? Uh, it wasn't anything important. Alright. But, uh, the city, right? I'd actually been wanting to see it a bit more up close for Yetikin's class. Do you know how much gas money it burned through to take a detour around here? Wait. Okay, no, it, there's like a... <laughs> you can see it for a second. It, I'm, Inko's about to say something, but gets cut off. Yeah. Good, because neither do I. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, what? No. I barely have enough as is. You on the way is fine. I'm looking forward to it as well. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll point out some stuff I remember along the way. Mm, you're my tour guide now. Don't make me change my mind. <laughs> Glad it's settled. Everyone buckled in, right? Liz pulls away from the school parking lot, staring down the opposite direction. I've always entered... The opposite direction I've always entered and exited. Weird thing, but the edge of my world was so close as a right turn out of my own school. Then again, I still haven't been living here long. Anyone want a station? I don't think I've ever listened to the radio here either. Liz and Olivia hardly seem to glance in Damien's direction as well. <laughs> Suit yourselves. Okay. Within the span of a few seconds, the natural ambience of the road is replaced with loud sounds of decades-old rock music, sending vibrations throughout the car and everybody in it. Just as fast as it comes, however, it stops as Liz haphazardly yanks the volume knob counterclockwise, toning it, the music down to a bearable level. Damien frowns for a moment. No, he didn't. But he doesn't seem to contest her decision. V what the... 
I turned off all notification stuff except for messages and calls. And between all the- oops. So that's what right-click does. <clears throat> between all the people I messaged, there's only one who isn't inside the car. Checking the screen, I see... Any song requests, man? Damien, I'm right behind you. You can just <laughs> ask. <laughs> Seriously? I don't know, Damien. So long as it isn't twangy country music. Sure, sure. Wait, you've been texting? How long? Yeah, since like the first week of school. <gasps> he doesn't want to disturb the music. You know what? I guess that... No, because I still... Still, Damien should just turn around and talk to me. <laughs> the texting's goofy. What the heck, dude? Let me see your phone. I hand it over. Open on the contact creation page. She taps the first few numbers and pauses, then sheepishly yanks her phone from her coat pocket. She doesn't know her own number. Hey, don't be mean. It <laughs> took me a while to fucking learn my own phone number. I literally finish this tapping her number in and hands it back. Dude appreciates true rock. I mean, it was, it, it was some good ass music. I'll say that. I would have listened to it. She's entered herself as live long. Huh, sounds vaguely oriental. Bzz. Can't just say that. Oh, that must be the decal on her uh, shirt. Th yeah, I do this too. <laughs> I just uh, send a yeah. message with Tess. Uh huh. Yep, got it. <laughs> Dude, the rat's doing a crotch grab. Too. <laughs> it is. Holy shit. Dude, all right, look, our people have immense strength, all right? <laughs> I just so want to cool. say that. Foreshadow for not being a long run. Jen, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Don't be bringing that kind of energy in here. That was uncalled for. That's why I sent it. She giggles at her own joke. And despite being the button of it in... But of it, the mood in the car is too high to hold it against her. R refer to the title. If anything happens to Olivia, there's going to be another meteor. Me. Before long, the dense forestry starts giving way to more urban developments. More and more decorative palm trees start dotting the paths as well. The silhouette of the city gets closer, and we approach one of those spaghetti junctions leading up to it. She's the one who says it all the time. Yeah, well, I don't want to think about it. I want to just assume that she's going to have to, like, go away somewhere else. All right? I'm just going on a trip. It's okay. I'll be back. She's going to have to go to college, you know? That's what I want to just... I'm coping right now. Let me fucking cope. The result of decades of poor infrastructure decisions. Multi-million dollar projects promising to fix all the traffic if they just built one more overpass. <laughs> one more. One more. One more. <laughs> Olivia's paying close attention to her phone. She scrolls lazily through some form. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, uh, nothing. Hey, Lizard Lounge? Oh boy, you still browsing that, Olivia? Yeah? What is it? Don't tell him. It's this weird exclusionary, exclusionary chat room. They only allow dinosaur women, men, and rather specifically human men are banned. Hey, yo, what the fuck? I want in. Mm. Racial segregation. That's what I'm saying, Damien. <laughs> Olivia showed me once. The people on it are really weird. <laughs> Is, she, <laughs> Is she browsing QAnon? <laughs> A fucking smile on his face though. Humans are banned? We weren't supposed to tell him. It's the last safe house for us on the internet. With us? <laughs> what? <The dynasty. laughs> oh fuck, is, is Olivia radicalized? I think there's probably better places for that online for you to associate with. 
You didn't tell me about racial segregation. It's not it's that. The only thing he knows. Is like, Just how it has to be for a safety. Some dino girl can be doing anything at all, and there's always at least three guys in the comments saying, she looks like... Don't say it. Rule 34 ruined everything, goddamn human males. They also really bring down the quality of the site. Look, it's explained in the rules that humans have one-fifth the attention span of dinos. Hey! What the fuck? I didn't expect this turn! Liz groans while Olivia shows me her phone. The graph is blurred to hell and I can't make out most of the text. I don't know how I feel about all this. What's not to get, Inko? Think about it, you're in history class, it sucks. So you just remember, wait a second, I'm human, and stop listening. I wish I could do that. According to Lady <laughs> Hitler here, you can. It's just a funny group of women like me. Lay off, let me have it. Dude, <laughs> this is hitting harder than the Stormfront reveal. <laughs> Oh, we're confronting it. You don't really believe that stuff, though, do you? Not really. It's just the rules of the space, all right? Okay. Olivia sticks the phone back in her pocket with a huff. <sighs> Was the ride to the arcade always this long? I think we're about 20 minutes away from the arcade still. Don't worry, Inko. The water fountains are integrated. <laughs> What? Oh. <laughs> no, I got Took it. you a second? <laughs> no, I was thinking of like the plumbing. I was like, what does he mean by that? Mm. Bluetooth water found? Shut up! Damien cackles to himself. Uh, Alright. <laughs> I hope the place still sells those hot dogs for just a dollar. There's, There's no, no way. way out there. There's no way anyone anywhere sells hot dogs for a dollar anymore. Yeah, but they did. It was great. Olivia and I would save our lunch money and just go there after class. I don't think I'd trust it if it were still that cheap, honestly. <laughs> you ate a dog off the floor once? That's different. Damien fills the air with old tales of his and Olivia's adventures in the arcade. She'd occasionally chime in to correct him on whatever over-embellishment. Even as the last remnants of suburbia melt away and the skyscrapers overtake our view of the outside world. Finally, I'm in the big city. Here we are. I'm almost disappointed when we pull into an arcade parking lot. Large glass windows covered in sun bleached promotional leaflets adorn the front of the arcade, and the building itself looks a couple decades old. This place was probably successful in the past, but I can only imagine they break even now. E br they only break even nowadays. <clears throat> Though, maybe the recent resurgence of Retro Deco could change that. I could show you more on the return trip. Come on. <laughs> the art field tour. Guess she must have seen my brief hesitance. Liz unlocks the trunk, and I hop out to get Olivia's chair. As I attempt to heave the thing out of Liz's trunk, it takes considerably more effort than I'd like to admit. Now, how do I unfold this blasted thing? There's a really oh, As I checked to make sure that all my fingers were intact, I could see Olivia snickering through the passenger window. Inko son, you have much to learn. Observe. Olivia makes sure the brakes are held and heaves herself over in one motion. The chair is forcibly opened by momentum alone with a loud crack. She gracefully rolls by me, tongue stuck out in a smug victory over my ineptitude. Ready. Sweet. Damien oh, hurries yeah. us inside, and I can tell he's the most excited to be here out of anybody. What is that? What is that machine does your lover? Oh, I see. Yeah, it's the, it's one of the ones where, it, like, fortune cookie type, though. You just grab it and it does something. Mm -hmm. Dude, this place is the bomb. We should scrounge for change to come here after school. Oh, I think that's a uh, DDR machine right here. Yeah, I see that, too. Jeremy. 
when you guys come to visit, it's DDR time. DDR time? Hell yeah. <laughs> that, that pause there sounded less enthusiastic. Well, I'm down. It's just I remember the last time I tried DDR, I got winded so fast. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> I was pretty oh, fucked. Uh, the place is abuzz with activity, flashing machines, all com uh, competing for attention, and gamers excitedly conversing. I lean in a bit closer to Olivia. Gamers? It's pretty dang loud here. Ain't it be alright having to speak up more? Hmm? Of course I am. What are you taking me for, kid? Sorry. I appreciate the concern. Liz scowls as she peels her boot from the floor with a loud shh. Yeah. Damien takes off toward a nearby coin machine. Fistfuls of bills at the ready. I called it. I could have told you too. I've been here before. <laughs> so why didn't you warn me about the stickiness? Olivia shrugs. Liz's head lowers to bridge of snoot pinching levels. Well, you two did kind of drop this on me last minute. But I still remember this place pretty well. Great, you can show Inko around. I'll go with Damien. Arcade date, arcade date. Liz meekly puts her pointer fingers together as she looks at the salmon frilled team. She's happy. <laughs> you can tell. Those two player gun thingies look fun to try out. You mean the light gun games? Yeah, those ones. I can't put my finger on it, but something tells me that Liz was banking on splitting apart from the start. Though it would give me ample opportunity to have some alone time with Olivia. Just to get to know her more, of course. Of course. Liz! I think I broke this one's joystick! Liz sighs heavily through her nose. Seriously, Damien? Oh, come on. It's perfectly even and fair. Are you sure about this, Liz? Could just all stick together. The long-necked Dino looks around the arcade nervously. As much as I want to protest the suggestion, it might be best. It might be for the best. Liz wants to stick with Damien, probably to make sure he doesn't do more damage. And Olivia knows this place as well, so she'd know all the best games. We've already been spending time together after school, so why not? It's only natural. I'm not against the idea, just uh. Alright, glad you agree. Liz takes this as her cue to leave, and she quickly pulls Damien away deep into the arcade. Meanwhile, Olivia begins to roll ahead, but stops and gives me an annoyed look. Uh, come on already! Ah, right. As soon as I step closer, Olivia resumes her casual roll down the aisleway. She's a rhythm gamer! No. <laughs> Olivia's eyes seem distant. Check she... all your boxes. Yeah, this is uh. <laughs> Dabs my head. Olivia's eyes seem distant. She looks over at the various game cabinets in the room. <laughs> nah. Silver Iris is dancing to and fro, a soft hum resonating from her mouth. I try and follow her gaze, where her gaze lingers, but she seems to be constantly drifting to something new every moment while deep in her own thoughts. Dance, dance, pro. I'm actually pretty good on a DDR machine. I'm not a uh, god, yeah. but. I can I can do like hard difficulty, you know? On like mm -hmm. a lot of songs. I'll definitely stick with normal. Yeah. No, it's fair. I just can't move my feet that fast. I can only move my feet that fast for a small amount of time and then I tank. <laughs> and then I fall on the ground like Peter Griffin style and I need to breathe for a little bit. I told you before, my fitness is dog water and I can't <laughs> my cardio shit, so. And as we carry on slowly, the creeping awkwardness in my stomach gnaws away at me. I have no clue what to do right now. The point of this excursion was to relax. Feels rude to interrupt her, but she definitely knows better than me. Say, Olivia. The voice brings her back to the current moment with a start, her hands maneuvering her chair around to look at me fully. What, uh, what game should we try first? The Bryonyx shrugs her shoulders. Anything? Okay, then how about one of your favorites? My favorites? Yeah, you used to come here all the time. I'm sure you've got some you prefer. The look of surprise from her is quickly hidden by her turning her chair back around. Fine. My favorites, then. 
My favorites. She pushes her wheelchair with purpose towards a particularly large screen in the corner. Looking at it closer, there's a large block connected to it, and dull, multicolored sticks hanging off the sides with the wires. Oh, yeah, damn I'm it. just driving to the song right now. It's kind of funky, isn't it? Saxophone's going off. Hmm? I look up at the title above the screen. Ruin Robbers? The more that I look at it, the more I see where splotches of fresh paint barely cover poorly done marker graffiti. Olivia's pout is so prominent as she glares at the base of the funny looking block before the screen. They updated it. So it should be better then, right? Her pout breaks, transforming into a depressed <laughs> frown as her eyes seem to gloss over. I follow her gaze to the metal plate at the base and try to and try to, to try and better understand. The machine looks pretty well maintained, if you ask me. Something wrong with it? They added a foot pedal for the cover action. Oh. I test the plate, feeling it sink down, noticing the video demo on screen changes to a screen with a bunch of ass with numbers next to each instance. This sucks. <laughs> Olivia's hands curl into fists as she glares at the machine. Oh, that's not her username. A twinge runs through my chest when I look back to the frustrated dino girl. One aspect of her favorite pastimes has been changed in a way that almost robs her of it. Thought strikes a painful chord in my heart. Though I know I had zero hand in the game update. All the same, to see the clover scaled girl- <laughs> see? Yeah. When, when you when you cognizant of it, it, it jumps out at you every single time. Looks so morose. I turn my eyes away to my feet, the sensation leaving as I do, and a flash of brilliance overcomes me as I look at my loafers. Hey, I got an idea. She cuts me off with a growl. I know what you're gonna say, and the answer is no. So you're willing to just give up because you can't play it easily? Yes. Olivia's response leaves me a bit floored. Her hateful eyes leer venomously at her former favorite game, but I know my idea will work. Okay, you play then. Haven't you been paying attention? I can't- I'll handle the battle work. Olivia's words are left hanging as she tries to visualize what I'm saying. Her confused gaze wanders between me and the flat rectangle on the floor. The whole time she looks so goofy I have to withhold a chuckle in fear of her clawing me. She must have realized though as she snatches the light gun from my hand, her ch- her cheeks bearing a red hue. Okay, so it's kind of like, um, kind of like Time Crisis then, right? Where, yeah, like, you have the this cover was mechanic where you Just get down, get down. Switch gun. Fine. Yeah, One game. She looks at the light gun in her hand and takes a deep breath. I think I beat Time Crisis 4. Damn. Better do your job right, Inko. I give Olivia a nod, and she wheels herself right next to the arcade machine. Gimme. She reaches out for my hand and goes to take it before I can respond. She takes it for a split second, and then moves down to grab my wrists instead. Her skills are soft and cool. Hit the pedal when I squeeze, capiche? I nod an affirmation, and Olivia blasts the start button into pieces. N not so tight. Dude, hit the damn pedal! It's like you're playing with the controller lag. Inko! Sorry! Holy crap, this is worse than I remember. I'm trying to just... Okay. Hi, it's me. I'm the guy that makes sense. Here, you can see I put the respawning enemies in front of a place you're forced to cross. I came up with this idea while eating a bird. I don't even want to staple my ears to... <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't even want to staple my ears to me. Fucking damn it! Not again! Ooh. Too distracted by Dono Girl handing, holding my hand. My face is red. I can't hear anything. Oh. This game sucks. Wanna play again? She's a bit <laughs> intense. When Olivia finally releases her grip on my wrist, I feel my blood rushing through the imprint she left. I'm never washing this wrist again. <laughs> we ended up playing four or five games total. That's probably enough. I'm good to move on. You? Are you sure? I don't want to keep you here all day. Olivia looks over the machine one last time before sliding the plastic gun back in the slot. I'm still a bit disappointed they changed it, but... Thanks. Alright, 
There's better games around here anyway. Let's go. A stray thought from before I really got to know Olivia brings to the forefront of my mind. Uh, <laughs> Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. Oh, this is like a, this is, a memory. This is memory, Damien. Sometime along the way, people started calling her Hot Wheels. Don't remember who or when. But I do know it's proof that she got that dog in her. <laughs> that dog in her. Before she can roll away too far, my hand takes hold of one of her chair grips, jolting the dino girl from her sullen stupor. Say, I've got an idea, Hot Wheels. Why don't we try fighting game you were so good at? The fighting game? I hate... Olivia's jaw clicked shut and her hands ring together. I tightly. thought it was a racing game. <laughs> fighting nah, game? Nah, I, I assumed it was a fighting game because it was like, she was beating people, you know? Yeah. And, you know, a racing game... Unless it's a motorcycle, uh, she can't really... <laughs> you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Arcade cabinets can't change, right? I mean... Her gaze turns towards the opposite end of the arcade, and I can hear the loud hollers of competition from here. Come on, Hot Wheels, what do you say? The name seems to invigorate her. Her glacier iris, iris is hardening, and her ivory claws <laughs> touching at her wheels. An eerie grin creeps across her features. Tongue polishing an incisor as her predatory eyes latch onto a particular cabinet in the far side. Olivia picks a direction and speeds off, parting the sea of sweaty dinos and leaving a small space of safety in her wake. After a short while passing some digital pachinko machines, she looks back at me for a moment as if to confirm my presence and to say, don't lose me, and then yanks her wheelchair to launch herself through the building towards a new destination. What? Hey! finally gave chase, following as best I can while avoiding the rest of the awestruck players that just witnessed the high-speed dino girl shoving them aside in her wake. As I get closer, the atmosphere seems to grow thicker, the very air becoming dank and heavy, almost as if someone dialed a humidifier up to 11. For a second I have to stop in my tracks and catch my breath, and try to cool okay. down as my shades begin Smash to flash. Players. Oh no, the funk TM. So this is the power of the fighting game crowd. I had heard things, but I thought they were jokes. Through the fog, I spot Liz, or rather, Liz's head, sticking above the crowds. Yo, you found us! Getting closer, Damien and Liz's head come into view. Olivia stops and checks one last time that it didn't get washed away in the crowd. She then moves past Damon and Liz, coming to a screeching halt next to a particular cabinet that's occupied by somebody else. She removes a shiny coin from her pocket, placing it firmly down on the controls of the next of the current player who hardly glances at her. As I step closer, I'm able to overhear the exchange between the two dinos. The greaseball Ankylosaur, without even looking away from the cabinet, starts rattling off his credentials to Olivia as if it was a job interview. You know I'm the best Jurassic kick player. This side of Old Caldera, right? Double S ranked, three online tournament wins. Besides, it's 50 cents, not. Shut up and nut up already. Olivia's voice causes the Anklia sort of grimace and finally turns his head. You really want to try me? Look, Tiny Tim. His jaw clicks shut as his eyes manage to sweep above and then down to Olivia, his eyes squinting as his retina slowly adjusts to the low lighting of something not displaying brightly colored pixelated characters. Bro, you know you can't be bringing chairs over here, not after last summer. Olivia growls and raises a fist, and I think the pale-scaled dino finally sees who is challenging him. His small flaps helplessly as he tries to explain himself before just stopping himself completely. Never mind. Sorry. The gator girl sighs and taps a finger on the quarter she placed down. We'll say you can't refuse, right? His head tilts in confusion. You know? to be the new champ here, right? This is the champ's cabinet, right? Damien's come over by this point, followed closely by Liz's head. Champ's cabinet? <laughs> An official. That's the oldest one here. Been here since the dawn of time. It's like sacred or something. 
I look over the old machine. The paint on it chipped and positively covered in marker ink to the point that it, the only legible thing on it is a very juvenile edit to the game's title. This thing? Yeah, man. They only let the head honchos actually use it. If you're <laughs> bought it trying without credentials, you end up headbutted. That's bull. I'll believe it. I look back to Olivia, who's having a withering stare down with the squat guy she challenged. Look, uh, lady, I'm a big deal here. Buster o nuts, crown champ, and all of Orcadera. This particular giraffe's kick machine's got history. It happens to be the same machine that Dino the Rex. Dino the Rex Go managed to parry. Quit stalling and fight me already. I'm not, I'm just, uh, setting the stage is all. Plus, you think you're the only challenge I've got? I look around, notice that there is now a group surrounding us. On my title as champion, I'll take all covers now. A hushed whisper goes through the crowd. Form a line now. Okay. Tallest to smallest. What? No cutting. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. We're gonna wipe the floor with you, Buster. Wait. What? I don't even play video games. And I'm not really a gamer either. Too bad, consider it the blood tax. I want to protest further, but Olivia's head turns toward me with a pleading look on her face. Besides, you want- you think I want to put my hands on that thing? We're in! <laughs> Inko! Yeah! Come on, Liz, it won't be that bad. You're still, uh, by the Brachio booth, right? Hold tight, I'll come get you. Your body is still over there. <laughs> Disembodied. <laughs> Like a fucking Dullahan. <laughs> Damien pushes back through the small group around us, following Liz's neck to find the rest of her. Her head swivels around and gives chase, her pleas to not have to play falling on deaf ears. Brachio booth? The arcade's claustrophobic, so brachiosaurs were dead to bump into everything, including each other. There were some lawsuits, so now there's a few platforms placed where people like her can sit and reach everything. There's even some water fountains attached. Doesn't stop things from getting tangled when there's multiple, but it's something. Huh. Lore. In the end, Liz must have relented, because she shuffles up to the rest of the group. Were you gonna say something? No, I was like, nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Fine, let's make this quick. Liz reluctantly steps forward towards the arcade cabinet, a crooked smile forming on the top on the self-proclaimed champion's face. Doesn't take long for Liz to completely lose. The large Ankylosaurus hand move, hands move like a blur as they dance across the controls, pummeling their digital opponent into the ground. As boastful as he was earlier, he at least proved that he's skilled at Jurassic Kick. The screen displaying PERFECT after only a minute against Liz. Liz crosses her arms and starts heading back to her old seat in the booth, head in tow with a pout. Buster leans his head back against his clasped hands to make sure that it was no big deal. Next victim. Damien struts to the cabinet and jams his hands yeah. in his pocket for his change. Is there a whole piggy bank in there? Haven't you seen... Haven't seen your group around before. Tourists. Huh? Oh, no. Liv and I used to come here all the time. Life's been tough, you know, so we got some friends to come along this trip down memory lane. Not in the mood a bit. Mm. This place hasn't changed much uh, in the years either. Aha! He hoists the quarter high and jams them in the slot. Once more, the screen lights up and the character selection music busts in. Buster considers his selection, and ultimately chooses the same character. Damien jams on the buttons. Are oh, you going to read all that? What's with the death glare? Damien just picked a counter to his character. Probably expects all of us to be beginners. Buster does seem a bit more tense now. Been a while since then, though. <laughs> the explanation is cut short as her words take on a scratchy quality to them. Hey, you okay? What? Uh, I'm fine. I can go and refill your canteen pretty quick. 
Sure, thanks. She reaches behind her and hooks her severely dented water bottle from her chair. There's something to look into for Christmas. That buster guy said there was water by Brachio booths. Although I can't imagine the water here is very good. Christmas, what? What am I thinking? I haven't gotten anyone a gift like that before. Focus and go, you're just getting some water. I head deeper into the arcade towards the center, passing through an aisle lit by game screens. Hey, you guys done already? No, I'm just refilling Olivia's bottle. Guess I'm gonna miss Dan uh, Damien's match. Say, Liz, this sticker here, what is it? Hmm. Her head comes in close as she eyes the weird brand on the canteen. Oh, that's sort of some really old show. Like, back in the 90s old. Why? Just curious is all. Well, I never really asked Olivia about it. Maybe I should. After all, I think I recall watching a video essay about it once. Though I can never really get into all their stuff. The animation always looks so choppy. Recapping the bottle, I lead Liz's head back to the fighting game section. It's surprising that Damien and Buster are still playing, this time both of their heads slamming furiously on the controls. The crowd is even formed around the duo, exchanging low whispers as they watch the old CRT screen. I pick Olivia at the front of the crowd close to the cabinet, so she's able to clearly watch. She's hyper-focused, to the point that when I swish the bottle in front of her face, she just leans over to keep watching. Evil it is, then. I hold to the canteen above her muzzle and carefully tip it over until a few drops fall on her face. Her tongue laps along her lips and swipes up at the nourishing droplets before glaring at me. Hey! <laughs> Here you go, fresh from the latrine. Har. She takes the bottle and downs most of it right away before clearing her throat. <sighs> Thanks. How's Damien's match going? Well... He's getting too aggressive. He is? Yeah. Buster picked a rushdown character, so Damien picked his owner to keep Buster at a distance. Problem is that zoners are notoriously bad when it comes to footsies, and are even worse with mix-ups, which means that if Buster's able to get into Damien's hurt box, he's gonna get super punished and might even lose the set in a single... Wait a second, I'm human. Bam, bam, bam. So Damien has to keep his distance. <laughs> oh, crap! Olivia and I watch from the sidelines as, over the next few seconds, Buster pulls off an impressive series of moves that crush Damien's character into the ground. Almost like he was waiting for us to get back. Wow, you actually knew how to play. Buster jams an accusing finger my way, as though marking me for death. You're next. <laughs> Damien's expression carries a hint of disappointment as he steps away from the cabinet, but he quickly pops up and reassumes his usual jovial self. Just me and Olivia left. I never to step up to the cabinet. A plethora of characters in various fighting poses stare back at me, each with their own promises of victory. I recalled an old saying Coach Sully had said, If we do not know what we are doing, then the opposing team certainly can't anticipate our future actions. Tap my joystick over until the large question mark in the middle of the screen is highlighted, to the astonishment of spectators and my visibly nervous opponent. The game begins, and my opponent beside me seems exceptionally calm as he manipulates his controls. Compared to me, trying out every button and stick input to figure out what the heck I'm doing. Unlike Damien, who at least looked like he was holding his own against the bloated buster, I was getting the digital crap kicked out of me. Every attempt I made was met by my character being grabbed and thrown in some ridiculous elaborate way. By the time the perfect announcement plays out on screen, I can feel my wrist cramping from the crazy amount of button mashing I'd done in under a minute. At least I lasted a little longer than Liz. Don't feel too bad. I am the best here after all. His snort filled oh, yeah, laughter yeah, yeah. and grates on my ears as I walk back to my friends, all of them staring daggers at the pasty scaled dino. <laughs> Real quick, Logan, can you reset the uh, the Discord stream here? Sure, sure. I'm getting like fuzz on the uh, the game. Not from my mic, right? No, no. Okay, cool. Alright, thank you. Should we be back up? You good? Yeah. Alright, cool. The rest of the crowd are in an uproar along with him, and I can feel my ears heat up at the attention. Olivia, kick this dude's ass! <laughs> <laughs> Olivia's eyes are narrowed yeah. as <laughs> okay maybe they'll do that one just just beat him in the game don't 
<laughs> don't don't assault him. We don't need that. Olivia's eyes are narrowed as she wheels herself into position, her tail lashing roughly against the ground as she waits for the laughter to die down and her turn to finally begin. Buster chuckles to himself while cracking his knuckles. I just finished wiping the floor with your friends while hardly breaking your sweat. Just so you know who you're really dealing with, I'm Buster O'Nuts, a chief of Octaves of the annual Jurassic Kick Wisconsin E Tournament, demolisher of Vicaria, second best player of 2007 to 2012, and co leader of the Midwestern branch of the Mighty Mammoth Gamer Guild. You won't look bad for ducking out. Or are you ready to get busted? <laughs> you're fat. <laughs> oh. You know, you could still back out of this. Olivia's response is to insert a coin slowly without breaking eye contact with Buster, with what I can only describe as a predatory leer. She then slams her fist on the start button. Buster instantly moves his cursor towards a different character. Damien next to me lets out a soft gasp. What? What's wrong? I think Buster's character is like, three kinds of bullshit is what's wrong. What? Well, for one thing, he, he's usually gentlemen's band in turnies and... His mouth is moving, but all that comes out is alien words. Buster lets out a chuckle and turns to look at Olivia, giving her a smug grin. Olivia doesn't on, seem Inko, to at all... F <laughs> yeah, Inko, come on. You should know the fucking lingo, you, you, you fake gamer. Even though you said you weren't a gamer. But we'll ignore that. Olivia doesn't seem at all phased by Buster's character choice, clicking her joystick lazily. As soon as Olivia picks her character, the game's announcer blares the name aloud. Ah, oh. Live Long. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wani Long! Damien turns to look at me. The excitement in his face is overbearing. Oh, that's Olivia's name. Oh man, this would be one hell of a fight if Olivia's breaking her out. Uh, so, is this Wani Long a good character? The shortest explanation you'll understand is yes. What's the long one? If you don't know what a Shoto is, it'll take too long to explain here. Ah. While Damien rambles on, I recall Olivia's motivation just to get here. That look she had. That more than anything piques my curiosity. So, uh, how good is Olivia with her? Damien's reply is to only give me a wide, big grin. Just watch. You're you're about to witness. Okay, damn. Jeez, stop asking questions. I'm just curious, man. A loud sound bite from the cabinet speaker signals the start of Olivia's match. Also, Wani is more or less crocodile in Japanese. Oh. Well, there we so go. So that's why. Given the way Damien spoke of Olivia's skills like it was derived from an ancient scroll, I expected it to be a flurry of pixelated beatdowns and tactful controller play, but instead it looked like... nothing at all. On the large display, both characters are just shifting back and forth, the joystick in Olivia's and Buster's hands clacking about furiously. They're playing footsies! Honestly, it looks like more like they're attempting to make their digital avatars tap dance. Oh. Wait, did I miss something? I don't want to turn my eyes away in case anything happens. No, like, they're trying to get a read on each other. Uh... It's like they're trying to predict what the other will do so they can counter and steal the match. Oh. So they're like size... There's a heavy crack and thump on the floor in front of me. Olivia's tail lashed at the base of the cabinet, while Buster's... Thagomizer... I just don't know. <laughs> hold, hold yeah, up, we'll look up what the yeah, fuck yeah, that I, is. You didn't do that, because I was, I was just about to bust out the old fucking Google search. What the fuck is a thagomizer? Among paleontologists, the four-spiked tail of a stegosaurus is called a thagomizer. Okay, so it's his tail. Got it. Uh, is he a stego? No, he's an ankylosaurus. Mm. Uh, thagomizer had managed to crack into the concrete floor beneath him. Oh, they're both fucking... They're in it. Oh, shit. On screen, the characters finally made contact, and sent each other flying in opposite directions. Behind me, the crowd started cheering, finally excited there was some actual action happening. Damien is hollering next to me, cheering on Olivia with all his might. <laughs> the Gamer Zone! Though the excitement dies down again as the duo resumes their cyber posturing. My eyes dart between Olivia and Buster. 
Olivia is completely absorbed in the match. Her eyes are wide and full of killing intent. Buster, on the other hand, seems like he can barely contain his fury. 10 seconds on the clock, Olivia comes in clutch, punishing Buster's character with an impressive string of attacks. He manages to get away with a single pixel of health just in time, just as the time limit runs out. Winner, Lonnie Long. The crowd goes nuts as Olivia's victory is announced. And you know what? I can't help but cheer along with them. Olivia slumps back in her mobile seat and lets out a sigh before returning to her original po position. Buster lets out a snort, twists and stretches his neck, and cracks his knuckle before once again gripping the controllers tight. Round two. Clash and trash. The crowds return to a more silent state of observing the match closely, only low murmurs as they gawk at the two highly skilled players. The words passed around reach me, attempting to draw my eyes away. Weird friend. Surprised he's not doing the... Is he playing with her? Come on, Olivia! Damien shout above the rest of the nearly blew my eardrums, but I shared his sentiment as the stylized characters exchanged simple blows. The timer continues to tick down, Buster once again being put on the defensive. With how all the previous bouts went, Buster always had control with a cutthroat level of offense, but I didn't think of him being this... passive. The countdown once again hit zero, this time with Olivia's character slouching defeat and the crowd cheering again, though less enthusiastically than before. You got this, Olivia! Just one more win and you're the champ again! Olivia's shoulders tense up at what he said, and all eyes stare directly at her. Damien! Come on, Odd Whales, Joe, why you're the best? She groans a bit and refocuses on the screen. The group simmers down to silence in anticipation of the start of the final match. The sudden silence actually catches me off guard for a second. Long enough for my own doubts to catch up to me. What's just play style? It's like he's not really trying. The match starts and the hype flares bright back up. Super me of him think. He's a gamer bro champion type. He's got way too much to lose. And yet... Hey, Damien. Yeah? Do you notice anything... off? About how Buster's playing? Uh, you notice it too? Guess I'm not paranoid then. Like, I didn't really watch your match. Was he always so... Passive? No. But like, these two are crazy good, so maybe this is all mind games. As if he's going to throw the game and let her win. I glance back at the ongoing battle happening on the screen, and I take notice of Buster's hand movements. As Olivia launches her character into a fierce combo, sure enough, Buster hits hesitates just enough to let his fighter get hit by the first blow. That's brilliant timing. This is crazy. And it hits me all at once like a freight train. The way Buster was looking down at Olivia, how he didn't want to take her challenge, all the excuses he was giving. Huh? He's a, he's a virgin? Uh... Okay. But also, he's throwing the whole match, isn't he? Damn it. Even here, Olivia was right. Damien, I think he's taking it easy on her. Hmm. You think so? Damien takes a moment to ponder what I said. Dang. Even here. That's what I was thinking. Should we do something? What? Interrupt the match? Everyone else is having fun. The crowd whoops again. Only now it sounds a bit different. Hollow. Mocking. Damien's frills sag with concern. He turns to me. We came here. What we came for is a good time. If she can't tell, what's the harm? Oh, we're about to be hit with the decision, aren't we? Oh, jeez. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I hate that he's right. I could stand up for her. I mean, just being there for Olivia when Mia was getting on her went pretty all right. That was a while ago. I just don't know. I look over the crowd again. The match is about halfway done, judging by the remaining health pools. I mean, obviously, just cheer her on. Right. right. 
But this gets me concerned. What the fuck is the actual difference here? Just drop the save. Yeah, we'll share Olivia on. I know Olivia doesn't like this from strangers. I know no Olivia normally doesn't like this from strangers. But I'm no stranger to Olivia. She knows my intentions. We're friends. On screen, it looks like the characters are about to strike one another with their feet. Let me know if you guys want hints or if you'll just do backup saves. I'll probably just drop a backup save just in case something's like, okay, well that wasn't expected. I cut my hands around my mouth. Go, Olivia! You got this! They remember recoils from my screen. Or maybe I popped his eardrum, judging by the glare he levels at me. Then he raises two fingers to his mouth. <laughs> what? I don't think he really yeah, picked it up, but, this. you know, the spirit was there. Oh, he was doing a whistle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Even Liz tries to join him, shouting down at the crowd with her own cheers. Oh, you know what would be cool? You can do it, Hot Wheels! Yeah, go, Hot Wheels, go! Olivia flinches and turns her head to look back at us a bit. Curiously, so does her opponent. She sees us cheering and she gets her usual disfavoring furrowed brow. No way, I'm sticking to my guns. Eyes on the screen, Hot Wheels, he's gonna get you. I beat him without even looking. She stares right through the crowd at me. It's only an instant, but it feels longer. But her subtle scowl cracks. Then it completely folds into a smirk back at us. She faces back to the screen with renewed vigor. Buster shakes his head to snap himself out of his own slog. Looks like he was only intending to lose by a little. He's picking up the pace now. Only... Time! The match time's out. Bah! Dang. Want to go another round? People need a winner. Actually, mind if I run to the restroom real fast? Shit, yeah, it's uh, down that way. Olivia turns and smiles at me. It's warm. Then she goes off to the restroom. Buster waits for her to be out of earshot and scrambles over to Damien and I. Hey, you two. You guys weren't serious, right? Yeah? You were saying Hot Wheels. That's not really her, right? <laughs> the renowned Hot Wheels from a decade ago? <laughs> yep, it's her. Why? Damn. I feel like a jackass now. You were throwing for her, weren't you? THE HOT WHEELS! <laughs> a little... Your buddy, Finhead, gave me some sob story about her during that match, and I felt bad, okay? Who wants oh to be known as the asshole who picks on cripples? Ooh, Buster is being hospitable to the young lady. Who the fuck shut the- Yo, Buster, you simping? Piss off! But yeah, I didn't mean any disrespect or anything. Crap, I didn't know she had history here. I should have more respect than that. I mean, Damien should just not be running this trap, holy shit. Damien just likes the yapping, bro. So, what do you do now? I'll play for real. It's what she deserves. That's all we ask. Buster nods and turns with a thumbs up. He cracks his knuckles and neck in preparation for his first legitimate match of the day. You still kinda simping though. Shut the hell up, Dave! Olivia returns, sliding to the machine once more. Thanks for waiting. No problem. Ready? You know it. Good, because you're going down this time. They give each other one last competitive leer before putting all their focus on the screen. Just as before, Buster chooses the OP character and Olivia picks Wani Long. As soon as the in-game announcer yells fight, Buster immediately goes in for the kill, the total opposite of how he was playing last match. Catches Olivia off guard for a moment, leading her character to eat a massive combo that takes away a good chunk of her health. True to his word, he isn't holding back this time for Olivia's sake, dealing the same level of beatdown brutality he gave to the opponents before her. This seems to only invigorate her, putting her skills and hands into overdrive. Even though Buster is going full force, Olivia manages to get Wani Long to land a few punches and kicks, along with evading some attacks. The crowd seems to notice the reappearance of Buster's lethality, causing an uproar of cheering and whoops. Damien, of course, follows suit. You got this hot whales, kick his ass! Can't let him be the only one, right? Show him why you're the champ! Unfortunately, not even Olivia can beat Buster's true fighting skills. Like his previous opponents, KO Bold wins! The crowd is a mix of groans and cheers and excitement at the ill-fated defeat of Olivia. Buster crosses his arms, basking in his self-pride and beating the legendary Hot Wheels. 
Damn, you really handed my ass to me. Didn't I say it was kind of a big deal around here? Yeah, yeah. Though I gotta admit, you gave me a real challenge. I see why you're known as champ. Thanks. If you're ever up for a rematch, you know where to find me. With that, Olivia makes her way over to us, a smile beaming across her face. Alright, who's next? We exit the crowd into a more spacious part of the arcade. <laughs> that was awesome, Liv. You really gave him a run for his money. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I'm a bit rusty, but the movement I got my hands on the moment I got my hands on the controls, and he gave me a real fight, I was so close to beating him. If I haven't been outmatched and losing to Buster, she seems to be having even more fun than ever. I'm feeling all jittery after that fight. That's the gamer rush settling in you. <laughs> hey, you know they sell food here, right? We should get some snacks to celebrate. Oh, I was smelling grease. I was just assuming it was... He takes his own order and starts marching off in another direction. Damien, wait for the rest of us! Food, huh? You know what? I could go for a little something. Yeah? It's getting pretty late. Come on, they went this way. Olivia starts plowing through the crowd once more. Oh boy, this again. I'll call it exercise. The snack bar is a small cut away from the rest of the building, segregated by a different style tiling and bright fluorescent lighting. Segregation. What'd you say? <laughs> Segregation. Segregation. Split down the middle. There's not a lot of options aside from what you'd expect. Pizza, ice cream, chicken strips, pickles, and the like. Mm, I want all of that. Pretty cool. I don't like pickles. When Damien asked for two slices Stop of- Drop a fucking bomb and leave as if this was a... not something okay, we have to talk right. about. Okay, do you want to talk about the pickles? You don't like pickles? No, have I don't like Have you had pickles. one recently? No, well, yeah, no, I haven't had one recently. You might, you might like it, you know? Uh, maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't like it, but if I tried it again, but I know in the past I did not like pickle. Yeah, to be fair, it did take me a while to like pickles. But they're you amazing. had to learn to love it. Kind of. It took like it took like a like when I was a teenager, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll like it now, and I'm like, nope, no, 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 nope, no, nope, run it back. That was a bad decision. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, these are pretty good. I'm, <laughs> I'm the pickle guy now. When Damien asked for two slices of pizza, Liz got excited. The moment he got the food, however, he was eating one while holding the other. She seemed really annoyed, but took his offer to let him pay for her food. He offered to pay for Olivia and myself, but the last thing I want for him to do is drain his wallet any further, knowing their living situation. It's barely over ten bucks, so it's not like it bothers me. Olivia had gotten an order of chicken wings slathered in the hot sauce. I just went with the classic chicken strips and one of the sodas I recognized from the school vending machine. We take a seat at one of the few open tables, and I struggle not to think about how often we've, how often they're cleaned. Damien doesn't bother sitting with us. He just heads right back into the fray with both arms occupied by his dinner. Liz follows after Damien to keep track of him. At least, her head does. Olivia barely even sets her tray down before... It's a fucking body. It's a little off-putting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I suddenly shift myself away from the maelstrom of molars and claws. Damien probably said he'd cover the meal because he knew Olivia would get, like... This? Sheesh, Hot Wheels, would you like some actual meat on that? I don't even know wing bones could get that big. Olivia responds by snapping the bone in, in two between her teeth. The marrow squirts out a little, and she has to get a napkin to wipe her cheek. Suddenly, my own chicken tender meal looks more unsavory, so I push it aside and look closer to the tooth tornado. It only takes moments for her to accept my offering with no manners whatsoever. Oh, thank you. Don't mention it. So, after we finish, any other plans? Olivia ponders my words while rolling the bone around in her mouth like it's a lollipop stick. It's just a chicken bone, Inko. An oddly large chicken bone. I don't know. I've basically done all I want to do by now. Damien's probably got another 20 minutes before he burns out. I'm, I'm cool with staying here unless you want to do something. No, I actually don't play games much. Had fun playing with you, though. Olivia looks away for some reason. She do this sort of thing more often. Yeah? Of course. <clears throat> oh, 
different kind of course. Here we go. Of course. I've never had this much fun outside of my previous schools, mainly because I never had many friends to hang out with. That's kind of sad. It is, but it looks like moving here was a change for the better. Plus, it's just fun hanging out with you. Though stained with sauce, Olivia's lips curled into a smile. And Liz and Damien too, of course. Though I have to admit, with the way Liz gravitates towards Damien, it's almost like she had this all set up. What do you mean? Mm. Well, Damien and Liz are pretty close, so maybe she's using this as an opportunity for them to get closer. It's almost like we're on a double date or something. She jerks back to me, completely attentive. Did I say something? Really? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Since we hang out together pretty often, people might start thinking we're together. Something whips into my back. Yeah. Olivia grabs hold of her tail. Crap, crap, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was that? <laughs> Dude, she just fucking smacked me in the back, bro. Does that count as a back shot? <laughs> I had fun today. Going out like this for the first time in ages, seeing this place again, it's nice. That buster guy said they renovated a bit in the last few years. Anything else changed? Hmm. Olivia turns into the depths of the arcade, looking for anything different. You know what? I think the wallpaper's changed. But other than that... She turns back to me with a nostalgic grin. No, it's stayed the same. You know what has changed though? What? The people here. What, like employees? Them too, but I meant the regulars. When we came here, the place was always more... Her tongue probes her cheek as she considers different words. More... hectic? No, more packed. It was so easy getting through here today. I recall her almost <laughs> running some people over to get across the building. But with the look she had back then, I don't think she'd have noticed if she had. Olivia's gaze lingers back towards the arcade machines. Back then, every machine was crowded. It was a lot louder and there was always this... this something in the air that had everyone excited. What about when you and that guy were playing Jurassic? Okay, yeah, it was like that. But way more. Like, it felt like every machine had a crowd around it. Everyone just gathering, getting crazy, and it was always a pain to wait your turn. With the heaviest of sighs, Olivia turns back toward me. Just feels empty, like everything else nowadays. I mean, empty is good, you were able to get around easily. Near hit and runs notwithstanding. And personally, this place feels crazy to me. Even here in the tiny food court, I feel the rumbling loudness of all the people here resonate through my body. The only response was a non-committal non hum. Olivia handles her flask carefully, staring down at the sticker I'd noticed earlier with a wistful look. I remember that Liz mentioned it about it being from an old show she watched. Say, I noticed that sticker when I went to refill it. And what's it from? Oh, that? It's from some old anime that I remember watching growing up. It's nothing... It's nothing really special. From some anime, huh? Well, what's it about? <laughs> you wanna know? The eyes. Sure, I never really caught on to the whole anime stuff, but I'd like to know what it's about. Gundam. Gundam. <laughs> well, if you really do want to know, it's not like any other anime. It's called Gundam and... For the next five minutes... <laughs> Sorry, I appreciate that. <clears throat> For the next five minutes, Olivia tries to summarize the premise of Gundam in detail. Given that I'm as clueless to it as I was with the fighting terminology, the plot sounds completely esoteric. The sticker is of the symbol worn by a faction of space noids fighting for their independence. Sounds like just a noble group with a goal like that. Watching her talk so passionately about the series, franchise, oh, oh that's a lot. For how long? But that's alternate universe stuff and, oh and then there's this martial arts one. As she continues her description of the franchise, I start to realize how enamored I've become. Not just about hearing the show, but from seeing Olivia talking about her favorite show with such passion and energy. I find myself engrossed in her voice as she recounts a particular version of the anime 
And she's even you know what's really funny? What's up? Sorry, not to super interrupt this one, but I realized that, you know, we went into this game where, like, yeah, we're gonna hug the gator, we're probably gonna date the gator, and stuff like that. The fucking MC here is clueless as shit. He really is. <laughs> he's he, now realizing, like, wait a minute. He's gonna, he's gonna be the type to be like, wait. I like her. Is this love? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> What is love? I am incognito, the robot. I do not pick up on social cues. <laughs> <clears throat> I find myself engrossed in her voice as she recounts a particular version of the anime, as she's even taken to emulating segments from the show. And in the end, he finally admits it. It's one of the best romances Gundam's done in- <clears throat> Her sudden pause worries me. Uh, what's wrong? N nothing. <laughs> Doesn't sound like nothing, rather, given the roughness in her tone again. Her throat finally ran dry. Need another refill? I'm good. She drinks deeply from the canteen that had sort, uh, started all this off. What? Love? I'm sure it's just being polite, nothing more. It's it's gonna take a lot for it to get through his head, I think. You know? He would totally be like, Olivia, I'm so glad we're just friends. You're and my Olivia best just friend. looks at him like, bruh. <laughs> it's been a while since she talked herself dry like that. In fact, I can't recall the last time she desperately needed to hydrate like that. I think maybe around the start of the school year? She releases the canteen and lets a breath of relief out. Better? Olivia nods. Yeah. Anyway, where did I leave? Actually, I've probably been babbling on too long about it. No, no, I don't mind at all. That's fine. Besides, you let me talk about my favorite show, so tell me about yours. Mine? <laughs> well, I haven't finished anything, just mostly video essays about old shows. I'm told I can call myself a fan of video games without having played them, but does that apply to TV? Olivia sure has taste. She can tell me exactly what kind of show she likes and why she likes it. I just know bits of trivia. Oh, that can't be right. I've seen lots of things in passing. Like... Hmm. Uh... It's kind of backwards romance. Instead of a main character trying to charm the love interest, it's the love interest trying to get the men see to realize that he's charmed. Yeah. And I'll eat that shit up. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, shoot. I have no swag. I guess I've spent more time watching in-depth video essays about shows than actually watching them. Man, that's embarrassing. Uh, no it's not. Okay, maybe a little. But it's never too late to get into it. See what you do or don't like. Next time you're over at my place, we can binge watch a whole anime series. No, I like the sound of that. But if it ever gets too intense, you can always watch Power Raptors with Vinny. Hey, how <laughs> relaxed. Toku shows like that aren't just for kids to like. It's funny though, I remember my dad letting me watch it as a kid, and then he got into it because I showed him. If you don't mind me asking, you mentioned that your dad's in and out of town because of his job. What is it exactly? He's on contract with the DOD. With the Department of Dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine. Whoa, really? Been working with the Air Force since I was a baby. No, it's defense. It could still be dinosaurs. Only he isn't called that often, but when he does, it's pretty lengthy. Weeks, even months. I know that feeling. <laughs> that must suck. It isn't all too bad. We still call each other and send messages. The work just keeps him busy. That's good. Keeping in touch with your folks is important. Why do I feel sad now? What about your parents? What's their job? Oh, mine are joint partners in Architect. That's why we move around a lot. The main reason why we're here in Volcadero to begin with. Ah, uh, now it makes sense. What does? You know. She points at my shades and jacket. Having on a jacket and shades doesn't automatically make me rich, Olivia. Dude, who else wears clothes from Amber Combine and Flint and has extra pairs of Ray A. Band sunglasses on them? People in mansions, that's who. I don't yeah, live I in a mansion. We're fucking rich, we're stacked. 
Oh, I mean, money was never like any point where we had to pay for something was never a concern. You know, we always bought yeah. snacks for everybody in the group. Here we were like, yeah, I'll just cover my meal and Olivia's as well. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. at, at no point have we ever been like, I only got this much money on me. That's true. We just run credit card. Yep. That's why we were excited that the, the vending machine had a credit card slot. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I see it. For your information, it's a two-story complex with an automatic gate and... Uh, Fuck, I see I'm what free. you mean. Now you get it, money bags. Suddenly Liz starts waving her hands around excitedly. What the... Uh, Inko, Olivia. God, I, mean, I can't. I, I hate our main character's name so much. <laughs> so stupid. Damien comes. I, I, I. Sometimes I have to stop myself from saying Nico. You know what I mean? Mhm. Mm Damien comes rushing in, both arms filled with a pile of tickets. While he hit the jackpot. Oh, Whoa, Mama, that's a lot of tickets. The other end is still trailing behind him. <laughs> Damien got the jackpot head. Megala Millionaire <laughs> is probably like a thousand tickets. I'm gonna go see what this gets at the price counter. Come on! Holy crap. Alright, yeah. You know anything, Olivia? She takes the basket of chicken strips and pushes them back from the table. Yeah. I roll my eyes and follow behind Damien to the prize counter. He plops his winning stash on the counter in front of the unamused clerk. He's gonna get two so lollipops. What all this get? Yeah. Nothing. You need to drop these in the ticket counter first. Ah, damn. Nearly forgot. He rushes off to get them counted, and I look over the options. There's a few old games up on the top shelf for seven, several thousand. What's the exchange rate supposed to be? Below me in the glass counter is a bunch of co uh, a bunch of candy and small plastic novelties. There's also a lot of joke items, be cushions, air horns, things like that. In one corner is a series of licensed and generic plush toys hanging. What do you think we'll get? <laughs> Probably the mini RC car. Or no, maybe the plasma globe. He's gonna get a handful of candy and let us have the rest. You think so? <laughs> Alright, I'm back. He hands the tickets over. I spot the number 1247 printed on the ticket. Hey, that's enough for one of the plushies on the wall. <laughs> I want... Hey, how about that? He points to a small foosball table on the top shelf. The Kirk glances up at it and back. That's gonna be like another few thousand. Jeremy? I said it. Oh, it oh damn it. I, it didn't come across. Oh, did it not? No, that's what I was like, uh. <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> he just fucking dies. Oh, I'm out of ideas. He was told he can't have his foosball, so he just decided it's over and fell on the ground. I guess I'll have some of those then. The clerk gets a small bag of chocolates from the display. <laughs> you guys can have the rest. Olivia the Prophet. Look how she leaned forward. <laughs> you, you don't need anything here? Yeah, I, I don't need it. really need anything here. Nothing's really speaking to me either. I might want something. Olivia scans the corner. There's still enough tickets for a medium prize. She might be going for a paddle ball or something. No, she won't want the plushes. Oh, look at that. She points to the plushie uh, corner. The blue slug thing? No, next to it. What is that? <laughs> it's a weird dark green thing hanging in the corner. The only one of its kind. I kind of uh, want to drop kick it. <laughs> Damn! Okay. <laughs> the... That's rage! That one? I don't know. Something about it makes really want to. Uh, I don't know. Tied to a firework and. Set it off into a deep fryer. <laughs> what the fuck? I was just thinking the same thing. Is this like the predator urge right now? <laughs> Maybe. You guys are rude. I'm not saying you're wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> you 
he Yo, looks like <laughs> why are they laying into little man <laughs> what did he do <laughs> he's just hanging there what the fuck holy shit he looks like the reason we have taxes wait is that supposed to be kind of like that one like stupid fish that came out on land and is why there's land mammals now you know that picture kind of I feel like I've seen it before, but way too long ago. Great grandpa, get the fuck back in the water. I hate its face. He thinks he's better than all of us. I got used to it. It's been around for years. <laughs> Tell it I hate it. All the while, fucking Olivia is just sitting here absolutely enamored with the thing. It. You don't really want it, right, Olivia? <laughs> it's just like me. For real. Holy shit. <clears throat> wow, she's just like me. Her eyes are bright and wide. She's in love. Oh. <laughs> the clerk hands her the stuffed toy and she looks deep into its beady eyes. Yep, just like me. <laughs> We're gonna set that thing on fire sometime. Not if you like having both arms. We have two for a reason. The argument continues for several minutes. Guys, it's getting late. I think it's time we headed out. Ah, oh, shoot, she's right. Even though the weekend starts tomorrow, I still have a curfew that my folks are strict about. I agreed. <laughs> oh. I guess you're right. How can you hate that little guy? Like, what? He, he looks like he's done nothing wrong. What did he do? I, I'm Team Olivia here. That little guy is just a bundle of joy. On the way out, Damien stops and breathes in deeply. You know, this was a lot of fun. Oh, hey, it's a machine. I, Are we here together for the first time in a while? You could tell it was going to be something at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some picture and that's drawn in like that. I wonder which uh, object the characters are going to interact with. Hmm. Did you see the little one where it's like a video of that, but like it subverts the expectation and like they're being like very fourth wall about it? Uh, no. I'll have to show you it later. Uh, thanks for taking us, Liz. Oh, it's no problem. Thanks to you guys, too. Yeah, man, it was fun. We should do this again sometime. It's just like you Is it just like you remember it? Even better. I know I was a bit mad about the idea at first, but I'll admit... It was worth it. Oh, we didn't get to use it. I was just looking at it. Back in the car, the argument picks up again. <sighs> Yo, we are in this picture. Snap. I'm just saying, you should try hiding pencils in its ears until they come out of the other side of its head. <laughs> if anyone hurts them, I'll kill y'all. She stares with razor intent back at Damien. Okay, let's not get into fratricide over a plush animal. Olivia hugs the wretched thing tighter. Uh, so Inko, you want me to drop you off at your place? Oh, dang. Yes, please. I hadn't thought of that. I quickly send Liz the address to my home, which she puts into Google Maps. Buckled in, we head out of the parking lot and onto the main road. Yeah, you gotta get Googled. Google.com, you know what I mean? Google, the most used search engine. <laughs> Yo, hey, there's those shoes. Entering the freeway, we pass by the city, now illuminated. The early fall sunset bathes the car, car's interior, warm orange. And as we make our way home, find myself recalling all the spots Olivia had highlighted. I wanted to ask her again, just so I knew for sure. But seeing her rest peacefully gave me pause. No. I suppose I can ask her another time. Better to let sleeping gators lie. Wait, lay? L let her rest. She had fun, and now she's tired, and that's all that matters. 
I know Olivia mentioned that the place was updated, but I'd be lying to myself if I didn't say that it looked a bit too grimy. Just hope I don't get sick. Yep, I got sick. I'd been completely out the whole weekend, sick like a dog. Must have caught it at the arcade. First it was just a slight headache and a stuffy nose. By Sunday, it felt like my bones were made out of paper mache. Couldn't even go to school today. Man, this sucks. Shouldn't have ignored the signs. Rapid weather change isn't helping at all either, between the pollen and chills. Worst part is, I'm falling out of practice. I've tried on and off every hour to watch a drawing tutorial, but within minutes my consciousness is overtaken by a fog and I retreat back to bed. At this rate, I'll never actually have to the skilled people thought I had at the beginning of that contest. Between the sunlight obscuring clouds and my own bouts of unconsciousness, it feels like I've been sick for weeks instead of just days. I would have asked my parents for some help, but they still had work. And the most help they could be was simply calling into school to let them know I was sick. <laughs> okay. I finish off the cup of medicine I'd made and go back to my noodles. The only reason I'm even conscious right now is because I figured some soup would help with the splitting headaches. And I made sure the pantry is f uh, stocked full of cop ramen. I shove even more instant noodles into my mouth as I lay splayed on the couch, trying to watch well, whatever's on TV. Eventually, I decide to get salty goodness aside in favor of scrolling through the notifications on my cell phone. Of course, I got a few dozen from Damien. Bless his heart, he's been giving me an hourly play-by-play -play of the school day. It's a fucking snuggy, it really is. I think it's funny that he, these these are his glasses all the time, you know? Like, he doesn't have, yeah. like, a pair of glasses for just at home. For inside. Right. Got a few messages from Liz, too. She's also filling me in on the school day, albeit not nearly as often as Damien. Even Olivia messaged me. I feel oddly soothed as I read her well wishes. Suddenly get another notification, this time from Ben. It's a PDF of my homework, followed soon after by a simple get well soon animated emoji. Aren't I popular? I'll be sure to thank him in person when I'm better. Another wave of fuzziness washes over me, so I pop a few flu meds and chase it down with another gulp of lukewarm chicken broth. Three days of being sick as a dog, and it only occurred to me that I haven't seen any sign of... Huh? I already got my grocery delivery today. Or was that yesterday? Whatever. I push myself upright on the couch, turned sick bed, uncaring for all the styrofoam noodle cups and plastic wrappers that fall onto my carpet. Wow, I really let things get out of hand. My head is spinning as I make the arduous 20-foot journey. I check out the people and nothing is there. Or maybe it's a small child? Triassic Scout cookies sound awesome right now. One hand works to un undo the locks while I'm focusing on fiddling and finding my scared. wallet. Hmm? I'm scared. You're scared? Do you, think, do you think there's a gunman? Do you think we're gonna fucking die, Jeremy? Do we pick the bad options? Don't turn, don't open the door, man. Damn poofy sleeves. They weren't so wo- What's up? You dead yet? Olivia? What? How? What are you doing here? In spite of her cheerful greeting, Olivia shifts side to side in her seat, and her knees totter together. Uh, Mr. Ayatakan wanted me to give you the project worksheets for his class. She pulls her backpack up from behind her chair and reaches in, drawing out a manila envelope and waving it in my face. My dizziness intensifies as my eyes attempt to track the rapidly moving object in front of them. Oh, the one about Baroque? Nah, thanks. Pretty sure Ben just sent me those as a PDF. She snorts and lets the packet go, my hands fumbling to catch it before it's the floor. Without batting an eye, Olivia pushes past me, as if wandering into someone's house is an everyday occurrence for her. Come on, the project isn't going to finish itself. Huh? She's already wheeled herself to my couch and set a backpack on the coffee table. Yeah, I figured you'd use some help on it, or... And balks at the mountain of junk I'd left. I think her nose crinkles. Hard to tell from so far away. Damn, Inko, you live like this? <laughs> my head finally catches up with what's transpired. Olivia is here now. Cool. What isn't is the sudden onset of vertigo. 
Yes, I was standing up right for too long. I only managed to stay up just enough to, uh, thanks to the support of the wall. What? Just how sick are you? Pretty sick. The disgust that was on her face is wiped away as she looks at me. Huh. I wonder why. Why is my floor coming at me? GG. Ow. After my impromptu tumble, Olivia had done her best to pull me up and get me on the couch. My robe did make it easy to drag me across the smooth floor of my house. Okay, forget the project. What project? boy. I can't tell if the dizziness is new or not. Olivia's already started uh, picking up the trash mountain, moving what she can to a grocery bag. Watching her with my vision going fuzzy only intensifies the vertigo. I guess she should take more of my medicine. I grab a can of soda from the half-empty case on the table along with a bottle of cough syrup. I open the can, bottle, the can and bottle into the glass I'd been using all weekend, watching the delicious mixture slowly become my panacea. Giving the glass a good swirl to ensure the best final product, I grin and gulp down my alchemical masterpiece. I don't get to finish the drink, however, as an olive green tail slams my midsection and makes me spit up the drink all over myself. The fuck are you doing? No wonder you've been sick as shit. What? I read online it makes the medicine go down easier. Inko, you've been drugging yourself with a fucking purple drink. We've been drinking lean? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, yeah, it's purple and I drink it. Holy crap, how are you alive? Ugh, the smell of my spat up drink irritates my nose. I feel my I stomach roll from both the impact and force purging. You haven't heard so that in a while? Fucking long. Yeah. I mean, is it. Do the kids still do lean nowadays? <laughs> Or they moved on to some other fucked up drug combination. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they got like little packets of just pure nicotine now that they you pack in your lip. Oh. How nice. I actually never learned what the hell is lean. It's like codeine and Sprite or something. Yeah, it's like cough syrup and Sprite. Yeah. Or, yeah, in case you didn't know what codeine is, because I didn't. Right, right. That's what makes it purple. I resist, I resist the urge to retch, feeling all my energy drain away. <laughs> uh, I feel completely spent again. My vision swims and my world turns counterclockwise. Doesn't help that I just got fucking cracked in the chest. I feel something on my head and I'm thankful that something's soft and warm. It's soothingly smooth and maneuvers, maneuvers it back onto the couch. Blackness of my eye, uh, my shut eyelids returns the uprightness of the world, and the numbness I'd grown used to overtakes my limbs. Oh my... Inko? Inko, are you okay? Oh man, oh man, stay there, I'll... I'll figure... Olivia's voice is drowned out by a growling drone of white noise. <laughs> Dude, am I actually about to fucking die? <laughs> Once again, the colors from outside the window bleed and flood into my house. You ain't doing too hot. Oh, fucking obviously. I'm still without my rent money. Someone's in here still. They're bent over something. Hey, you, what's going on? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a bad trip. Funny gator girl on wheels. Holy shit. Hang on, I'll try to help you out. I want you. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> What's. <laughs> Y'all thought it's Ollie who's gonna die soon. Joke's on you. You already pulled from Kev. Yeah, we're gonna. F if, if this is what we're starting to see, I think it's Jover, fellas. If. If man comes from monkeys, then how does Coach Sully exist? <laughs> What's going on? Who is this? Where's Lucy? Where's my daughter? We've got to at least see if somebody's has some different dialogue. Which one do you want to do first, Jeremy? I want to do the monkey. Do the monkey one. Okay, hold up a sec. Don't say anything you're completely incoherent. Okay. 
Let's see if they're all the same. We right might. Do we? I, we might just have options. Like it'll just go back or something. Yeah, it, it all leads to the same thing. Don't say anything. You're completely incoherent. Yeah. We'll, we'll check with the last one just to be certain. But you wouldn't know who. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> incoherent. That's my name. We can say anything. My being fades into the void. Oh, God. My head. Uh, what year is it? Set up and glance around the room. Mom and Dad aren't back yet, even though it's six o'clock. Some business meeting, huh? Wait, no. What's that smell? I think something's cooking. Food. Smells nice. Guess Mom is home. I wonder what the occasion is. Normally it's just reheated, whatever. Put the couch pillows back the way my parents like them. Head into the kitchen to see what's up. Gator! Oh, Mom, that... Wow, Mom, what smells good? Shit. Uh, sorry. Didn't know you were still... Oh, man, I passed out on you, didn't I? The assignment... It, it's fine. You feeling any better? Oh, um... Are they not around very often? Yeah, they're usually busy with work stuff. Both have busy but well-paying jobs. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. If you say so. Olivia looks down at the slow cooker and fiddles with one of the dials. Actually, are you? Do you really not have anyone around? No aunts, grandparents, no nothing? I shrug. My, my mom's gone and my dad's a whole nother story. But at least he stuck me with the pains. And that way, I guess you're worse off than me somehow? The last part she spoke was quieter. And with her downcast face, I can't help but feel I wasn't meant to hear it. Well, yeah. You at least have your folks, but I think it does much it, I don't think it does much good comparing our situations. I'll just have to be a better parent for my kids. Olivia flinches. For our kids. <laughs> Puts a hand on her shoulder. <laughs> looks into her eyes. I don't know why we are mutant gator human hybrid kids. <laughs> you know, ah, uh, we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> Let's not get into like discussions on what the kids would look like. We can do it after we get the gator. Sure, sure. <laughs> Once we've got the bag, right? I don't know we why. Don't count though. chickens just yet. Don't count the gators just yet. <laughs> I don't know why though. Isn't that what everyone wants? You plan to start a family? Yeah, of course. What about you? My dad really wants me to. He knows he knows he's pretty far from ideal. He told me before that he hopes I can make a family work, like how he couldn't. It'd be nice, but I mean, it's probably not gonna happen. I think it can. Hmm. Well, after you collapsed, I panicked. I had to call Aunt Mrs. Payne to ask her what to do. If I should call emergency services. Alright, I think I'm going to go take a nap as well before my very busy and not really well paid job. Alright, prob. Have a good See nap. You. Hope things, uh, hope, thing, hope your day goes well. Draco donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Shrek. Can you believe that fucking donkey scored the dragon in Shrek? And then they had babies. Hey, donkey's got riz. Don't underestimate. I guess you're right. She said that when this happens to Damien, she just makes some shepherd's pie and waits for him to sleep it off. I had to root through your fridge to find out you have jack shit in terms of ingredients. And your appliances, too. But a place as upscale as this would clearly have an air fryer. All I could find was a slow cooker. <laughs> you so, clearly don't own an air fryer. Bro, Inko is down. Horrendous here. No parents, no air fryer. Just jump out the window, man. It's over. All I could find was a slow cooker, so I threw the vegetables that had not expired into it with some stock. Should be good for your sinuses, at least. I vaguely remember something along those lines. I stepped closer to Olivia, peering into the glass window of the cooker. I didn't even know we had half of whatever's in there. Really? Your parents buy this kind of stuff just to let it rot away in the fridge. My mom does like to cook, but she doesn't do it very often. I wish she would. The green gator snorts. 
You know, I'm only spoiling you because you're sick. It's not bad, I just miss dinner. You know? Sitting around the dining room table and talking to each other. I don't really do that anymore. Except maybe on holidays. Olivia winces. No kidding. Sorry to pry. I can't help but sigh as I think about my lackluster relationship with mom and dad. It's alright. Anyway, I didn't take you for the culinary type, Olivia. The awkwardness of just standing and staring gets to me, so I choose to take a seat at our island table. Man, these chairs are surprisingly comfy. It's actually the first time the table was even used since we'd moved in. Think about it, Olivia's given me a lot of first now. <laughs> you don't gotta say it like that, man. It's true, though! I kinda wish mom would make dinner again, like before she got that promotion. Olivia hums to herself as she moves toward the fridge, pulling out the egg carton and scowling after checking it. How often do you get groceries, Inko? I ordered some earlier. Actual groceries, not that junk. Oh. Uh. God, that's such a waste of money. Imagine if you could cook the food you like. I try to, but my head starts to get a bit lighter. Oh, now I can practically taste the salivating smell coming from the cooker. Is that why you're in home ec? There's another low hum from her as she considers something. I want to be ready when I have a place of my own. And it's actually relaxing. It just keeps my mind and hands busy when I'm alone. See, she's she's planning for a future. She 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 has time. Yeah, yeah, she's not yeah, exactly. Plus it's either this or, you know, brother out. Mrs. Payne all the time. The cooker pings, signaling the stew is finished. When Olivia takes the lid off, a cloud of steam erupts with a rich aroma of cooked meat and vegetables. Can you grab us some bowls? I'm guessing they're into the shelves above. I nod and get up, moving around the table to the shelf with all the bowls. I give the top a quick dust check, sticking it back in and taking the two under it. Olivia already has the ladle ready, stirring the soup slowly. I set the bowls down next to her, and she ladles in servings for us. Okay, money bags, back to the couch. You don't want to eat at the table? I can't. What do- oh. The island table doesn't really have space for the chair to fit underneath. Plus, I want to enjoy this with some quality entertainment. I figured we could watch something together on that big flat screen you got. And that's okay, right? Sure, sure. I carry both bowls back to the couch, seeing the entire living room has been cleaned up. Man, I really need to make this up to Olivia somehow. Just watching something doesn't feel like a fair deal at all. Not only cooking, but even cleaning up after. I'll find a way to repay her. I set down our dinner on the coffee table. Before Olivia can say a thing, I place both hands on the counter on the corner of the couch and push. Didn't think it'd be so hard, but then again, I'm still out of sorts. Space created, however, is enough for Olivia to work in, uh, work the front of her chair in. Olivia gives me an appreciative nod, then angles her chair in a way to let her use the tail, yeah, use her tail and the couch's armrest to pivot herself onto it. Thanks. I give Olivia a small nod and a smile as I grab my spoon off the table. Leaning closer to the bowl, the comforting aroma of the soup wafts up into my stuffy nose. For the first time, I'm getting goosebumps that aren't caused by cold flashes. I get a good spoonful of Olivia's homemade remedy, making sure to get some meat and veggies as well. Still piping hot, I blow a bit of air on the spoon to cool it. Pussy. What? Hey, the last thing I needed with this fever is second degree burns all over my tongue. Whatever you say. Once I feel it's sufficiently cooled, I slurp up my first spoonful. My dry, tired eyes close in bliss as the flavors wash over my taste buds, firing them off all all off like fireworks. To describe it as just being good would be a severe understatement. The stock is rich and hearty. The meat is well cooked, it could easily fall off the bone it came from, and the vegetables give it a nice aromatic touch. All of it well seasoned and spiced. It's like I'm experiencing that scene from Compi <laughs> Tui. They got, they got little <laughs> Compi. I guess so. Sensing and seeing the different flavors move and dance around in my mind. For a brief moment, I forgot all about my fever, and only felt the warm presence of the soup envelop me like a cozy blanket. Is it good? Like a record scratch, I'm taken out of my experience and brought back to Earth by the Baryonyx's tone. 
I looked to see Olivia giving me a questioning look, idly crunching and munching her soup. I also realized that I'm sunk into the couch, my arms to the side like a rag doll's. I felt like my body was weighed down from both my sickness and the soup. Guess I got lost in the broth. Whoa. Olivia, the soup is amazing. Olivia rolls her eyes at my enthusiastic compliment and lets out a tiny smile. That's nothing. I just threw shit together in a pot and called it food. Anyone can do that. Good soup. Yeah, Olivia, not me, apparently. Yeah, no. Uh, well, I'm sick as fuck, so I can't do that. <laughs> like I, on a normal basis. Yeah. <laughs> On a normal basis, I just fuck it. I, it's, it's either the uh, the burritos or uh, nothing, you know. Olivia looks away, once again cutting herself short. With weak strength, I lift myself up from the couch's gravitational pull to better look at this sh uh, the shying scaly. I'm serious. This is the most delicious soup I've ever had. Olivia moves her head back closer to me, but still avoids my gaze. Her smile a little weaker. All right, I get it. Don't have to make it sound like it's better than it is. It's just helping out your flu. I'm not saying it because of the flu. Honestly, you have a real talent for cooking. Olivia turns towards me. Her smile is still small, but filled with honest joy. You really think so? I nod, even as the soothing warmth of Olivia's soup settles in, and manage to return her meek smile with my own tired one. I know so. Her eyes dart around for anything else to focus on, desperately trying to redirect her fluster. She shakes the flush off her face and cheeks and checks around for the bag, or for her bag. Well, uh, I'll get going. Going? I thought you were wanting to get caught up on your shows. Uh, well, the remote's right here. It's the least I can do to, after your help today. Who are you wanting to watch? She eyes the remote and the oversized screen on our wall. Gundam. Gundam. <laughs> Please, Gundam. Gundam. A few things. Nothing in particular. I remember you asking the last month for some recommendations, so I've been thinking a few you might like. But if you're sick and all, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, I'd love to see what you have. Your parents probably won't be back to hog it for another few hours. If they come back tonight at all. So it's a pretty good time. You really sure? Sure, I'm sure. Show me all about the deep cultural meaning of animated dinosaur folk cartoons. Oh my god. You're lucky you're sick right now. Yep. Olivia takes the remote and flicks the TV on. After getting over the initial shock of the screen being taller than she is, she navigates to a streaming site and picks some colorful series I'd only seen in passing. This one has a rough plot pilot, but it gets better a few episodes in. And the animation is top notch. Mm-hmm. She flips the first episode on, and an establishing fight scene unravels while Olivia moves back by the couch with me. Then, to my surprise, she hefts herself out of her chair and in, into the cushion next to me. I move my arm out of the way to make room. Oh, sorry. Should have asked. Of course you're welcome to sit. I know, but... thanks. We focus back on the show. Well, I do. Olivia's glancing my way after every joke and expensive shot to analyze my reaction. And when it's not for that, it's a forewarning that something a bit cheesy was about to happen. Eventually the first episode closes. The heroes are ready to begin their journey, for real, in the following one. The credits scroll and Olivia swishes her hair aside with her fingertips. So, uh, yeah. It's pretty good, I guess. I, I don't know, what do you think? I liked it, yeah. Really? Oh boy. <laughs> oh, they got a whole. They got a whole season. They got the whole season. Do you want to see more? Wait, didn't you say you wanted to catch up on your shows? This is the pilot episode. She fumbles the remote in her hands and has to catch it midair. Well, yeah. Just figure you should know more about. No. <clears throat> Just figure you should know what's all going on so you're not lost, you know. But if you want to keep watching this, that's fine too. She quickly pushes the button to start the next episode without my response. Cute is all that runs through my mind at her attempts to cover for her small mistake. She probably, she's probably just refreshing her memory and... Hmm. I wonder why I thought cute fit. Well, it does. Hell endearing. Every time she glances over as if I wouldn't enjoy the show. I'm sure mom and dad aren't in any rush back. The characters on screen freeze. Oh shoot, did the Wi-Fi go out again? I, 
try to stand up, but a brutishly heavy limb anchors my lap back down. Olivia's tail feels like a boulder across my legs, keeping me from standing. Uh, Olivia? I just paused it, Inko. Oh. There's a complicated expression on her face. Is this it? Is this it? Uh, I, uh... Is it normal? Is what normal? She chose her, chews her lips slowly in consideration. Your parents, like... Are they not really going to be back? I shrug. They're always busy with work. I feel a shifting next to me. Olivia's inched herself closer. Like, when I think about it, I barely see them at all. Or shifting. I wondered sometimes... The tail shifts to my abdomen now. Does anyone even care? All the movement has stopped. As if reality itself has paused. Man, I must be more tired than I thought. I feel my head sway as my muscles ease into putty. I'm sure they do. I look at Olivia. who is shoulder to shoulder with me now. I mean, that's kind of the same. Hmm? Ooh, this music's interesting. It is a very interesting choice. Olivia chews her lip as she considers her words. He's always busy too. The whole reason I live with my godparents is because my dad has to travel for work. So he doesn't... I stop myself as I see a faint wetness in Olivia's eyes. I'm sorry. Her eyes close and a somber sigh escapes her lips. No, it's fine. I get it, Inko. There's a silence hanging over us now. I copy... I copy after the sweet girl next to me, letting my eyes slide closed and a sad breath loose. After some time, she breaks the silence with the soft and tender words. Of course your parents care. Just like that. Why else would they work so much? What about me? Once it just how I wince at just how pathetic that sounded. It's for you, you doof. How else could you afford all these nice things? Her words grow quieter as time goes on, and my body sinks into numbness again. She means, of course, I care. True. <laughs> Dad cares enough to work for my sake. Enough to talk my grandparents into letting me live with them. They didn't have to, and yet I'm burdening them. My mind connects the dots. Mr. Halford talked Randy and Sophie into it? Which is why I have to be able to live on my own as soon as I can. Because if they don't want me there anymore, that's it for me. I recall just how happy they were to have Olivia rejoin the party. They wouldn't, though. They love you like Damien and Vinny. She shakes the morose thoughts from her head, and then looks at me with a serious, with serious moonshade eyes. Anyway, you should do the same for your parents and yourself. And that's probably why she isn't going to be around long. Exactly. <gasps> Oh, when do we get like this? My world goes horizontal, and I find my head atop the comfiest pillow I'd ever felt. I Alligator nod, skin. and the nod becomes a nuzzle into said pillow. Why is your Wait, face? Why is Because I'm dying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was drinking lean earlier. You see, <sighs> as usual, I nod, and the nod becomes a nuzzle into said pillow. Above me, Olivia yelps. Hmm. I try and turn to see what's wrong, but something falls atop my head that keeps it in place. Nothing. The soothingly cool something rubs across my head, drawing me further and further into a restful peace. Along with the gentle caress, a deep vibrato emanates from somewhere resonating in my tired mind. Okay. With the lulling touch and tone, my eyelids grow heavy. By the time I wake up, Olivia is gone. I check my phone for the time, I'll be realized it's four in the morning. How'd she lay you down without you, like, noticing? Masterful. Plus, I'm kind of dizzy. <laughs> I'm really yes. out of it. Can't help but groan as I sit up on the couch, but instead of feeling horrible like I had the past few days, I felt surprisingly well. There's no doubt that I have Olivia to think. Hell, I might even be able to go to school today. I wonder if any of that soup is left. She probably left it in the fridge, right? 
shuffle over to the appliance and open up the door, allowing my eyes to adjust to the light. It only takes a second for me to spot a Tupperware container filled with a delicious meal. Nice. To ask her for the recipe sometime. Thanks to Olivia's advice and cooking, I'd finally made my recovery and returned to school. And I'm glad to be back. I felt like I'd missed so much while I'd been gone. So much I needed to catch up on. I mean, I did manage to finish all these assignments that Ben had sent me. But I fell out of the loop with other things. Like, gossip about me. Damien tried to give me the rundown of it all during PE. I'm still in shock over how bad some of them got. Up to cartel drug running and FBI's most wanted. Just because he was out of school? Yeah, you know how it is. I don't think that's even possible in just a week. Stretch my legs a little bit. And a class bell rings throughout the school, signaling the start of lunch. As everyone in class is packing up their things, Mr. Yadikin speaks up. All right, everyone, make sure you complete the assignment by next class. You'll all have a wonderful rest of the day now. Oh, and Inkle. I stop at the mention of my name as I throw on my backpack. Could you wait a moment? I have something I wish to speak to you about. Uh, yeah, of course. Olivia looks back from the classroom entrance, waiting for me. Don't wait up on me. I'll meet you at the table with the others. With a shrug and a nod, Olivia wheels herself out the door and down the hall. Everyone else leaves the classroom until it's just Yadikin and I. Please, have a seat. I take the seats closest to Yadikin's desk, putting my backpack down as well. Mr. Yadikin himself gets out of his chair and walks around his desk, leaning against it. So, I heard you got a little saucy last night. <laughs> it was the I'll be quick about it. <laughs> it was a signal. <laughs> I got a job that needs doing. I... Up, up. You've missed assignments and need makeup work? I need extra help with something. God. <laughs> something I think you'll be very interested in. Some good friends of mine are getting married in a few short days, and they've hired me to be their photographer. I've given the excellent learning experience. <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> I thought of you. Me? Yes, if you want to, of course. I could always call in some associates to help me out, but I thought adding in some extra credit would sweeten the deal. What would we be doing? There's a broad smile on his face and a distant <laughs> look in his eyes. <laughs> well, you'll be my apprentice in this case. You'll not only be helping set up more elaborate photos, you'll also be doing a lot of independent shots. Indep- You mean I'll be taking my own pictures? Yep. In fact, you'll be using my SLRs and lenses for this to keep all the shots uniform. The idea of finally getting to use something like Mr. Yadikin's thousand dollar cave on makes my head swim. What do you say? Interested? It certainly seems like a hefty task, even if Yadikin would be there to help us. But then again, Yadikin wouldn't be offering this job if he didn't think I was capable of doing it. This would technically be my first official photography gig. And a wedding shoot to boot. It sounds so daunting yet enticing. I'd love to. Alright, sounds like a done deal. It's after school today. We can talk up more of you, you give me a heads up, I know, I was sick of <laughs> shit. Damn. Holy shit. Today hey, For now you should be getting along to lunch. Thank you, Mr. Yadikin. I give the teacher a nod and grab my backpack. Just as I head out the door, my curiosity gets the better of me. So, who's the lucky couple, if you don't mind me asking? The school nurse, actually. The husband-to-be is also a good friend of mine. Huh. Neat. The monkey. Make... I thought they were going to say Solly and, uh, was it Prockler? Prockler, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. I make a mental note to give my well wishes to the nurse if I see her before the wedding. With that, I wave Mr. Yadikin goodbye and head down the hallway. Wait. Friday? I was going to practice painting, though. Ugh, I already agreed to go. Even I didn't, it's real photography. It's not even a question which I should go to. But jeez. It's like the universe is conspiring against me to never stop drawing stick figures. Hey, man. It's fine. Uh-oh. 
What's up with Olivia? I don't know. Finally meet up with Olivia, who's waiting near the entrance to the cafeteria. <laughs> the grassy green girl... <laughs> yep, right there, another one. Is leaning over. <laughs> a sour pout scrunch... <laughs> yep, you got, the, you got the adjective and the noun. A sour pout scrunching her maw close as she eyes the passerbys. When she notices I've moved into her airspace, she perks up immediately. Seeing the transformation is surreal, and I chew on my cheek to keep from laughing as I watch her muscular tail wag happily. Finally took you long enough. Yeah, sorry that took so long. You didn't have to wait for me, by the way. Yeah, I can manage. If waiting, I can manage waiting if it means eating with you. Man, she is so oh, down. Damn. We are the clueless damn. one. We're not trying Inko. to get with her. <laughs> Inko, my man. Oh my god. I can feel a smile tug at my lips just from hearing Olivia say that. Mind if I push your chair in? Using me as a battering ram through the crowd now, huh? Yeah, something like that. Ha. Hmm. Alright. But only because you asked. But give me your backpack. I'll use it as a shield. Let's fucking go! <laughs> when I grab the handles, Olivia moves her tail up to grab my wrist, like at the arcade. Alright, charge! Yes, ma'am. Damn, we just killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Start marching through the crowd of unruly and famished teens clamoring for the daily meal. Olivia turns her head to me to say something. So, what happened with Mr. Yadikin? You in trouble for something? Huh? Oh, nah. Yadikin just had a proposition for some extra credit. Really? What is it? He wants me to join him at a wedding and help him out with a photo shoot. Says he thinks it'll be a good learning experience. Oh, well, that sounds pretty interesting. Did you take it? Yep, could be a good way to hone in on what I know. Plus, that extra credit can help make up for the time that I was sick. You mean when you nearly overdosed on that cough syrup cocktail you made? Yeah, that. Wait. Huh, what? <laughs> I didn't say anything. The crowd's too loud here. The Baryonyx chuckles to herself. I'm left rolling my eyes, letting her claim victory in this exchange. By the time we've got our lunch, it's a simple matter of locating Damien and Liz by the telephone pole neck. For whatever reason, they're at a more sequestered table today, and when we arrive, it's pretty obvious why. Ra ra. Oh, took you too long enough. Yeah, yeah. I expected more from Olivia. Something more graphic. Instead, Olivia rolls herself the rest of the way, taking her designated spot at the head of the table. I take the spot adjacent to her, all while keeping a wary eye on the pink Parasolophus. Parasolophus? I don't know. It seems like Mia's rage against me has simmered down over time, but the air of uncertainty and uneasiness still waved around her. Best I can do is act friendly. Hey, Mia. Uh, is there something you need? Need? Nah, I'm just here to catch up with my good pal here. While the red-scaled menace turns towards Olivia, her own eyes remain locked on her soggy chicken she's eating mechanically. I thought you were asking Liz for her homework, though. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Alright. Ah, uh, uh, right. Here, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> a pair of soda cans are rolled down the table, and I thank Raptor Jesus I'm able to catch both before they ram into my tray of questionable lunch meat. You guys are taking a while, so I grabbed the drinks today. No, you didn't. Mia gave those to you. Well, she did it because I thought about doing it. <laughs> Just trying to bribe you for the math answers I helped you with earlier. Lizzie, I can't believe you would imply something like that about me. But it's true. Hey, free soda's free soda, man. At any rate, the real reason I'm here is. Say, Olivia, you leave your phone at home or something? People are trying to contact you all day. Olivia pulls her phone out from her jacket pocket. I catch a glimpse of a wallpaper, 
a comical portrait of guts that she'd probably do. It is berserk. Guts. Oh, I know it is. That's his rat. That's his rat. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, rat was guts. Yeah. I thought there was. was a, I thought well, there was a second reference, and I'm like, yeah, we <laughs> pinpointed it. It's the same fucking. Reference. It's possible though. She watches anime. Yeah. What the hell? You don't got a proper monthly plan. I got more important things to be doing than this, you know. If they want to see Olivia so bad, why send you and not just show up themselves? Shut it. Noted. Should we see the glasses again? Sorry. Is that what you wanted? I thought it like slowly panned up. Like, was I just seeing things? I think you were oh, just seeing things. I think it might have been like out of the corner of your eye. Yeah. So who's important for all this anyway? Who's so important for all this anyway? What do you think, Ben? Ben wants to talk to Olivia. Hmm. Why does he want to talk to Olivia? Is this 20 freaking questions? Yes. How the hell should I know what's really going on between my boyfriend and Hot Wheels here? All that matters to me is if Livia's here gonna fix it or not. I'll think about it. Ugh, whatever. I'm out of here. Smell you later, Gator. <laughs> the squint. Mia storms off, leaving Olivia looking very sour. Uh, things alright with Ben? Olivia rests her arms on the table and slumps her head in. I don't want to talk about it. Where'd her bright mood from before go? Well, anyways, Damien, you really shouldn't condone cheating, even when something as simple as math homework. But you helped me out with it. It's because I like you, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. I helped you with it, and I think you're getting something out of it. Like the answers. What I mean is, in comparison, Mia's just trying to be lazy, and she's only cheating herself. What's the issue, then? What's the issue? Yeah, I got a free soda. Someone you hate tricks yourself into staying stupid, and everyone thinks they win. It's great. Actually, a fucking base take. Let's be <laughs> real. <laughs> you can't argue with it, Liz. You scare me sometimes, Damien. Guess I'll have to ask Ben what's going on if I see him later. In the meantime, Olivia's disposition only keeps getting more and more dour. I try to think of something to help her cheer up, but I keep coming up with dead ends on just what could work here. It's gotta be something. Can't just leave her in such a sour mood. Oh, how about that? Hey, so what's the deal with your phone background? Oh, you noticed? She flips her phone on and shows me her background. Aw, oh, that's a little doodle guts. Yeah, I drew up the other day. Got the curves just right first try, so it's pretty cool. Not bad. Is he with you today? Nah, I left him home. How often do you bring him? Eh, not often. Maybe once or twice a semester. Even then, it's just when I'm bored. Although once he was just in my hoodie when I left for school. Unexpected? It was. Here, I got some pics saved. The screen displays the small creature, sat atop a desk with its skinny tail clutched to its chest tightly. I don't know why, but he holds his tail like that all the time. I feel Damien and Liz hovering behind me, their eyes locked onto the adorably fat creature on screen. I don't know who coos, but probably Liz, but Olivia rolls her eyes and swipes in the next picture of the cute pet now in a transparent ball and looking confused. For the remaining minutes of lunch, we just sit huddled around Olivia's phone and transpire sweet little rat as it did the most mundane things. Yet, Guts's method of doing them was way too unbelievably, undeniably cute. And that's what really got to us, made time fly faster than we could even notice. Bing, bing, bong. I blink a couple of times and stretch my arms and legs as I get up from my desk. Miss Brockman really knows how to make 40 minutes feel like 80. Well, at least it's time to practice painting. For real, for real. Wait, no. No. Yet I can rope me into the photo shoot. Can't practice painting. Can't. 
get good at anything. Why is it every time I try to actually improve something like this happens? At this rate, I'll never get good enough to get a real following. I haven't gotten to actually have a whole afternoon to practice at all. Still, there's no way in hell I'm missing this. I ended up meeting with Ben and Yadikin right as he was locking his classroom. While our teacher made the assignment, internship, apprenticeship, while he hadn't made it all sound simple, I was still subjected to some paperwork. Something about liability waiver or something? Oh, that's me. <laughs> you know, in case something happens to us, like a surprise attack by five teenagers in multicolored spandex. I wonder if that happens often. We still filled the form out as the instructor gave an overview of just what exactly Ben and I would be doing. There's few structures out here, save for the one at the edge of the cliff. Ben's the first one out of the cramped car with an armful of telescoping black stands. I follow his example, un uh, unloading the vehicle. Alright you two, remember what you're doing tonight? Does Ben always wear this jacket? Why do I feel like he wore something blue before? Uh, I think he did always wear this jacket. Huh. I recognize, like, the pattern on the sh this sweatshirt. The sh the yeah, the shirt underneath, I know that that's the same one. He always had this blazer? I guess I'm just fucking tripping. All right, you two. Oh wait, that's you. Run it back. Uh, you remember what we're doing tonight? Yes, sir. After we set up a photo station in the corner of the hall, we'll be taking turns walking the reception and taking pictures of the guests. Perfect. I'll be with the wedding party the entire time. So if you need me, just look for the gaggle of similarly dressed women screeching and you'll find me. He grins as he helps carry the last of the lightest equipment from the trunk. Remember, this is actual work, so be polite, be efficient, but most importantly... Ben and I sit up right at attention, ready for any order our teacher will give us. Have fun! But... Trust me, the clients will appreciate it more. Finally finished with the unloading, I inhaled the mixed aroma of ocean and flowers. While I find the scent energizing, Ben seems to have the exact opposite reaction. His brows pinch together in disgust as he tries in futility to fan away the air with one hand while covering his nose with the other. Ugh, I think I'm gonna be sick when- I think I'm going to be the sick one next with this weather. Ugh. <laughs> At least the view's great. That... it is, yeah. Mr. Yadikan leads us through a small garden out front and into the reception hall. It's a spacious wedding tent adorned with all sorts of flora and high-end lighting keeping the place warm and lit. Okay, you guys know how to set up here. I'm gonna get to business. He's gonna go break it down. Yes, sir. He leaves us stepping into the ongoing ceremony with a primed camera and tripod. Ben and I exchange a single glance before we both resign ourselves to a daunting task. First on the list is the telescopic stands for the cameras. From experience, it doesn't take us too long to get those in place. Next are the reflectors and strobe lights, all packed in heavy cases that have to be hauled inside. By my third case, I'm already exhausted. Shoot, I thought gym class would have prepared me for this. V my phone buzzes. Might as well take a breather. Opening up the notification, I discover it's from... Olivia! She never lost service. <laughs> hey Shade, you got your service back? Yep. Figured. Dude, look. <laughs> it's our emote. <laughs> <laughs> All of our fucking emotes are gonna have that B. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you leave with the uh, can after good. school. What's up with that? Helping with a photo wedding photo shoot. You at a wedding? Did Iyadakan give you a better jacket for it? Damn, you gotta roast me like that? Is she coming? 
Why is she coming? I don't know. She's asking where at. So maybe, maybe she's just curious. What is your profile pic? It's the Mr. Beast pose. <laughs> Mr. Beast! <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah, take a look. Yeah, I can kind of see it. She said it's someplace called Carlson. <laughs> Look out on the way over. Wait, really? That place has a bunch of scenic views. See any good landscape shots? Take one for me. Sure, if I get the time. No, now. <laughs> <laughs> Rat with gun. <laughs> My boy's gonna die tonight. Even got the pinky extended breath. <laughs> <laughs> He's respectful. I don't- I think that's new actually. I don't think the other one had a pinky. I don't think so either. Well, the other one grabbed its crotch and flipped us off, so. Oh, you're right. <laughs> He's a distinguished rat with the pinky. Cute and threatening message received. Jeez. Well, this is as good a spot as any. Sun's starting to set, so it does make for some pretty nice atmosphere. Maybe Olivia wants to paint another landscape. In the distance, I see a few sailboats and yachts. Further beyond, a freighter or two. These sure are crowded these days. I take the picture and send it over to Olivia. Huh. What is that? I've never understood that one. The F. F mouth. It's an interesting picture. You can't really see... They were talking about, like, the seaside and, like, yachts and shit. That's not quite it, is it? Yeah, this looks like a slender picture. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, the F is. Unless it's a P, and it's just kind of like cut out. No, Maybe. it's definitely an F. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I'm not well versed in emojis in the first place, you know? Mm hmm I can't picture thanking me like that in reality. The thought alone of her doing something in so sweet a manner. Inko, this thing weighs like 80 pounds. I'm not doing all the work. Oh, right. I let my camera hang loose around my neck while assisting Ben with setting up the last of the standing reflectors. Setting up meant not only the cameras, but a large chunk of the incomplete decor prep, which meant carrying out loads and loads of heavy cases loaded with strobes, reflectors, cloth sheets, and so many telescope and pole stands. Following his instructions, Ben had set up a small red carpet path leading to a glamour shot station. And meanwhile, I was finishing making sure the marked out spots within the room had the right combination of flash strobes and or reflector. By the time our teacher had come back, I'd just placed the final light in position. As guests started walking down Ben's handmade path, I skirted along the edge with my borrowed high-end camera. The DSLR's clicks are muted compared to the chattering guests, and while I think I managed to catch some decent shots, I'm just not really feeling it today. Something wrong with me? And voila! Ben was having a much easier time working at the makeshift studio we'd built in the corner. Couples would simply walk up and stand before the backdrop of the massive window to the cliffside and ocean. And Ben had the brilliant idea to not only set up Yadikin's lone camera, but also his own so he'd capture the couples from two different angles at once. He looked happy with each and every shot he took, and the people always chatted him up right after. And here I am, doing my best not to scowl as I look over the blurry shot I'd messed up. Blurry because my hands are shaking. I guess I'm nerve- <phone rings> Hadn't noticed till now that my main messaging app had been going off. So is it going well? Harley, I think Ben's turning into a competition. <laughs> are you winning? No. I'm losing. Are you winning some? <laughs> Beat him for me? <laughs> that wasn't a real message. I try to ignore my phone for now. I don't think anything will calm my nerves at this point. That feeling of anxiety only grows as time marches on. I can't seem to get any one picture just right, and Ben zooming around as efficiently as he is isn't helping. Well, that's not all. Olivia's messages are just throwing me off. I think we're Arrow. <laughs> yeah, you think so? And we're just like, you know what I mean? We're very confused. We're at a wedding and we're thinking of Olivia. You see, that's the issue. Thinking of the future, Jeremy. Kate, wife. 
just break this flashing stick thing. This pixel will be super dark. How oh. out of date is Olivia to think we still use flash bands? <laughs> or lock them in a bathroom or something. There you go. A real solution. I don't think that's sportsmanlike. Or legal. Oh, I just remembered I need another pick. Can you try shoving them into the wedding cake and taking a pick of smash on the floor? D damn! D damn! Uh, we're gonna have to talk to Ben about this, huh? I need it for, uh... Muse. That. <laughs> Do it for me. <laughs> Pensive. Come on, that's just violent. Just barely within my peripheral vision, I spot a perfect shot of an older couple. The parents of the groom, I believe. There, that's a good chance. I bring the borrowed camera up, look through the viewfinder, and see that the parents have already moved away into another group. The camera slips from my great. grip. What's up? No, I just said great. Ah. But luckily the neck strap holds it safely against my chest. God, we're flubbing it. We're bombing this shit so bad. Okay, I need a break. I need a break from my doing fucking nothing. It's just like me at work, for real. For real. Find an appropriate place to sneak outside and go around the building, slumping down against the brick siding. It's really twilight now. The ocean's reflection of the sun is getting very close to meeting the real thing. My phone buzzes once more, and something in me jumps. It's not fear, though. Just wish I knew what it was. Olivia sends a video of Guts running around a maze she put together using cardboard and school supplies. When he comes out the other end, she gives him a grape to bite into in her palm. Aww. I'm not really fond of rodents, but seeing Olivia's videos and little doodles is really starting to sway me. Something about seeing Olivia having such a strong bond with Guts and caring for him that warms my heart. It's hard to believe that this is the same girl that used to give me nothing but icy stares when I first met her. That she feels comfortable enough to let me... L enough with me to let her defenses down and be herself. As I continue snapping photos, my trek around the hall to find good photo ops leads me to a stage where the DJ once was. Shame that I didn't get any good shots of him while I was here. Maybe Ben got some decent pictures. Looking through the camera lens, I see that there's a gentleman sitting on the steps that lead up to the stage, finishing off a cigarette. Someone over on the steps, taking a deep drag of a cigarette and blowing the smoke up towards the window. Truly iconic display of suavity. Before I know it, I've taken several shots. Seems like he wants to be left alone, but he doesn't mind re- Hey kid. Oh boy. You wanna you wanna get Satan here or Oh sure. At least get my good side, will ya? Oh. I step closer, readjusting my camera settings and scrambling for an explanation. Sorry about that. I was unsure if you wanted the attention. It's alright. People say I got a uh kind of resting bitch face. Oh, I can't lie, I'm pretty exhausted, kid. I was gonna say, is this the, the groom? This is the groom. Especially after I had to carry the new missus down the aisle all the way to the car. Ah, so this is the groom. So you gonna take a photo or what? Oh, right, sorry. As I raise my camera, the groom make, uh, takes a thinker-esque pose, taking a drag from a cigarette. After a few clicks and a couple of slight adjustments to my position, I believe we got some pretty good shots in there. There we are. Room blows out a plume of smoke from his mouth before leaning over to see the captures. It smells like a Vegas hotel. I give the groom time to look at each photo thoroughly before moving to the next one. Hmm. This is pretty good, kid. Managed to make this mug of mine look halfway decent. He lets out a scratchy chuckle as he takes another puff of his cigarette before sniffing what little was left of it on snuffing what little was left of it onto the floor. Thanks. Save, don't mind me asking. What are you doing all the way over here? It's your big day, isn't it? As the groom lets out another plume, he's already begun to dig up another cigarette. Lighting the new cig casually, he begins to inhale it. I keep inhaling it. Uh he holds up a finger as he continues inhaling, until the cigarette is finished, and he finally exhaling a stream of lung cancer slowly over the course of 30 seconds. My man chuffed that whole thing back. Holy shit. <clears throat> Sir? 
course it is. Just having a little rest is all. I mean, this has been the happiest day of my life. That tiring, but it's tiring as all hell. The missus is certainly having fun. And yet in a few hours, when we're in our new, no longer bachelor pad, I'll be listening to her as she moans about how sore she is. Grim lets out another plume of smoke, this time through his nostrils. But hey, that's the price I gotta pay. Holy matrimony and all that jazz. It only feels like the Grim is laying on a bit thick to is essentially a stranger to him. And yet, I can understand what he means. You know, you've been going around this whole reception snapping photos. Why don't you take a break too? Can we take a sig with him? Can we go smoke with the Grim? Yeah. He motions his hand to a nearby stage as an available seat. I settle myself on the stage as the Grim then fiddles with a small packet. Looking closer, it's a still sealed pack of cigarettes. You told me a bit about you, you know? Alright, we've got Yetikin's name. Who? There you go. Your camera teacher, whatever he's called at your school. Says you're a good kid and all, though a bit clueless. Hey. There's this girl named Olivia. She <laughs> got the hots for you. She's you literally been know. laying on so many hints, kid, and you haven't picked up on any of them. <laughs> Let me see your phone real quick. Yep, that right there. <laughs> That's a hint. <laughs> the groom lets out another guffaw as he cracks open the pack of cigs and plucks out a fresh cancer stick. His words, not mine. How do you know? <laughs> We've known each other for ages. He actually helped me meet the missus. Funny how that works out. Oh, so you had a Ken was your wingman? Yeah, <laughs> he always hated how I told him that. I'd given him a lift to some field trip he had chaperoned. Don't know why, he could have taken the school bus. But as soon as I got there, I met the rest of his co workers, including my would be wife. Tarot prick tricked me into also chaperoning too, saying I could use the time to get to know her better. Jeez, maybe I should be asking him. Well, no, I can't. Can't what? Nothing important. There a girl you're thinking about? Have a teacher tell you how to court a lady friend, right? Hey, no. <laughs> Another one of his students, your classmate, yeah? It's not like that. Oh, come on. I know you want to talk about girls. That's always fun. Humor me a bit. She's just a good friend. Words taste bitter on my tongue for some reason. Sure, kid. Sure. You've got a few more minutes of quiet, but while Bradzilla and her maids of murder fight over that bouquet. <laughs> Is this the moment where we get told... Dude, you're in love. Yeah. This is the O moment in it. <laughs> oh. Oh, I am. Huh. Quickly glance over to see a woman twice my age wielding a folding chair like it was a battle axe. Chant can't help you there, but I can. That was a good friend of yours. What's she like? It's a bit of a complicated history. Oh? I mean, when I first met her, she was very cynical and sarcastic. Well, she's still sarcastic, but in a lighthearted way. Even with her friends, she's a little distant. But when she's painting or gushing about some franchise or obscure anime, there's this unashamed excitement and passion in it. I haven't met anyone with that kind of energy before. Once you get to know her, she's just nice under it all. That everything? Well, yeah. I think she drew me carrying her once. <laughs> Inko! <laughs> that go through? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. What the not. fuck? Crisp is off, and it's been off. Whole fucking time. Yeah, you know how it is. Whistles. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was gonna just say. <laughs> well, shoot. Wait, when did she do that? Uh, off screen. We never got to see it. Hmm. 
Is there a separate filter? On? I have no clue. I don't think so. Uh, let, let me give you a test. Yeah, go for it. Did yep, that heard go that. through? It went through fine. Hello! Yep, good. All right, well, I guess whistles are still somewhat muted or something. You heard that, right? I can hear yours. Fucking lame. I want to see those pics. You and me both. <laughs> Slides the ring off his finger and <laughs> holds it up to me. Oh, damn. You want this? Sounds like you need it more than me. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But dang, sounds pretty cut and dry to me. Ever had a crush before? Were you aromantic? Not on anyone I know personally. Hmm, your folks together? Yeah. They love each other too, yeah? Yeah, I guess they do. You guess? It's complicated. They're around so little, I don't even know what their love looks like. How they interact. If they even love each other at all. They've never told me their story. Why they're together. Anything that would prepare me for the future was outsourced. As far back as I can remember, whenever my parents weren't around, there was a screen nearby. And they weren't Shit, around Shit, we're an iPad kid. Damn. I've always had that little electronic friend in my pocket telling me how great I was at everything. Well, this is 2023 and he's in high school, right? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the time frame tracks. Mm-hmm. God, it fucking hurts to think how long it's been since I've been in high school. Holy shit. Yeah, right. Ugh. All right, moving on from that topic. Yeah, <laughs> let's get a, let's push that to the side. Holy shit. It's been my only help to get through life. All the best ways to have the best friendships, hobbies, romance. Jeez, you're probably born in mid 2000s. Yeah, I guess we are, huh? But it feels worthless now. I'm not prepared. I don't even know if what this is is love. This guy seems to think so, though. It'll help me out. I see him putting some words together now. Let me give you a little anecdote, kid. The groom finally lights the cigarette, though this time he's slow to puff on it. See my beautiful bride over there? He motions with the dull embers of his smoke to where the bridesmaids were, still violently wrestling, and the bride acted as a referee. Even if we had never met, this was a happenstance meeting. I'd see her over there. And I just know, I love her. Yeah? Yep. Hmm. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Aren't you trying to give me a little push? Convince me I like this girl? You're the one who wanted advice. There it is. I thought you were gonna go on a bit more about love. <laughs> Why the hell would I give a speech about love? I know what it is. You know what it is. But there's no groundbreaking advice that'll make everything make sense. And you don't need me to convince you. You're just looking for reasons to not believe what's right in front of you. Oh. Break's over. Gotta run. The man gets up, dusting off his pants and flicking the cigarette butt into the trash. Hey, take some great pictures for me, will ya? No more moping. You're on the clock. He jogs into the crowd to meet up with his bride. My phone buzzes in my pocket. <laughs> what timing? I reach into my pocket and pull out my phone, squinting at the screen. An un unread notification from our group chat. Shoot. Do I have time to be on my phone right now? Maybe I can talk to Damien about this. He's known Olivia for a while. Ben and Olivia used to be friends too, right? Would he be able to help? Should probably focus. <laughs> Should probably focus on what I'm here to do. Well, we do have to talk to Ben about Olivia. Figure out what's going on between them, if nothing else. Besides, I don't want to let the groom down. But this is Olivia we're talking about. I don't want to do anything without knowing as much as I can. Hey, you gotta focus on the fo You're doing a job, man. I know this is a dating sim, but like, no. this is life right now. What? 
I can't go into this without being prepared. Reality. I am going to squirrel off in my own. And when this blows up in my face, I'll tell you you're right and we'll go back. I did save that, right? Yeah, okay. I can't go in this without being prepared. I really don't want to let Olivia down, especially after all I've done for her. What kinds of things does Olivia like? Hell, what kinds of things do girls in general like? I'll be able to find some pointers online too. By the end, I can be a good boyfriend. I just need to figure out how. Look, we're already there. We, we, we're saying we're, we're trying to go boyfriend status. It's good, we're good. Okay. When I reach for right, my phone, we're on the path. We, we got it. When you have a moment, can you scroll through your saves? Uh, sure. So right now, I don't know what Q and A is. Oh, quick saves and auto saves. So these are our saves right now. We don't got a we time. We didn't save too much. Yeah, we didn't save much in the first session, but there wasn't many branching paths. Right. And most of the ones that were there, it's like, well, this is obvious. Yeah. Sorry, I just need to... <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Rubs the locket with the picture in it. <laughs> when I reach for my phone, my fingers brush the camera that still hung around my neck. Wait, I still need to take these pictures, so I can't just drop this entirely. I definitely don't want to let Iadakin uh, down. Even though I'm not that good. Well, Ben's been on top of his game all night. Even now, he's still snapping up shots, so I'm sure Iadakin will have enough by the end of the night. It's not like I'm offering anything crazy valuable here. I meander to the far wall of the hall and find a way to slip outside. Phone in hand, I scroll through my previous calls to, Dan to find Damien. He'll have all the info I need. And he called me the other week to see if I was follow- uh, ask if the following day was a school holiday. On a Saturday. Yeah, here it is. Just what I needed. And now, as I listen to the dial tone, all I can do is wait. Come on, pick up. The cool evening air of autumn nips at my skin, with a slow breeze ruffling the branches of nearby trees. Some leaves are blown lazily off the branches, drifting with each other to a songless dance. I did always prefer nature photography. It's a lot less hectic compared to tonight. Oh yeah, that was... Hello, pain residence. Pain? Huh? Oh, sorry, Miss Payne. I thought this was Damien's phone. It is. He left his phone on the table while he takes the trash out. One moment, Damien, sweetie. You have a school friend on the phone. Oh my, I told you not to answer these spam calls. It's Inko. Oh, snap, cool. Thanks, Mom. Hey, Inko. I can make out the frantic shuffling of the phone. <laughs> What do you need me for? Okay, just play it cool. Right, I wanted to ask about... Uh... I mean, how do I even ask him this? Well, I want to be a better friend for Olivia, right? Uh, uh-huh, yeah, I'm following. I was wondering if you knew anything else I should know... Or I should know, you know? The silence lets me know how stupid that sounded. Huh? Well, I, I think she likes anime and soda and the arcade. But didn't you know all this already? I do, I do, yes. But I mean, like, uh, anything a bit further than that. Mm -hmm. I mean... You like Olivia, don't you, Inko? I didn't say that. Despite the stiff breeze, I can feel my face burning up. Shut up. <laughs> say it. Say what? I don't need to tell you nothing. I got all day to wait. Do you? Damien, I'm serious. I need some help here. He's just saying this out loud in the living room as if they don't live in the same house. Right. Well, I mean, she's probably, like, squirreled off doing her own damn thing right now. Uh, I'm serious, too. Come on. Say it. I'm not confirming or denying anything. Ugh, well, maybe I should hang up then. 
See you at school tomorrow, Inko, my man. <sighs> Damn it, fine. Damien. The Death Stare. Yeah. <laughs> Take a deep breath and say it. All right, I like her. Huh? Who? Oh, come on. Olivia. Huh? Uh, what, what about her? I'm not hearing complete sentences here. Screw you. I like Olivia. I want to know what advice you have as her friend. I'm serious. There we go. In all seriousness, I don't have much for you. I haven't thought of Olivia that way since, like, third grade. I don't got anything game-changing for you. Great. <laughs> but hey, I'm here for you, man. Just don't act like a fool and start wiling out, you know. Not in the slightest. I'm saying, look, you're calling because you think there's some big secret here, right? I'm telling you, there isn't one, and that in itself is an advantage. You don't need to be focusing on, like, strategy, just let it happen. Wait, does she know? No, I don't think so. I think she likes me too? Hmm, well yeah, that's the longest short of what I got. Have you ever been in a relationship, Damien? Uh, few. Nothing serious, though. Hey, wanna go to the school dance? That, that sort of thing. Never went anywhere, you know? Yeah. Alright, I should get back to it. Sorry to bother. Hey, call anytime, man. Thanks. Be seeing you. See you later, Gator Dater. Oh, Jesus. I fight the urge to throw my phone into the brick wall. That was completely pointless. Place a hand on my forehead and take a deep breath. At this point, I should just try and get some photos to look somewhat competent at my job. I slip my phone back into my pocket, grab my camera, and begin walking around the hall. Doing my best to look for opportunities to snap some decent shots, I do a lap around the hall. Even then, I'm struggling to find anything good. It isn't long before I notice Ben across from me. From the looks of it, he's managing a fair bit better than I am. Not only is he finding better shots than I am, but the guests are going to him for shots. Actually, the more I think about it, Ben might actually have some decent advice to give, right? Better than what I got from Damien, at least. I surreptitiously maneuver around the various wedding goers, impeding my path, trying to get to Ben. Oh, because he actually has a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, he I've tracks, seen tracks. Eventually, I have an opening while Ben is currently taking a picture of another couple by their table. Not wanting to seem like I'm lost, I try to blend in and join him. I get near Ben and get down on one knee to take alternate angled shots of the couple. As if he had a sixth sense, Ben quickly noticed my presence, shocked that I was next to him. Inko, what are you doing? I, uh, just wanted to get some alternate shots for the lovely couple, just in case they would like them, you know? I give off an awkward laugh, though it's not amusing to Ben. He gives me an icy glare that sends shivers down my spine, as I've clearly stepped onto his territory. I think it'd be more efficient if we work in different parts of the venue. What if there are people over there that want their picture taken? If the people there wanted a picture, I wouldn't be here in the first place. Ben wordlessly goes back to snapping photos. I get back on my feet and lean close to the preoccupied Parasaurolophus, Parasaur, Parasaurolophus, uh, to talk to him. Look, Ben, I need some advice. <laughs> Thank you, young man. No problem, ma'am. Oh. Thank you, young man. <laughs> Finished with the couple's photos, Ben turns around what and begins to hoof it down the venue to look for more photo ops. Are Ben and Mio, or Mia the same dino type? No. Uh, they might be. No? Tail with the spikes. Does he have a tail with the spike? Yeah, you can see it like right behind here. Oh, I mean, I'm not staring down there, but uh, I guess maybe. Uh, right. I match his pace in order to keep up with him. Advice, you say? It's about Olivia. Mentioning the baryonyx stops Ben dead in his tracks. It turns around to face oh. me. What about Olivia? Well, it's just that I... would Take a deep breath to steady myself. The thing is, I think I... Love Olivia. Ben's face goes from confusion to sheer surprise. His eyes going as big as his glasses. 
Wait, what? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Since you've known her for longer, I figured I could ask you some things about her. <laughs> ben? <laughs> and both He's were called Paris, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah, I think they are the same type, or at least related in some way, in terms of genus. What were you saying, Jerry? <laughs> He's flabbergasted. He's absolutely astounded. Ben! Yo, oh, what? Sorry. <laughs> I must have misheard you. You said you're in love with Olivia and I... I did. Or I think I am. Look, I don't really know, but I'm asking for some help and... The Parasaur clasps his hands on my shoulder and smiles broadly. And this is wonderful news! Olivia's always been a bit of a loner, but to know that someone likes her like that, it's just fantastic. His arm wraps around my neck, and he starts dragging me away from the wedding crowd. Okay, right. So you want to know more about Olivia, yeah? We used to be the best of friends way, way back. I paid closer attention to Ben as he went over his history with the girl I may or may not love. A part of me wanted to take notes on my phone as he listed down all the shows they used to watch together. By the time he'd hit the cues, I'd noticed that some of the guests had left. Should I be writing all this down? I think it'll be fine. Unless Olivia's even changed music taste in the last three years. Three? Aren't you talking to her these days? I mean, not as much as I used to. It's been a while since we had a sit down. Wait, but Mia came and told us you wanted to talk with her at lunch. I have no idea what you're talking about. Huh. I thought you were above gossip, Inko. Sorry. Anyway, Olivia and I don't talk much, but I think we should. Hell, if I was around more, I could have helped you two get to know one another sooner. Maybe even... A shrill cry interrupts us. Across the room, the newlyweds are in some altercation. I guess it's the time of night for the groom to carry the bride out, but for some reason she's riding piggyback like a grade schooler. He laughs to himself maniacally while she complains and holds onto his hair to keep balance. Well, that relationship isn't gonna last. Ninko? Yeah, sorry. Back on track. What's important is that you always be mindful of her condition. Her condition? You know what I mean. Olivia absolutely hates special treatment, and it can get to the point where that in, of, in itself is a burden that weighs down her friends. Refusing to accept help to the point she becomes a problem for those around her. Ben sighs. I would know. Are you talking about how Olivia tries to do things on her own? Yeah, like, for all the times I've tried to help her out, she just gets all pouty and silent, as if I was stepping on her toes. No wonder people try to avoid her, you know? You can't just keep pushing people away. I care about Olivia, but she doesn't do herself any favors. Truth be told, I'm ex a bit excited to hear this from you. If you could get through to her, we could be friends again. I'd definitely do it right this time. I don't... I don't want to impose anything on her. That wouldn't be right. Well, see, that's exactly what you want to avoid. Otherwise, your relationship is going to be one-sided. One-sided? Relationships are all about mutual respect for one another. Anything less than that is unreasonable. Without that understanding, it's doomed to fail. And one thing, is under one thing to understand Olivia is that her condition needs special considerations, ones that she doesn't fully agree with. So you have to account for that from her, otherwise it won't work. Is that why you two stopped talking? <laughs> Alright, you boys ready to pack up? Pretty long night, huh? Our teacher looks haggard as he walks up to us. His wings are dragging on the floor and he's propping himself up with one of the light stands we'd brought. Despite his exhaustion, he's grinning wildly. You two enjoy your first work experience? I mean, fuck all! <laughs> Oh, absolutely, Mr. Yadikan. I managed to load up both of the memory cards you gave me, and I even managed to try out different kinds of lenses you had brought. Oh, I could have been doing that shit. Good to hear, Ben. What about you, Inko? Well... I yeah. talked to the groom about drive. <laughs> I was seeking assistance. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, I wasn't on my A-game tonight. Well, I suppose it's tough order to start with. So many things to account for, and... 
Ah, no, I meant that I didn't get... I really didn't get that many good shots, Mr. Yetikin. I didn't even finish the first card you'd given me. I see. Well, when we go through these next week, I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> oh, definitely. The groom saunters up with a huge grin on his face, slinging an arm around our teacher's shoulders. I can't wait to see these. Yadikin straightens up and shrugs the arm off, turning to the newly married man. You'll see them when you see them. My team still needs to go through the pictures and weed out the chaff. Oh, come on, T. Can't give your buddy a preview or something? Yadikin sighs a bit. Hey, it's your special day. Ben, could you fetch the laptop and card reader? Yes, sir. Inko, while he's doing that, can you start packing up everything into the trunk? Sure thing, Mr. Yadikin. Before I turn away to start, the... the t <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> tired Tarot makes the, takes the camera from me. That's beautiful. We can sit at that table over there. The two older men head off, leaving Ben and I to get started on packing everything up. While Ben and I are busy dismantling the multitude of standing flashes and lamps, the bride, groom, and Mr. Edikin sits at a cleaned up table with a laptop before them. Can't really make out what they're saying, but I can kind of tell based on the way the three switch between quietly focused and laughing loudly. By the time the back of the car is loaded up, the last of the wedding party has departed. Nothing left to do, Ben and I linger a bit behind the group. Think about it, alright? Hmm? My advice. Olivia does need help. If you're really aiming to ask her out, keep that in mind. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind. Thanks, Ben. No problem. Alright, and we're done. I don't want to keep the missus waiting too long. Not tonight. <sighs> Alright, good night, everyone. He points to me for a moment. Good luck to you, little guy. I'll be seeing you, Mal. The groom saunters off. You two ready to go? I was ready for Anakin to be like, yo, bro, you did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we looked at all those pictures and shoes. Yeah, what I'm pretty the beat. What are you doing? My legs are killing me. Feels like my shins are about to explode. Better get used to that pain, Inko. Plenty more of that to come once we start doing all day events like sports matches or air shows. Any advice you can give me to avoid the pain? Ben taps his chin. Comfy shoes, good soles, plenty of squats to build up your leg strength. Maybe also going out for power walks and jogs to really build muscles. Great. Even when I pick a career choice that doesn't involve physical activity, I still somehow wind up having to exercise in order to be successful. Either way, it's not long before we climb into the car and begin our journey back to the school. I settle into the rhythmic motions of the car as it glides along the road. The cityscape of Volcadera Bluffs passes by, and I can't help but admire it. The mood is quickly killed, however, as Ben calls a certain red-scaled girl. The saccharine lovey-dovey talk makes my head hurt and I can guess by his expression that he had a feels the same way. He changes the subject by asking me if my parents could pick me up. <sighs> Looks like I'll be taking the late night metro home. Still, I had fun today. Do you want to run it back real quick and see what would have happened if we uh, took the alternate route here, or do you just want to keep running this one? Um, yeah, let's check it out real quick. Drop a save there. I can't afford to slack off right now. Besides, I made a promise to the groom, and I don't want to let him down. Or Mr. Yadikin, for that matter. I silence my phone and slide it back in my jacket pocket, pushing off the wall and taking hold of my camera. Where should I even start? I kind of want to do it now that I'm thinking about it. I feel like this is a long-term change, though. Yeah. I think I have a few ideas. With the groom's words still ringing in my ear, I take a second wind of sorts. I find a second wind of sorts. Can't really understand it, but I feel like I'm already picking up prime shots from just scanning over the hall. 
While Bennis continued his more autonomous rapid-fire approach with the staccato clicking of his snapshots, I've been singling out couples in their own moments just scattered throughout. I think some of them have even noticed, seeming to maneuver themselves out of the parasaur's view. Young man over here! Natalie Dano catches my attention, waving me to her table where she and her family are sitting. We need a good Christmas card photo if you'd be so kind. Of course, ma'am. Large group moves to one side of the table for me, smiling sincerely at my lens. The first shot seemed perfect, but for their sake, I make sure to take a couple extra. Thank you. Do you know how long it to take these photos to be developed? The photos should be developed fairly quickly. I'll be sure everyone gets these before the end of the month. I smile and nod, letting me return to... Don't forget us! Yeah, give me and my wife! The next client's pulling me aside to take shots of them in a secluded corner. And after that, some of the bridesmaids have grabbed me to take shots for them. It isn't long before even some of the servers are wanting pictures of themselves posing in front of the decorations. Somehow I'm able to squeeze my way out of the mayhem and make my way towards the back of the venue in order to get some much needed fresh air. Shortly after, I noticed Ben doing the same thing. Though he managed to do so far more gracefully by talking his way out of whatever request the photo goers have for him. Makes me wish I had, was better at communicating and asserting myself in these kinds of situations. Ben takes notice of me and approaches at a very casual pace, with no one else seemingly taking notice of him. Taking a breather? I just give Ben a nod of my head, causing him to smile and adjust his glasses with his index finger. Well, the wedding's almost finished, so the worst of the workload's behind us. That was a good... Ben checks his phone. Eight hours? Jeez. Man, Gee. yeah, my legs are starting to hurt. You're telling me. You don't even have a tail. How do you think I feel? We sigh together. It's the first bit of silence we've had in a while. Across the room, the bride slumps into a chair, trying to kick her heels off. The groom sees me and shrugs a bit, smirking. So, how are you feeling about the pictures you've taken? Hmm? I think I'm pretty confident in mine. Once you have the right equipment, it's just a matter of socializing right and getting the right shots for these sorts of events. I'm satisfied. You? Honestly, I'm not sure. I've been taking all these pictures right, but it's like... Something's missing. Missing? You make it sound like some grand art thing. I know, I know. Back across the room, the bride motions to her new husband. Looks like it's the time of the night for him to carry her out in arms like in all movies. She was probably not expecting those slick moves to position her on his back like a child. He laughs to himself while she pouts loudly and holds onto his hair to keep balance. He looks... juvenile, honestly, as the bride taps at the exhausted groom's head with balled-up fists. But he's laughing. A laugh so infectious that her pout is replaced with delight, delighted giggles of her own when he finally catches her hand in his and just holds it. Once again, they're talking. The bride is melting into putty at his quiet words. For how menial it is, and how crude that guy was earlier, that understanding and general playfulness between them? Without a thought, I'm already looking through the viewfinder and making focusing adjustments, adjustments for the perfect shot. The shot is cheesy, but sincere. They both look beyond exhausted, their clothes showing the wear and tear of the night, and their body language screaming their need for sleep. And also, the smiles they have as they try to look at each other in the awkward positions speak metric volumes of just how happy they are after it all. Why'd you do that? Huh? Do what? You took a picture just now. D did I? When did my finger get placed over the shutter button? I guess I did. I checked the new entry in the camera roll. Careful, that's an easy way to waste a lot of memory. Should probably just delete it. Delete it, huh? I think it'll be fine. I actually got a good feeling about it. it seemed pretty natural, you know? Ben rolls his eyes. If you say so. Ben, do you not appreciate art? What the fuck? Before the parasaur turns back to his assembly line photo taking, I grab his shoulder. By the way, Ben. Hmm. Huh. Mia stopped by our lunch table earlier today to complain to Olivia. Oh boy. Said you were trying to call her, but was upset she wasn't picking up? I don't want to pry into your personal business, but aren't you two on bad terms? Huh? What are you talking about? What? I haven't spoken to Olivia in ages. Huh. I thought you were above gossip, Inko. Sorry, I... 
All right, you boys ready to pack up? Hmm. Pretty long night, huh? Teacher looks haggard as he steps up to us. We need to drag him on the floor. We've seen this. First work experience. Mm. Absolutely, Mr. Haggard. Okay, and then this will be new. Well, if I'm being honest with you, it took a while for me, Mr. Yet, uh, yet again. Well, I suppose it. Uh, we've already done this. Yeah. So many things to account for. Ah, no, I meant that I didn't really get that many good shots at the end, Mr. Yet again. I didn't even finish the first card you gave me. Okay, yeah, so. Let's see here. Yeah, I feel like this is probably gonna be the same now, right? Yeah, I'm just like wondering what the long term of this is. Like, you don't. Nobody knows, because you didn't call anyone. And you didn't tell anyone. I don't know. I think this is new. Thanks again for... Hello. What's this? Laptop displays the last picture I took. Somewhat oh, unintentional. Yeah, this is definitely different. He scans the photo with a critical eye. He nods and chuckles with approval. <laughs> Alright, kid. Good job. Be sure to print this one out for me, Trent. I'm gonna put it in my wallet. Sure, sure. Despite how lackluster his compliment is, I can't help but feel proud of my work. It's been a while since I felt like this. Yeah. Okay, so now this is the same. I bring out my own phone, noticing the half a dozen messages Olivia had sent while I was busy. <laughs> Are you winning yet? Better be. Guts bet me some sunflower seeds that Ben would win. Well, there were more messages. That one in particular had me thinking. I mean, it wasn't a competition to begin with, but... It was also the fact that the groom hadn't complimented any of Ben's shots, so... <laughs> Collect your winnings, Olivia. I won. Gator! <laughs> Good job, Agent. Should have a reward for your hard work. Reward? What kind of... Is it a selfie? What, what's going on? Let's see. Oh my. Why do I feel like I need to cut the screen for a second? Do it. <laughs> it's good. Would what she could it really? Be? Would she really? What? She knows that I'm with Ben and Yad again. The interior of the car feels a few degrees warmer as I wait with bated breath. Blame. What, lame? <laughs> Alright, alright, fuck it! I'm not a pussy! Send it! <laughs> Inko, you okay? You're breathing pretty hard. Fine, perfectly fine. <laughs> Just, uh, carsick. Oh, he's actually breathing awful if someone actually had the comments on. I make sure there's absolutely no way to accept me can view my screen. It's gonna be a rat picture, isn't it? As extra protection, it's be a rat I dim the brightness of it to the point that only I'd be able to see a thing in the darkness of the car. Finally, Olivia's text come through. I hold my breath before opening my eyes to see. Yeah! 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 Big boy! Right. <laughs> Mr. Yadikan, I think Minko's about to vomit. Oh my god, not in here! In hindsight, I should have seen that coming. Seeing as I'm yeah, in love with her, right after all. Damn, we I were just it. all like, Whoa. I'm just waiting for those saucy that that toggle that we we had. Right. So, all right, let's let's reflect. So, in the other route, we get like essentially information that we should just be natural or like try to be natural like there's no there's no like cure all here for my issue uh -huh. the thing that i think is interesting though is that 
in in the one where we asked we talked to ben right he says be cognizant of her disability and everything yeah which honestly we haven't really needed to you know like that no, hasn't been like, an issue and i think that that if, might if anything that's us. why ben is not even friends with her right if he's doing that shit and ben seems like it almost seems like more so that they want like ben wants us to help be friends with her again rather than like help us get together you know yeah if anything this was like probably the better one to go with i yeah I'm, it, it, another thing that jumps out at me in particular is the fact that um in the other route when they're doing the thing with the piggyback we um the piggyback in the other route i think we make a comment saying that's probably not gonna last long but in this one, we saw oh. how naturally together yeah. they were and how loving they were. Oh, and it kind of clicked to us, you know? We instinctually knew that, that that's love right there, you know? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I took Ben's advice more negatively than be cognizant of her condition. Yeah, I think, honestly, this is probably the right call. I think so. I'm glad we went, we went with this one. The yeah. other one felt like okay but now that i'm also thinking about it just kind of like game wise we didn't get a picture right we got a picture here oh no no we got a picture last time it was just a different outcome my bad plus we know that damien doesn't shut his fucking mouth so him knowing that we like Ooh, olivia yeah. would probably come back to bite us in the ass yeah probably seemed more like he was more do it for her own good because you know better than she does that's icky yeah it didn't feel too great uh i'm gonna take just a quick break jeremy i gotta go piss um all okay, right sounds good and we can continue Ooh, I get a pop -tart. yeah if, we're, if we want to take like just a quick uh like five minute break yeah okay. Send it. all right i'll uh, i'll cut us to the brb screen and we'll be back uh shortly
Okay. Also, um, <laughs> I figure let's just this is our week game, but we can't do six hour streams like in the week. Right. <laughs> We're just gonna have to do it like a chapter at a time. All right. So I've got the two saves where the branches are there. So we I know wish you could name them. Uh, yeah, that would be a little nice, but it's not a big deal. Um, so. We were talking just a bit, a bit about it a second ago. We're going to go with um, the one that we're currently on. Just because it gives us some better vibes than the other one. Um, and of course, uh, if we have somehow doomed ourselves to the uh, forever alone ending because we decided to take some fucking pictures, uh, I'm sure Jen will let us know. So. I gotta wonder though, what decisions at what points actually drive you onto certain endings, you know? Like, what are the critical hmm. ones? Because that feels like it might be more of a, um, like a flavor one. Like, you get an idea. Like, you could follow Ben's advice, or you could just follow Damien's advice, right? Where you just yeah. actually keep it going. Just from the mechanic side, Jen was telling me it's a point system. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. not it's not like a timeline. Right. Know? Okay. Then that tracks. That tracks. I, I was yeah. thinking about that too because it feels like there's like different ways you can get more cred with her. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that was the good call, though. Like, again, we also don't want Damien to be like, Hey, Olivia, <laughs> Inko likes you. Do you know that? Crazy, yeah, right? right? That is what? not good. You did the better one in this last chapter. Yeah, c yeah. after check actually taking a look at both of them, it feels better. So, <clears throat> all right, you ready to go? You got your Pop-Tart? Go. I got it. All right, hell yeah. What, what kind of Pop-Tart? We got to throw that out there, too. <laughs> we we went to grocery outlet, uh -huh. um, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it feels like a surplus like store for like Costco or something. Okay. <laughs> so we we bought like a giant ass box with forty eight pop tarts for like ten bucks. Was it forty eight? Was it more? I don't remember. Um, but they're brown sugar cinnamon, just because it was the only one they had. <laughs> Good old brown. It's probably sugar. like the better ones have a ton of though. Like I love strawberry, but it's probably not good. Like. <laughs> For well, my throat. I mean, if it, I had like, let's be honest, all of them are probably not good in some way. Yeah, but I don't know. Brown sugar cinnamon uh, feels mellow. You know, like you can eat eat a lot of them at a time. Sure. Like it's a strawberry, like the tartness and the sweetness would just like kill you. Okay, no, I I fall either. Oh, it was less than ten bucks. Forty eight for eight bucks. Four Damn! Four. What the fuck? That is some value. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> we weren't even gonna like. We were just gonna buy like milk and eggs or something, and we saw that and we're like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> Taking it home. Like I, I'd be a fool not to grab this. Mm -hmm. huh. I'll tell you what. While you got your pop tart, I, I took a huge piss. That felt nice. really free. <laughs> Oh, you've been drinking water. Yeah, I've been drink. I'm like almost down out of this bottle of water, and I had I chugged that. Um, what you call it? Uh, the camera subs beforehand. Oh, that's right. Walked out with like five things when we went for two. That's just how going shopping is, isn't it? I used to wonder how my mom did that back in the day, and now that like I go shopping and everything, especially with Justin, it's like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> Sometimes you just see something, you're like, oh, wait a minute, that could be cool. You fucking need that shit. Ugh. All right. <sighs> Even though we're pretty far into the fall season, today's a nice day out. There's a storm coming later today with a cold front, so the temperatures outside are bearable enough to relax in. One last respite before the unforgiving cold of the winter settles in. Dude, are we gonna have a moment where we get to warm up her? W give her our body heat? Oh no. Oh. Give her our yes. jacket? Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, yes! I, I don't want to see us without a jacket. I'm willing to do what it takes. Remember when uh, we tried to like uh, take off our jacket or whatever and she was like, no, <laughs> keep that shit on. <laughs> he did say that. Oh my God. Uh, I want to do the reason. There's actually nothing under the jacket. It's a void. <laughs> it's missing textures. <laughs> <laughs> you got the magenta black combo going in there. What's going on over there? I don't worry, I was born like this. You didn't download Counter Strike. <laughs> Source. That was the goofiest shit ever, man. Like, could have been using this. 
I'm yeah, pretty sure that's the only reason I had Counter Strike in the first place. Was oh yeah, we were playing Gary's mod. S fucking same. Yeah, make make use of Jeremy's emos. They're allowed here. Hell yeah. <clears throat> I decided to celebrate by eating lunch outside. After a good bit of prodding, Olivia joined me. Oh, it's too cold. Freeze my veins solid. It's 70 degrees and you already agreed. Calm down. We step out into the chill there. She pulls the drawstrings on her hoodie taut, yanking it shut again. Hell yeah. When I, try, when I try moving her along, she starts dragging her tail on the ground. <laughs> You're secretly enjoying this, aren't you? That hoodie isn't hiding your silly little grin. There's a table by the edge of the yard that looks pretty good. Now it's just the two of us. Alone. Sitting at a picnic table in complete silence. Ingenious one-liners flow through my head like slam poetry champion. Yet I can't work up the will to say anything about the wedding to her. Guess there's always later. <clears throat> so, Olivia. The gator lifts her head from her roast beef sandwich, staring directly at me. What's up? How about this weather? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. I'm not used to coastal towns, so this is a nice change of pace. Well, it's pretty chilly. Part of why we're the only ones out here. It is pretty empty out here today. Maybe it's like a human dino thing. More acclimated to snow. Even with the hoodie, it's a lot colder than I'd like. Oh, why'd you agree to come outside with me? Well, you wanted to, and I... And you... Olivia's lips quiver a little as she tries to work out words to say. Her mouth isn't up to the task, as a flush of scarlet spreads across her cheeks and makes her pouting lips glow. Hey! Stop looking at me like that! I mean, where are you from, then? The Midwest. The Midwest? Only loons come from the Midwest. Oh, come on, that is not true. Alright, what was it like, then? Uh, a lot of empty promises. Nothing worth talking about. What was St. Hamon like before I showed up? Oh, horrible. Everybody here sucked. Well, they still do, I guess. But seriously, most of the faculty had a stick up their ass, and the student body was holding on for dear life. Do anything to get out of this place. If I gotta take you and Damien with me, dude, we're so in. <laughs> <laughs> Can Wisconsin be called a coastal place? Looks at Jeremy. What? <laughs> Can Wisconsin be called a coastal place? I, I'm pretty sure the answer is no. <laughs> okay, dude, I, you have to understand. Geography is not my strong point. I don't even know. If, fucking Wisconsin is. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a landlocked situation. Eh, then that's not coastal. <laughs> wow. Colorful. Okay, who's that? Olivia and I freeze at the familiar voice. Oh. It's familiar. Oh, shit. The sound of stone grinding on stone echoes throughout the courtyard as we turn our heads to whoever said that. Principal Scaler stands just as still as us, her face burning red. Though her jaws moving, teeth grinding exceptionally loud as she looks at Olivia. Okay, I was about to say, oh, wait, are they dating? And I was like, wait a minute, no, it's probably just he's coming here for the audit or whatever, right? It's on business. And that's why she's, like, frustrated. <laughs> Next to her stands a large whale dressed in formal attire. I guess Mr. Ferris is still doing that inspection. And did he hear... What were you saying just now about student morale, Princess, uh, Prince, Princess, Principal Scaler? <laughs> he doesn't even look up from his clipboard as he begins jotting down something with a pencil. <laughs> Why is he so nitpicky? What kind of <laughs> audit is this? Well, if you if you're walking through the school and you're trying to get an idea of how the school's doing, and someone says, "Oh, the school fucking sucks," out loud, you're gonna be like. Okay, might want to jot that down. <laughs> Bring that up later. <laughs> I said had. Ever since Principal Scaler took over as our principal, things have gotten better. 
Olivia's words do little to make Scaler's face lessen in both color and intensity. Color, intensity, and heat. Y yeah, I have to say, this school's way better than my old one by at least a country mile. So, Mr. Inko, would you say that your time in St. Martin, since your transfer, has been both fruitful and comfortable? I mean, compared to my old school, I've met good friends, I've had excellent teachers and classes, and I've had an all-around good time. Also, the cafeteria food here is great. Actually, it tastes like food and not microwave reheated gruel. Ferris gives me a nod and writes something else on his notepad before turning to face Olivia. What about you, Miss Olivia Halford, was it? Got any more comments regarding St. Amon? Do be honest, if you please. Any more sticks? <laughs> Scalar glares at her. <laughs> Olivia shoots me a quick glance before taking a deep breath. Well, the school needs more handicap access ramps. Also, the elevator in the main building is busted. Sometimes I get stuck for a few minutes. Also, also, <laughs> our PE teacher steals hats from the students and hoards them in the equipment shed. I can almost feel the heat <laughs> emanating from Principal Scaler's face as soon as Olivia finishes lodging her complaints. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Wouldn't want to be around her after Ferris's visit is over. For his part, Mr. Ferris only nods and writes more down on his clipboard before turning back to face Scaler, who does her best to turn her grimace into some kind of smile. Seems like there are some issues left over from the previous administration. Are you already taking care of the correcting the issues Ms. Halford has pointed out? Principal Scaler nervously clears her throat. Dude, I have a f <laughs> everybody on this screen I'm voicing right now. This is fucked. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for you. I I've already sent in a request to the district to have the elevator looked at by a technician. Mr. Ferris nods and writes something else on his clipboard before clicking his pen and stuffing it in his front suit pocket. I'll have to talk to the superintendent about the request next time I'm at this office. What about this PE teacher Miss Olivia mentions? Oh, Mr. Coach Solly. Ferris raises an eyebrow. It's his legal name, it... I know. He checks the page, then sighs a bit. Right. Ferris turns to face me. Well, that's enough about St. Amon for the time being. Mr. Inko, how would you say things are going for you? Not just as a student, but also as a growing adult. That school's really helped me learn a lot, sir. I respect the efforts of the student and faculty alike for their efforts in making me feel welcome. It's much more refined than my old school, at least. <laughs> wow. You might as well ask him for a letter of recommendation already. Huh? That's not what I was doing, Olivia. Olivia doesn't even respond to me. It said laughing quietly to herself. I'll keep that in mind. The Leviathan finishes jotting down something on his clipboard, finally turning to Principal Scaler. I think I have everything I need for the time being. So, Mr. Ferris, why don't we adjourn to the, the faculty lounge? Of course, we can go over your future budgetary plans over a nice cup of coffee. The inspector turns away, Principal Scaler lagging behind him with a look of pure misery on her face. I wish he'd done this freshman year. With a huff and frown, Olivia stabs at her lunch tray, treating her uh, Caesar salad like a voodoo doll. Well, look on the bright side. She levels her silver eyes on me, but remains focused on treating her salad like its namesake. Caesar! <laughs> Caesar! I forgot you gave her an accent. Well, I mean, like, at a certain point, I can't keep pitching my voice. I gotta start doing something. I'd say pitching my voice in quotation marks. <clears throat> it's senior year. We're about halfway through. So we only have to put up with this place for a couple more months. She lances the largest piece of chicken, twisting her spork roughly. And? Then what? Then what? I guess, uh... Huh. I don't really have any concrete plans after school. What do you mean? You mentioned all that stuff about making a name for yourself. I mean, yeah, when I first got here, that was the goal. But honestly, I haven't considered what I was going to do to get there. It's my turn to toy with my meal. You? I plan on getting an art degree. Whoa, really? Online, of course. Oh, not like I have any other options. The only time I'm worth anything is when there's a brush in my hand. Only classes I'm really passing, too. 
I nod my head in understanding, but... She's talking about her future. But it sounds more like resignation than a declaration. I at least have something, even if the path to my goal is vague. The morose mood leaves me at a loss for words. Damn it. I was hoping to actually use this time to... I don't know. I wanted to talk to Olivia and, uh... Ask her something. <clears throat> or something like that. Super Mr. Ferguson's workplace politics dampening the mood. Fetters, why? <laughs> there between us is awkward as we pick out our lunch. And even after the bell rings and we're forced to finish eating, it's still weird. Even when I ask if Olivia would like to push to history like a push to history, she just remains silent in thought. Olivia's been quiet for about five minutes now. Even though five minutes isn't that long a time. Livia had grown so much chattier as of late, so the silence felt just a bit off-putting to me. Part of me couldn't help but wonder if it's the cold shoulder directed at me, or just remaining nerves from that last conversation. No use just thinking about it. <clears throat> so, Penny, for your thoughts, Olivia. Hmm. Oh, right. Sorry, guess I'm not here right now. What were you thinking about, exactly? Olivia lets out a sigh and turns her head upwards so that her eyes meet mine. I really got to thinking about what we were talking about earlier. Now it seems like neither one of us knows what we'll be exactly doing after school's over. Oh, right. Yeah, that. I hadn't really given much thought to the fact that I had essentially dropped a bombshell on both of us. Not that I really stopped to think about it, though. The idea that neither one of us really knows what to do after graduation is concerning. Most seniors, at least, have a small idea of what they'll do after graduation. At least, I think. Hell, Liz had made a full chart and timeline for herself. I mean, I always figured I'd go to college, but that feels so... basic, for lack of a better word. There should be some kind of grander plan on what to do with the next big step in life. University, a career, maybe even starting some kind of family. Those are the kind of plans that come to mind. Look, brother. It's perfectly fine to just ride it out. <laughs> just let the wind take you. You don't need that right away, man. It's okay. They're all just simple platitudes at the end of the day, though. Is it even worth making plans? The more I think about it, the more likely it is that something stupid just comes out of left field and wrecks everything. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans and all. So maybe all I can really do, then, is live in the moment? I always hated that sort of thinking. Just be a sitting duck for life to take pot shots at me? Just live pretending death can't show up and take me at any time? Eh, speak of the devil. <laughs> oh. Hey, it's Olivia. Mmm. And friend. Olivia stiffens in her chair. No. Oh. Hey, Mia. Olivia's words are a hiss as she tries to face away from the crimson-scaled girl. Her hands shakily strain against the wheels of her chair, slowly turning it too. Got a couple of questions to ask you, Olivia. Would you like to humor me for a bit? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you don't mind. The parasaur saunters up and with the sway of her hip pushes me aside as she takes Olivia's reins oh. from me. What the hell? You're insane if you think we're going to go with you anywhere. We. Oh, she's gonna run. She looks down to Olivia and back to me. <laughs> we. He's funny. We're just going for a little girl talk. No boys allowed. Sorry. You're up for that, right, Liv? She puts a hand on her shoulder and cocks an eyebrow back at me like she knows something. So yeah, we'll just be a moment. Don't worry that pretty little head of yours. I'm left gawking and confused as the two head off in another direction. Livia doesn't seem to know what to say or do either, so she just goes along with the parasaur wheeling her away. Part of me wants to give chase, but the side eye that Mia sends back at me forces me to stop. I feel useless as I watch the two turn the corner. Thoughts of what I want to do going after the pair are betrayed by my body still frozen by the icy glare from Mia. Damn it. I'll just get to class and ask what this was about later. 
By the time I get to Procklin's history class, I'm half expecting to find Olivia already waiting for me. Some kind of remark primed and ready to be spoken to me. But instead, she isn't there. I reluctantly take my seat, tapping my foot impatiently. Even when the bell comes and goes, there's still no sign of her. Shit. Shouldn't have let Olivia go there alone. The hell was I thinking? I really don't want to cut class, but I can't afford anything bad happening to her. Nope. I can't sit and do nothing. I shoot my hand up in the air, causing Miss Prockling to pause mid-lecture. Yes, Mr. Nito. Uh, Miss Prockling, can I please be excused? Why? Class barely started a few mo minutes ago. Because I... Shat myself. I'm halfway out the door already. That's what he went with. What's she gonna do? Chase shit pants? No, she's not. It works. Where'd they go? There's not a soul to be found anywhere. Nico, you or Inko, you dipshit. He's something shit, that's for sure. <clears throat> if I were a bitch, where would I harass somebody in secret? Shoot, whatever's between them. I hope it's not turning physical. I mean, she wouldn't. Would she? My hands clench tighter and tighter as I focus on walking faster. Finally, something snaps me out of my trance. <laughs> my hands clench tighter and tighter. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Faint sound of squeaking metal. Hey, I'm not the one shitting. I'm not the one pooping myself right now. I went for a fart, Miss Prockling, and it went bad. You have to understand how it goes. I've heard that sound it's before. Gamble, Miss Brocklin. Uh. I turn towards the source, just beyond the door of a nearby classroom. Judging by the paraphernalia covering the door, I think it's the algebra room. I grab the handle and haphazardly throw the door open, praying that I'm not about to really interrupt the teacher for the second time today. Looks like shit, how am I? Should be happy it's done. Threads turn to me in a mix of anger and surprise. And they're the heads of the girls I was looking for. Feels like a sudden three-way standoff. I was definitely not intending... Was def I was definitely not intended to be a factor in whatever this is. Looks like shit, how am I? Should be happy it's done. Wonder... Do you think she's, like, helping Mia out with something right now? Probably. I really should have thought about that before barging in. Thank Raptor Jesus she's okay. <clears throat> what, what the what fuck are you, are you doing, doing here? here? I should ask you two the same question. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my... Look, Baldy, now is not the time. Don't talk to him like that. Yeah, or what? I told you not to be followed. You were there when he left. He just heard you screaming like a maniac. I've been forgotten already. Hey! Why are you two in an empty classroom yelling at each other? The two fall deafeningly silent, unwilling or unable to speak. I notice a peep pa peep pa peep pa peep pa peep pa peep pa pa a piece of paper in Mia's hand. It looks like something's drawn on it. The style is different, but it's unmistakably one of Olivia's works. Mia, why do you have her drawing? The parasaur stops blinking for a few seconds before shoving the paper in her jacket. Before I can question any further, Olivia speaks up. Inko, why did you come here? You seemed like you were in trouble? How touching. Well, we're all in trouble now. Did me barging in get like a teacher's attention? We? Uh, yeah, dumbass. I don't have time for this. Hot Wheels fill him in. What's the big issue? Hmm. Leave your closet, her arm rests again. She looks ready to cry. Hey, where all your vicious bravado go? Are you afraid to tell him? Afraid of what he'll think? Sh shut up! Precious, 
Fine, I'll say it. Mia turns to me with a malicious grin. I know about what this prick did during the yearbook art contest. Oh. Now ordinarily, I wouldn't give two shits. But then it hit me. Holy shit, she could just get away with it? Now how crazy is that? She pauses me, goading me to say otherwise. But I bite my tongue. Like a shark smelling blood, she starts to circle me, continuing her taunts. And one thing leads to another, and now we're helping each other out. After all, if the school found out, it'd leave a permanent mark on her unemployable ass. What? Yours too, probably, since you're involved and all. My teeth creep painfully from my clenched jaw, and yet the blood drained from my face. I'm talking about her record, <laughs> you mouth breather. Art's her big break, right? Dipping the whole, uh, rigmarole? <laughs> the yeah, gist rigmarole. of it's simple. So Olivia draws up some BS group projects for me and some friends of mine, turns them in, and I make sure the whole incident goes away. I managed to turn back some of, my f uh, some of the feeling in my consciousness. Just long enough to defy her. But that's blackmail and cheating. That's wrong. <sighs> Inko. Just a fucking wealth of morality, Inko. huh? Oh my god, that's fucking precious. Mia blinks a few times before turning to look at Olivia, then back to me, and then back to Olivia. What, are you disappointed in her now? I bet you made her pinky swear she would never do anything like that again. She leans closer to me, faux whispering. Well, sorry to break the news, Inko, but your friend here is a liar. Don't listen. I wouldn't be... She was threatening me. Threatening? Honey, if we were swapped, you'd see my ass hang. All I'm doing is making things better for the both of us. Not my fault you tried to get away with cheating. You think a cripple like you would have more shame than that? I watch Olivia's eyes start twitching. He's really starting to get to her. Can't let her keep talking to her like that. Mia, yeah, just stop it, okay? She really doesn't need this right now. Can't you both just walk away and pretend this never happened? Shit, Inko, you're good. You hear that, Olivia? Oh, yeah, I was supposed to read that. Whoopsies. Read that in my mind. Wait, but I didn't mean... Olivia's staring at me with a look of betrayal that threatens to tear my heart in two. We didn't have to choose this, Olivia. Please, it wasn't us. God damn it. Why can't I stop talking for once? Mia waves me off, turning to face her target once more. I bet you'd love to walk away from this, but things just don't work out that way, do they? Oh, that's why you didn't want Inko knowing you're still a dirty cheetah. Shut up! Wait, my goldfish brain forgot. What did you say? Oh, it's, he's just being stupid. Right. He's like, that's blackmail, that's cheating, <laughs> this is wrong. And then said, look, can we just forget about this? Yeah. We'd have a choice, though. Oh, relax, it's not a big deal. No, I'm sick of it. You already admitted it. Art's my big break. You're only doing this because art is all I have. Your record is fucked. You lose nothing if we get caught. It's Tuesday for you. But me, it's all I have. You're embarrassing yourself. I can't lift or run or carry or dance or fucking anything you do on a daily basis without even thinking about. I can't ever do anything else because of these fucking legs and this fucking chair. Why can't any of you just leave me alone? I just want to draw for God's sake. Mia rolls her eyes and takes a step closer to Olivia. It's a nice outburst and all, sweetie. I really thought you were smarter than this. Yo, I'm just gonna go snitch on you to Ben, and he's gonna dump your ass. So like, GG? Question mark? <laughs> Inko, take that camera out! Come on! Olivia wipes away, uh, wipes away at her eyes with her sleeve. What? 
He takes another step forward. Think. Handbag? Oh, fuck. Would I really go through the trouble of making you this junk for middling grades? If your work were crap, you wouldn't have a record to hold over you. Everyone knows you're the best artist in this place. <laughs> you're just a about it. Olivia's mouth hangs open, but no words come out. You're the kind of idiot to let this sort of comment get to you. So let me be the first to say. Congratulations, Olivia. You have a fan. Anyways, Inko. Oh, crap. Distractions aside, you're in on it now, too. You wouldn't want Olivia to starve now, would you? Her words, not mine. Say a damn word about any of this, and she's doomed. Do you understand me? I try to muster up words oh, no. of defiance, but just past me is the stare of death. I spot Olivia's horrified expression. Hello, Baldy. I'm, I'm waiting for your answer, Skinny. I honestly don't know what to say or do in this situation. No. Excuse me? Uh, let me think this over with Olivia. Think this over? You dense or something? This is a simple yes or no question. You can't seriously frickin'. Mia pinches the bridge of her snoot and lets out a tired sigh. Fine. The two of you's better talk it over and reach some kind of resolution. But that don't change the fact of what I said earlier, Inko. Don't say I didn't do nothing nice. But think carefully, amigo. You both got a hell of a lot more to lose than I do. He only gives me and Olivia one final glance before unceremoniously leaving the room. It takes me a bit to recover my thoughts. Never thought Mia would go this far. Olivia right now, she must be... I stand up from the floor, slowly approaching the alligator. She looks like a mess. Why... Why did you have to come in here? I, I'm sorry, I'm just... So worried about what Mia could have been doing to you, and I wanted to make sure you were all right. Olivia grips her armrests. I was all right. I had it handled with Mia. But to basically be her slave, doing all her work—not all of it, just whenever she needs to pass. I'll take the seat next to her there. She threatened me that she'd go to Scaler and spill everything, and if Scaler knew that I swapped the art, she'd know that it was with you. So how did she figure that out, though? Yeah, I have no clue. I couldn't let her do that to us, so... I wonder if somebody fibbed. Maybe. I got desperate. Told her I'd do anything she wanted. That's how I got mixed up with her. I let out a deep and heavy sigh. Olivia. I can understand why, but... I heard how Mia was treating you before I came in. Even when you're doing her work to save her skin, she's still treating your art. More importantly, you like garbage. Her words ripped through the gator's the gator girl's fragile heart, her face contorting into a fierce snarl even as her eyes grow wet. You're miserable. You know that. Olivia looks away from me, her face scrunching up as tears well in her eyes. I just I don't know what to do. I don't even know I can trust her to keep her word. Now that you know what's going on, me has a noose around both our necks. The gravity situation settles in. I feel like something in me is both frozen over and ablaze. There's only six months left in the semester. It's not like she's asking for something impossible. Her eyes regain some fire as she smiles. I'll just have to tough it out. Keep making her shut her up, this whole stupid thing can blow over. She's been going through this for so long and she's still... It's just... I'm out of options, so is she. I just pour out the first thing that comes to my mind. Uh-oh, Jeremy. <laughs> this is probably not gonna be good, is it? No, no, he won't say anything good. Why not tell Scalar about what Mia's making you do? Scalar, are you out of your mind? You saw how she handles things around here, especially with that auditor breathing down her neck. 
I'm trying to avoid getting caught. Right. Okay, okay. Yadikin? For a split second, I see her mask crack. Her real worry evident, those silver eyes shaking. N no. Olivia makes a show of clearing her throat. Mr. Yadikin doesn't need to hear this, either. You know he'd be able to- I can do this on my own! Her balled up fists quake wildly after they slam onto her armrests, and the Gator Girl does her best to hide her wince. I really don't think we can fix this if we're not working together. There's nothing to fix! I told you, I have it under control! Just please, Inko, I need you to trust me on this! Don't ruin this for me! I do trust you! voice is softening, as if she's been fully drained now. I can handle it. I told you. Her fists unfurl and continue shaking. I take one of her hands. Ignoring her indignant sputters as I delicately cradle it in my palm. Her protests die down into a pained whine when my thumb ever so slight presses down on a joint. All this time you've been doing your best, Olivia. My soft words draw an even softer breath from her. He has had me drawing for a group almost daily. Must hurt a lot after so long. Maybe it does. But it's nothing I can't work through. Why can't you trust me to help then? It's not that I don't trust you, Ingo. It's that I did trust everyone else. So please stop asking about fixing me. Or fixing things, I mean. Is that what this is about? Olivia's burning out at this point. She's already hurt badly. I can feel her hand still shaking. It's beyond the point that either of us alone can handle. I let go of Olivia's hand, watching as she takes back her hand and settles it against her chest. I hook a nearby chair leg with my foot and drag it the seat closer. Close enough that I can sit down right next to the baryonics. Inko? I find that being next to her like this makes it easier for what I'm about to say. Is this the confession? Breathe in, breathe out. Uh. Meeting her eyes once again, I speak my honest thoughts. Okay. Mr. No. Yadikin can help Olivia. Her teeth grind together as though contemplating mauling my face off. Please, hear me out. I, I want to trust you, Inko, but... I'm just scared that Yedekin will hate me forever for this. He's the only one that's ever made me feel like my art is worth something. I can't lose him. Look. We can get you out of this. Of course Yedekin will understand. Even go to bat for you. And if you're the one to speak up, it means you're the one getting back at Mia. She won't have power over you. I... I can't just give it all up like this. How can I trust you with my entire future? You have nothing to lose. I have everything. Can you trust the Etikin? Will he really just let that happen? Mia has no reason to not throw you under the bus. Does he? Of course not. Mr. Etikin is... He's the only teacher that's never given up on me. But I'm here with you too. You're not alone, Olivia. But you need to accept our help. You gotta show the thumbnail of one of the saves for Obama. We'll get to that in a minute. We're 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 at a we're at a critical moment here. I don't want to splice it up with something. <clears throat> Please. Olivia looks me in the eyes for a few seconds before sharply snapping her face downward. Her body then begins to quiver, almost as if she if she trembles with a mixture of cold and fear. Olivia. I get up from my chair and reach out to grasp her shoulder to try and comfort her somewhat. It's okay. I'm here for you. Olivia's shaking lessons, giving me hope that my words are starting to reach her. But not two seconds after those thoughts cross my mind, Olivia's shaking resumes once again. The shaking is followed by sniffling, at which point I notice tears rolling down Olivia's snout and falling right into her lap. Olive Before I can finish my words, Olivia lunges forward and wraps her arms around my abdomen, bringing me forward and burying her face into my stomach. At which point she begins to let out what I can only describe as a pain-filled wail. At first, I'm left utterly frozen in place, hands raised and eyes wide. Nothing in my life has ever prepared me for a situation like this. No, Inko, you know what to do. 
Place my other hand on Olivia's other shoulder and slowly take a single knee, bringing me to eye level with her. We hug the gator. The hug the gator. We gotta save. We gotta save the hug. Bang. Then, without saying a word, I tighten my embrace, allowing her arms to wrap around my neck as I wrap my arms around hers. My waist is pulled closer too, by her boa-like tail that's become an impromptu belt harnessing me to the gator girl. There's a distinct thumping in my, on my chest, rhythmic and relaxing. The realization that it's her heart sets my face ablaze, but also brings a smile to my lips. I close my eyes and let myself become lost in the warmth of Olivia's embrace. When we break apart, I check on our time limit. Phone says there's still 20 minutes before school's out. Hopefully Edikan has a free period right now. You ready? Olivia gives a small nod. I get up and start toward the door. The door held open with the back of my shoe. I look back to her. As Olivia wo uh, wheels over, she grunts with each push. Oh, crap, I'm an idiot. Once she reaches me, Olivia gives me a very meaningful look. Though I don't really get its intent till her tail wraps itself around my waist. Oh, right. Taking Olivia's reins for her, we start forwards. We start towards our art teacher's room in companionable silence. All right, we can take a look at the thumbnail stuff now. So we've got we've got this this fucking banger. We've got in the rain, in the car, in the car again after we get the the cursed beast. Um, tripping out on fucking lean. Being held gently as we're sick, and uh, now crying hug. Man, I know we had detours in the first session, but holy shit! Like, was it just a lot of exposition in the first five hours? Yeah. Well, we had to get everything established, right? Yeah, we got. I guess we had to get the characters and the, you know our intentions. I don't know, whatever. But now we're getting the pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. Taking Olivia's reins for her, we start towards our art teacher's room in companionable silence. Yeah, I've said that. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to just go home and relax. Maybe open a bag of chips. Olivia's tremoring has fallen to a two on a Richter scale, so that's nice. She seems enough. She's, she's seen enough Mia to last a while. Then again, so have I. She'd probably kill us if she saw us sneaking off. We're near the end of the hall. It's nearly over. It's the first bit of quiet that we get, just the sounds of Olivia and I walking through the halls. Olivia's gripping my wrist pretty hard. I guess she's still pretty tense. Please don't break my wrist, Olivia. There's a lot of strength in that tail, and I really like my hand. Say, maybe there's a massage place around here. That'd be pretty, rice, pretty nice right about now. Wait a second. Just the sounds of Olivia and I walking through the halls? Something ancient awakens in me and an icy chill races down my spine, as if there's a knife poised just behind my bed, my neck. The gator girl tenses, head stiffly turning. Her pupils slowly shift to mine, and their contraction to pinpoints bring attention to the danger my ancestral instincts are warning me of. It's me, isn't it? Uh oh. What's up? You two trying to run a fight or flight reflexes kick in zero Run. thought on my end my body chose to just book it yo we get full animation book it and go we gotta fucking go it's okay she's aquatic And now we're stuck in the elevator. <laughs> For a moment, I wonder... She... Go ahead. I was like, she can just press the button. Opens the fucking door. No, 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 no. <laughs> we're pushing the close button. <laughs> it counteracts. <laughs> For a moment, I wonder if the deafening noise of the metal doors being hit is from Mia punching it in rage, or accidentally slamming into it, chasing after us. When I catch you, I'll eviscerate you and every last thing you love. <laughs> Did you want to yell the fuck? 
Fuck! There we go. <laughs> oh, I see. The elevator finally begins its descent downwards. I exhale deeply. Olivia gasps for breath. My arm stings from Olivia's razored grip. Good thing I have a jacket. Her claws have shredded the sleeve. I think it may have even drawn blood. Shake my arm a bit, and Olivia retracts her hands apologetically. Sorry. Sorry. Oh god. Are you okay? No. No, I'm not. What happens when we reach the bottom? Mia will be wait er <clears throat> Mia will be waiting for us. Olivia removes the key from its slot. It won't open. Just don't make any noise. The elevator reaches the bottom. Just as Olivia said, without the key, the outmoded chamber simply powers down. Silence. There's a small gap under the door letting light in. There's nobody there. We sit in the dark, empty cabin for what feels like minutes. I'm pressed close to Olivia while we wait it out. I can feel her tail wrap around my ankle, which thankfully won't rip my clothing apart. The phrase, seven minutes in heaven, surfaces in mine and is buried immediately. It's a bit warm in here. Shh! Heavy, rapid footsteps zone in on us, accompanied by the sound of ripping paper. Me is destroying everything on the walls. You fuckers had better still be in there. If you cowards run away, then so help me, raptor Jesus. She's right in front of the door. I hear her heavy breathing and soft thuds as she attempts to pull, to put her ear to the door a few times. I try to stay as silent as possible, but I'm afraid that the homicidal parasaur can hear my heart hammering in my chest in pants crabbing horror. Mia, with no intention to vent her frustrations verbally, resorts to the next best thing. Physical therapy. Now he shat himself. Correct. <laughs> now, now we have the pants to prove it to the teach. We're surrounded by the sounds of ripping paper, dented lockers, and drywall fracturing. On occasion, something hits the elevator door again. Livia and I don't dare move. I hear other voices. Mia's drawing attention to herself. Who the fuck are you looking at? Do you want one less horn? Find someone quick. I fucking swear I had it with that fucking luggage case on whales. Good luck painting when you're eating through a straw. <laughs> Bitch legs, crocodile. <laughs> Jesus. Color. Oh, did she just get tased? Wait, go back. <laughs> Wait, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> She just got hit with the motherfucking taser, bruh. Olivia <laughs> takes a sharp breath. Silence. What was that sound? It sounds like a series of sharp cracks. <laughs> the fuck took her out? Hey, whoa, hey, hey, it's all cool. <laughs> Is that what it looks like? It's, uh... Rapid footsteps echo down from down the hall. She gone? The fuck could have scared Mia like that? There's a light knock on the elevator door. Hey, anyone in there? He sounds exhausted, but it's definitely it again. Oh. Hey, g good thing you were the one to talk. <laughs> <laughs> By now, my eyes have adjusted to the light. Olivia's relief is palpable and shared, my body finally relaxing and practically melting against the wall of the tiny elevator. We're gonna have to tell you how to can. <laughs> safe to come out it's all clear i had a fucking taser it looks like a stick of dynamite went off out here but otherwise it's fine look at olivia who stares at the key in her hand she moves to unlock the elevator but hesitates i think her teacher is able to sense it since his tired voice carries the weight of his worry everything will be okay i promise she doesn't put it in she just stares you don't know that Olivia whispers softly. I can barely make it out. God, please. Putting that key in and opening up means telling Iadakin everything. There's no way Mia's letting this slide. Nothing's a safe bet. Nothing can be said for sure. She can't do anything. She can't do anything. She can't do nothing, and she can't do 
anything either. So she looks to me, as if I'd have the answer. The key is offered to me, delicately held between two of her claws. What happens? Like, I don't know what we'll do with the key, but... Hmm. It's interesting. Let me know if you want a hint. Well, okay, like, if we think about this for a second, right? Obviously, taking the key, we open it up and we help. We help Olivia, right? Mm hmm But this feels more like this is something she needs to do, right? Don't take the key. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards don't take the key. What do you think? Uh, I would I want to try don't take the key. All right, we'll go with don't take the key. My hands cup hers, eliciting a small gasp from the girl. Even with the darkened lenses of my shades, I can make out her moon-silver eyes filled with all the worries of this past month. Where she endured because of our friendship. And possibly more. And go. My fingers curl softly, pushing the key back into her palm. My lips move, but no sound comes out. He'll understand, Olivia. I can't tell who's the one thinking that. That's you. That's you silently oh, mouthing okay. that. Either from my unspoken words or my comforting grip, Olivia is able to gather her courage. We share a simple nod, and her hand finally moves to the panel. With the key inserted and twisted, the dark room shudders briefly before the metal door finally starts to slide open. We're greeted by the sight of our teacher, looking very haggard, his brow slick with sweat, and holding some strange black rod. It's a cattle prod! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Olivia reels back at the sight of the odd baton. Thanks for saving us, Mr. Hedekin. Don't thank me just yet. I'm gonna need an explanation for all of this. So is Principal Scaler, for that matter. He steps aside and motions us out of the elevator with a wave of the broad stick. Come along now. Give the janitor some time to take care of this mess. Holy shit. Looks like Mia tried to destroy everything within her reach in the hallway. On the ceiling, a pipe is leaking water intended for fountains and toilets. A group of dinos in overalls around the corner, looking absolutely pissed. Our teacher waves at, uh, waves at them and begins escorting us to his room. All the adrenaline is faded now and I can feel the acute pain in my arm. Olivia's hand reaches back behind her head to the arm that she, uh, she had grabbed and her fingers delicately loop around the spot. She looks back, her mouth shut tight, but her sympathetic eyes telling me she's sorry. I nod back with a comforting smile. Sure, it hurt, but I knew she didn't mean it. We look forward again, to the door of Iadakin's classroom. Olivia sighed and resigned herself to explaining everything to our teacher. Olivia looked ready to collapse. She had taken the better part of an hour explaining Mia's extortion in full detail to Mr. Iadakin. I grab Olivia's canteen and hand it to her. She greedily chugs the entire thing, gasping after and rubbing her sore throat. It was hard to get a read on what our teacher was thinking. His brow was furrowed, his fingertips steepled, or his fingers steepled, and he was muttering to himself. Finally, with a deep sigh, he stands from his desk and looks at the exhausted girl. I had a feeling something was going on, but to this extent, you should have come forward sooner. I know, but we're here now, aren't we? Fair point. Still, I'm concerned that you thought nobody would notice. I didn't think anybody would care to look. Those assignments go through dozens of eyes, you know. What do you mean? Your style, Olivia. I saw it from a mile away and I was just waiting for you to talk to me. You knew? Why didn't you say anything? I wanted it to come from you. Don't worry, I'm not gonna lecture you. Raptor Jesus knows you've had enough of that already. I'm 
glad you two are okay. Yeah, I thought she was actually going to kill us. Mr. Yadikin shakes his head before he smiles softly at us. Have some faith in the faculty here. We do our best for you. With what we have on Mia now, we can justify watching her like a hawk from here on. Anybody else she was harassing ought to thank you. Are you sure she's actually going to get in trouble for this? At this point, we'd look bad if we didn't punish Mia for this kind of behavior. Yeah, true. She, like, fucking hulked down hallways, <laughs> destroying I'm everything. I'm gonna fucking kill you! You're gonna die! You know that? If I remember correctly, she said something along the lines of have fun trying to paint when you have to drink through a straw. Yeah. That's a relief. Come on, you two hunker here until school clears out. You sure? You're gonna stay after, like always anyways, right? Yeah. The <laughs> loud noise makes me the stumble fuck? to the floor. Mr. He- <laughs> Mr. Yadikin! Whoops. Yadikin looks at the device in his hand. Is that a taser? With a piece of tape on it with something written on it. Estrus protocol? Anyway, I'm going to run and get some things done. What does that mean? They're going to want my account on paper pretty soon. May as well knock it out of the way. Did you just fucking tase him? It kind of felt like it. <laughs> it felt like it. I feel like we just freaked out because we don't like the noise for some reason. Maybe. With no care at all, Mr. Yadikin chuckles, uh, chucks the electric weapon onto his desk before turning to his doorway. Well, we have a weapon just in case something happens. Don't burn the place down, alright? Alone, I go sit near the back of the classroom. Looking out the window, I find a let a huge sigh I'd been holding in. Livia rolls over to join me, and surprisingly, she's smiling. You were right, Inko. Hmm? I could trust him. We sit in silence, just looking out the window. When school's let out, we watch the crowd of students going home. I don't see me in the crowd, but... <laughs> that doesn't matter. I think, despite it all, Olivia's life is going to be just a bit easier after today. While students trick out of the school, Olivia took a chance to unwind. Figured it'd be best to let her rest. Saw her drooping eyelids finally shut. She looked cute. Just lapping idly in her wheelchair. Except for the weird bellowing. It was like a snore. Except I could feel it vibrating through the floor. With the clouds hiding the sun and the classroom lights turned off, I could do with some shut eye too. But I can't bring my eyes closed. Instead, I look out the window. A layer of clouds overhead steadily grows more dense, casting a darker shade on everything. Light raindrops prick against the glass. Crap, I really should have brought my umbrella. As a few minutes go by, they roll in closer and closer, blocking out the sunlight. If Olivia were awake, she'd think this was pretty neat. I look back to her. Maybe I could nap too. Just a little. D what was... Oh. My eyes are drawn upward to the heavy clouds in the sky. In moments, the glass of the window is assailed by numerous heavy droplets of rain. Holy moly. Trees outside are billowing almost aggressively. Several small branches are stripped away in the torrential downpour. An umbrella wouldn't help with this. Huh? Mm, what? My phone's blaring an alarm. So is Olivia's. Oh, we got a flood warning. Oh, fuck. Instructions to shelter in place for several hours. The classroom door is thrust open quickly. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> That's a frame. Mr. Yadikin is back, panting hard and clothes drenched. He takes our moment of surprise to compose himself as best he can. <laughs> Sorry about that. The faculty is doing a sweep of campus right now. Apparently there's a monsoon scare right now. Monsoon? Does that happen around here? The Yadikin gestures to his drenched outfit and out the window, as if to ask if Mia had clocked me in the head after all. Right. 
Are we going to be all right? Oh, of course. Schools are designed for shelters of the worst disasters. If anything, you're safer here than at home. But the hallway outside is open, isn't it? I just finished putting the cover up. A cover? Just keep close to the wall, yeah? What do we do now? The Attican shakes his phone at us. Shelter in place. We're all stuck here for a few hours. Olivia reaches into her bag and pulls out her drawing book and a well-used pencil. <laughs> Actually, why don't you use this time to catch up on schoolwork? I'm sure you have some work from other classes still pending. I can't think of a better time to tackle that than now. But today has been Man. rough. Can I do this or finish my nap instead? I was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I have been through the fucking ringer today. The last thing on my mind is goddamn schoolwork. Please just let me have fun doodle time. Where's guts when you need them, you know? <laughs> That's fine too, but aren't you falling behind grade-wise in some of your other classes? Maybe? Ah, fine. I'll catch up on some of that work. Yetikin gives a single nod and smiles. Olivia puts away her drawing materials and instead pulls out her bulky mathematics book, which she sets on the table with more force than necessary, followed by her notebook. With some hesitation on her part, Olivia sets herself to work. Meanwhile, I bring myself closer to her in case she wants some help with the work. After a few minutes, it's clear her mind and spirit isn't into the work one bit. She constantly fidgets, taps her pen on the table, and looks around the room and out the window. Eventually, she lets out a groan and slams her book shut. Ah, this sucks. Can I please do something else? Yadikin, who'd been busying himself with grading some paperwork, snaps up, snaps up away from his work, looking at Olivia while rubbing his chin. Well, there is one other thing you could help with. I would need both of your help with it. Could even consider it's a new extra assignment. Man, this guy's like handing out assignments left and right. Good teacher. I don't know. Today's been pretty rough on Olivia. Absolutely, I'll do it. All right. Wonderful. It's back here. He starts walking to the back of the room and waits for the two of us to follow him. Oh, something in the dark room? Oh man, I thought we wouldn't get to do anything in there until the last few weeks of the semester. Are we going to be getting a head start on this section? They will be making prints or learning about C41 and... Huh? Oh, Olivia's poking my back. Quit it with the cinematic gate. You're going too slow. Oops. I shake the excitement off and head into the dark room. Yadikin holds the door open for the two of us to enter. The inside glows a vibrant crimson light. Yadikin's suit appears to light up in the red lights, as does my shirt. I've actually only been in a dark room once before. So cool. I clasp my hands together. So, what are we developing? We. Oui. This is an important job just for you. Alright, I'm ready for it. What am I developing? Your lower back. <laughs> oh, you're just picking oh. up shit. <laughs> I was gonna say, are we just are we about to do like fucking sit ups or something? Oh, good god. <laughs> There's a click of a switch and the red lights switch to normal lights and properly illuminate the room. This is not a dark room. What is, this is a storage facility. It doubles as a dark room, I think is the idea. There's racking in here. Yes, I understand that, but off to the side, there's probably somewhere to develop the photos, Jeremy. What the fuck? You need a forklift for this shit. <laughs> well, good thing you're here. Yeah. There's boxes over there. I need one at each station around the room, but they're too heavy for me. <laughs> if you can, of course. Legally, I can't make you do any of this. Do Legally, you can't carry anything over 50 pounds solo. Legally, you're gonna die. Uh, so I can't be held responsible. Do, do I at least get extra credit? get one of the bags of chips I keep hidden in my desk. <laughs> yeah, fine. 
<laughs> nice. Come on, Olivia. We should clear the way for him. Sorry, there's actually something in the box we'll need in a bit. The two move back to the entrance, and I'm faced with the myriad of boxes I'll have to carry. Looks like there's about ten. Pretty medium sized. Like you could fit a table lamp in them. How heavy can they. How heavy can they. Ah! Lift with your knees, Inko! This is gonna suck. Look at Olivia, and she already has her phone at, out and pointed my way. Damn it. Shift my legs and try again. I actually managed to get this thing off the ground. This must weigh at least 70 pounds. What is loaded with bricks? Something like that. Careful, they're fragile. Finally, I get the last box in its place. I pick a chair and collapse in a heap. My muscles are on fire. Though, to be honest, I don't know if I could have done all that at the beginning of this year. Guess I'm getting stronger? Yadikin walks back into the dark room with a small black toolbox. Oh, good. You're done. Come on out and take a breather. That looked tough. I'd rather stay here. Olivia shows up in the doorway behind Yadikin. I'm surprised you didn't use the cart. What cart? <laughs> Motherfucker. Before you get started with me, Inko, <laughs> you didn't ask. For the love. I hate you. That's the spirit. Olivia stifles her laughter into a snickering snort fest. Literally no brain cells. Yes, we, this is well established for our character, though. It's in character. <laughs> Your mood will improve when you see just what you've been carrying. Oh. Lenses? He grabs a box cutter from the shelf and slices the top of one open. Our teacher pulls out what looks like a large overhead lamp from the box. Oh, is it for the dark room? What oh. is this? Oh, sweet. So that means... That you'll be making your own prints for midterms. That sounds awesome. Oh man, Ooh. I can't wait to... But before any of that, these need to be assembled. The rest of the parts are taken from the first box and set down meticulously. Olivia's gotten curious as she rolled up to the station handling, handling one of the funnier looking pieces. Anywho, here you two go. Wait, two? Yes, two. You didn't think I didn't notice you watching Inko so much. The stammering denial from Olivia does nothing to wipe the cheeky grin from our teacher's face. But what about you, Mr. Uh, can you reset my stream here? Yep. I don't know what's going on why it does this. It usually only happens after like a couple, or like a long time, right? Hours. Alright, you good? Yeah, yeah I'm good, thanks. Okay, cool, cool. But what about you, Mr. Ayetikan? Uh, I'll be right back. Makes his way to the door again. Get started without me. I need to fetch some things. Before either Olivia or I can speak, he's left the room. Olivia already has the toolbox open on her lap. Alright then. I grab the folded up instructions and lay it out, seeing the details of the bizarre device fully assembled. Okay, so... Dunk. Step one. Uh, hand me the next piece. Oh, did I scare you? Yes, you scared me. These things are heavy. What if you dropped that on something? I didn't, though. But you could have. And I didn't. Olivia's tail reaches for some brackets, but I grab the limb before she can take them. Hold on, we gotta do things right or the enlarger might not work right. She retracts her tail from the table. You're no fun. It's just an oversized lamp. That's a gross oversimplification. You're a gross oversimplification. Yodikin's gonna make you use the one you break. Just means I can sketch more, right? Well, it'd mean you can't participate and learn about photography. Photography's your thing, so it doesn't really apply to me much, does it? Well, maybe that's the case for you, but photography's my thing. It's the whole reason I took this class, after all. Oh. So 
sorry. That's nothing. Olivia politely rests her hands in her lap. Her eyes linger on the box of parts. Well, how does, uh, how does it work then? The print enlarger? She shakes her head. Photography. Like, why the giant lamp thing? It's all digital today, right? Huh. I guess the first time someone's actually asked me about it. Sure, I've had lots of mid-shower rehearsals explaining my hobbies and their cultural significance to others, but none of that's coming to me right now. It's all about shot composition, and this machine is part of the production of it. Getting the right things in the right places at the right time to evoke a certain feeling. Composition is a thing in painting too, you know. I'm ill-prepared for Olivia's comeback. Yeah, but it's a lot easier to pick the composition you want. You don't have to worry about any factors other than yourself. With photography, you have to build the set to get a good photo. That's the fun of it. But why would you want to limit yourself like that? Why not just draw whatever you're taking a picture of instead? You could express all kinds of things you could never express with a photo. Olivia taps a claw on the imager, the metallic ping echoing in the small room. What sets all this junk apart from just lines on a page? The technique. Vision. She shirks she smirks at my petulant comment. Fine, I'll show her. I'll prove to you that this takes skill. I hold the lighting portion up, making sure it's at the right angle, and fasten the last portion of the larger in it. I plug the machine in and flip the switch. Happy that it works right and lights up the entire base. Olivia looks at me with confusion as I move to the entrance of the room and flick the light switch, bathing the room in bright red again. The red room. The red room. Going back to our workspace, I pull the developed negatives from my backpack and slot the slide I want into the carrier. And ta-da! The negative carrier in place in the machine, a blurry gray blob is projected onto the base. Uh, what? Give me a minute. I hold the manual under the light to the side of the uh, blob, checking which knob is which, and then slowly turn them. As the lens and billows shift, the Rorschach test confer, uh, transforms, gaining more definition until finally it becomes the spitting image of the school's front entrance. Now I can even do this. I take out the negative and place another atop it before sliding the carrier back in, while also increasing the strength of the light. The image displayed is now the entrance with half a dozen semi-transparent students in front of it. What did you do? I overlapped another shot. The backgrounds are the same and doubled up, so I had to intensify the light, otherwise the entrance would be too dim. So? That would take me a few minutes to do tops. It'd look a lot better, too. She smirks, but I think she's feigning her apathy this time. Her tail gives her away. It's a lot more technical, I guess, but I only knew how to do this kind of stuff from Mr. Yedekin's lectures about negatives. What else can you do with this thing? Hmm. I don't know, but... What's that sm- Oh, shit. I pull out the negative carry and once at how hot it is. Crap, crap, shit, shit. Olivia's quick to rip the plug from the socket. With my sleeve, I open up the carrier and see I've managed to melt the two negatives together. Oh, man, I was gonna use that. All that work and I go and mess it up trying to prove something. Olivia's never gonna let me live this down. The green gator girl lays a sympathetic hand on my shoulder to my surprise. Hey, shit happens. I've ruined a lot of paintings in the past too, you know. She takes the reels from the worn metal plate and holds them up to the red light, trying to see through them. And we got more shots on this thing. But I like those shots. Then go retake them. It's not that easy. Like it has to be the exact same time and weather and... Lighting? Mm -hmm. The abrupt darkness coincides with a vague ambient sound of the ventilation shuddering to a halt. The blackness is an all-encompassing. Is all-encompassing. I can't even see Olivia, who I know is right next to me. Inko? Her voice helps me confirm that we're still alive in some fashion. But there's a shakiness in her tone. Which sends a tense rattle down my spine. Our breathing is the only noise. It's as if we'd been encapsulated in a void of nothingness. I'm still here. I know that! Plant my hand down to brace her snout feeling the still warm metal of the enlarger base. But, uh... Yeah, I guess the school lost power, huh? I feel something cover my hand. 
now it's time for seven minutes in heaven. Let's fucking go. They don't <laughs> yeah. have to. They don't have to animate or draw anything right now. It's just text. Mm-hmm. And then squeeze, painfully. Ow, 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 ow. Sorry. The pressure lessens, but she doesn't let go of my fingers. No, it's fine. There's a subtle shake in the scaly limb in my hand. But when I brush my thumb across it, the limb eases. Hey, stop that. Stop what? Just that. Stop that thing you're doing with your hand. I shrug. And then wants to slap my face when I realize she can't see that. Alright. Standing here in the darkness of the dark room isn't getting us anywhere. We should go find it. Oh, buh. I think this is... Inko. Yeah, I think this is... the teacher. Ah! My instincts kick in. I hop back to make space between us and the killer. I turn my back to them to become a defensive wall. I wrap my arms around Olivia's head to make sure she's 100% protected. Hey, 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 it's me. Straight Mr. defense Yakutin. stance. Straight to protect and gator wife. I took a bit to find a flashlight with how this room is. I look up to the shining white pterodactyl pointing a flashlight at his own face. Oh. Often you get? <laughs> Look, I'm not paying you two to get frisky in the closet. That's what Trigum's class is for. <laughs> You're not paid. We're not frisky. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yadikin holds up a pale hand, his, gr his grin widening. Relax, I'm just joking around. Can we see who said what? <laughs> It doesn't show. Damn. He leans against the doorway to get a better look inside the dark room with his flashlight. Power's out for the whole block, and apparently our backup generator is decades old and only keeping the AC on. Man, what a useful fucking backup generator, huh? Someone should get fired for that. Okay, but honestly, get her wife will protect you? Yeah, probably. All she has to do is turn around and tail whip the assailant, and they're gone. Come on, we should wait it out in the studio. There's at least some, like, natural lighting. Olivia follows me out into the main classroom as we trail slowly in Mr. Iadakin's wake. The slow sounds of his gait sets a nice contrast to the rain lashing against the windows. Whoa, it's really coming down outside. Think it'll flood? It floods here? Sometimes. The round floor classrooms used to have a carpet, you know. Yadikin starts pulling something out of his desk, but it's too dark to see what. Ugh, don't remind me. That junk just sucked away half a year's funding. You ever tried teaching people about watercolors without the frickin' watercolors? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I remember. I remember you were the most upset. Alright. He sets some tiny tea lights down on one of the desks and begins lighting them. The tiny wicks are set alight with the tiniest of embers, providing the bare minimum of illumination for us to see. Won't those trigger the fire alarms? We should be fine. They're too small by themselves. What are those for? Been saving them for a rainy day. Leans Wink. forward. <laughs> We're gonna be stuck for a while, so why not make a camp out? Camping. I like the sound of that. Won't we get in trouble, though? We'd be trespassing, right? It's either this or trying to get home in the storm. As if to illustrate his point, the weather decided to chime in. Besides, schools are usually made with sheltering in mind. Uh, there's all kinds of procedures for this, like bringing everyone to the gym, bringing out some of the moldy cots. Olivia winces. Those haven't been replaced. Ah, our budget's been in the red for years, Miss Halford. Part of why we're being scrutinized right now, in that whole audit business. Anyway, we're the only ones left on campus, so I'm not going to go through all that trouble. So just relax for now. I've already called a taxi for the both of you. Taxi? I made the call as soon as the power went out. It's just going to be a while to get one ready and send it out. 
Like, what will we do in the meantime? Our teacher has a wicked grin. You're not done with that homework, right? Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Time and the storm carry on, yet things are surprisingly calm. Olivia pretends to focus on her work while I pretend to help her, but soon enough Mr. Yaitic can start sharing wild stories about his previous semesters. You know, a few years back, somebody tried to take this hat right off his head. Let me tell you, I've never seen a shovel fly that fast. It sounds uh, appropriately violent. Either way, Olivia slowly loosens the facade of productivity, and I join her not long after. You know, I still owe you for ruining your one coat last year. Oh, forget about it. I have dozens of them in my closets anyway. You too? The area ambience from the blackout is quickly overridden by combined laughter. Eventually, we run out of things to say, and just wait quietly in each other's company. Attican slumps downwards in his chair. Oof, long day today. You're fucking telling us. He glances out the window, still being assaulted by sheets of rainwater outside. Normally I'm home by now, resting. You two mind if I relax a little here? So you're not gonna <laughs> get like fucking naked or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> On belts pants. No, go ahead. Hmm, thanks. He stretches behind him, cracking his spine against the groove of the chair. Olivia, I've been meaning to say. Hmm? You're usually so quiet, reserved, isolated even. I've noticed you being a bit more friendly recently. Huh? You think so? You've been in my classes all four years, of course I would. Maybe I'm a bit old-fashioned, but it hurts me to see a student hurt themselves like that. Now, when you're in the adult world, you see this all the time. Once someone's in a rut, they tend to just stay there until their days blend together, look at, instead of lifting themselves up. Like they got all the time in the world. So, I'm proud of you for making the effort, Olivia. Oh, Mr. Yadikin, I don't... Uh, I mean... Don't be flustered. Be proud, Olivia. You've managed to form a friendship. Of course, I appreciate you extending an olive branch too, Inko. Me? It's no problem, Mr. Attican. Come on, school hours are over. You can drop them, mister. <laughs> you want me to just call you Trent? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not something to be thanking me for, is it? I'm just her friend. Great to hear, though. You can't always navigate this world alone. Uh, someone has to... Someone to keep company can really help. You can? More than you can imagine. Attican leans forward to place a hand over both of ours. It just barely makes contact with Olivia's wrist when she winces and yanks it back. Shit. Olivia? Dude, I thought like something just like turned on like a fan in my room. Oh, <laughs> not the rain. Yeah, I got very <laughs> fucking confused. I like started looking around. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> you alright? Are you okay? Oh. Ow. I'm fine. That just hurt. I was fine before, though. Trying to stay off that wrist all day. Was it that bad? I was feeling better. I even helped build those doohickeys. <laughs> the prince enlarges. Covers his eyes with one hand. <laughs> of course. Great move. Student's been overworking herself when I give her extra physical work. What am I doing? I'm a failure as a teacher. I ought to just jump out this window! <laughs> it, it wasn't your fault. I didn't want to worry you. I had no idea how bad it was. Leans forward again, gently holding Olivia's wrist, inspecting it and being careful not to cause any pain. You need to take care of yourself, Olivia. If something were to happen, I know you'd be completely beside yourself. I know. 
I know you're doing the extra work, but how did it even get this bad? It was a lot of extra work. Doing a whole group's assignments on top of my own for the last three weeks. Basically all my free time. It's great practice, so that's what I was telling myself. Maybe it does her best to hide her wincing as the teacher tests her arm. Never would have made it to graduation. All because of that painting you switched. Shakes his head and lets go of Olivia. No, it goes further than that. That painting was all because of the pain you've been going through all these years. All because of that first contest entry hanging in the gala. Dude, I don't know if it's like the open back of like these headphones or what, but like the or the audio design, because like it, it's still fucking with me. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Your first venture into the art world, and it went how it did. Olivia looks down at her hand, stretching the fingers out and and slowly, carefully. My hand moves without a thought. Fingers taking her hand carefully to help in some way or another. You and that painting. Our teacher palms his face and groans into it. Oh, it's a generally good piece, Olivia. I've told you so many times. She locks up, but manages a small nod. What a horrible chain of events. I've had to witness it all these years. Watch it as it's taken your friends, your self-worth, that little smile you had when you first came into my class, and now it's ruining your health. He gently lets go and covers his own eyes again. And I really just sat here and watched it? I was just talking about how people act like they have more time than they actually have. Yadikin? Are you alright? I'm super. I'm more than okay. Uh, in fact, I've made my mind about something. Uh-oh. You. Take her to the gala, please. There's something I want you two to see. Y no words. Just do it, please. I nod. What are you going to show us? He stops at the door. Something you should have seen a long time ago. We're going to see the big beast under the fucking school <laughs> that eats people's art. My shoes slosh noisily through the flooded hallways. We slowly head back to the main building of the school. Olivia herself had used her arms to tuck her legs up into, this, in, into her seat. Her head now resting on her knees. Yetikin didn't seem to care, each of his steps splashing water around and soaking the slacks. The drains on the floor are working over time, keeping the water at a minimal level. An unsettling feeling washes over me as we enter the atrium. The interior of the school pitch black from the, bla uh, the lack of lighting. At least we aren't dealing with wet floors, but navigating the halls in the dark is a new difficulty. Olivia brought out her phone, using its flash as a light to shine our way, but I'm still unnerved. The only sound I hear is the squelches on my shoes and the awkward dripping from both Olivia and I. And it was then I realized that Yadikin had left us behind. Mr. Yadikin? Her voice bounces down the dark halls of the school. Did you see where he went? Kinda. I think he went that way. I can just make out Olivia's hand pointing thanks to her phone. Towards the school's offices. I keep pushing Olivia, though taking my time as I feel my shoes threaten to slip with each step I take. It's slow going, between the eerie darkness and my slow steps. What should have taken us a minute at most takes about three minutes for us to arrive at the gala. Well, we're here. The storm rages against the glass ceiling. What's normally the source of the hall's natural lighting is completely obscured by the typhoon. And there's still no sign of Yadikin. I withdraw my phone and turn its flashlight on too, in hopes to improve the situation. I can hear something else, aside from us in the rain. Something that's getting closer. A tiny red light in the distance, there with the sound. 
The tiny ember bounces a bounces and sways in rhythm with odd tapping until Is he going to burn the painting? <laughs> is he going to kill us? What's happening. Why is he having an axe? <laughs> he's going to I mean it's it's a little freaky, but I think he's about to destroy every painting in here. Shit. I'm frozen for a second. Thought for a second. Dude, it, it does feel like he's about to fucking come at us, doesn't it? Hmm. I'm frozen for a second. The thought forces its way through me. He wouldn't ever hurt us. Yadikin, what's. What are you doing? Something is kicked aside. It's Olivia's painting from the art contest a few weeks back. It smacks loudly against the glass casing of the display case. These are the ones, yeah? What? I'm ignored. Yadikin's staring right at Olivia. She's also struck fearful. But she nods. Yadigan takes a deep breath and faces the display. What are you going to do with that? Hey. Yadigan, wait. This is a bit extreme, isn't it? Oh, that's just a whole... Wow, this is really stylistic. Yeah. <laughs> we get this one again. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Olivia. It's gone. Both of them. This should have been done a long time ago. Yeah. Yet again, this is... It's crazy. I know. What about the other things in the case? Who fucking cares? <laughs> Those students graduated ages ago. You know how many still do art? None. If they're collateral so someone else can, fine by me. But Olivia... You've got no other big paintings now, do you? Uh, wrong. She's got the painting of me when I got a sunburn, but nice try, Mr. Adigan. Have an axe. <laughs> okay, never mind. The painting's gone. <laughs> Where, where's that drawing of him carrying you? Wait, no, I have that one tucked in my back pocket. <laughs> it's precious to me. She shakes her head. That's a shame. Look what I just did. I can make another. Yes, that's what I need to hear. You make me so proud to hear that. Do you remember sophomore year when you challenged me to think of something I wanted to do? Is that a goal to do it? Of course. Couldn't think of anything back then. There has been one thing I've been wanting to do for a while now. And like you said, some company could really help. Olivia grips my hand just a little tighter. Promise not to laugh. Never. Would you mind asking me again, Yadikin? Sure. I believe it was. If you can leave right now and go do anything you wanted, what would you want to do? Anything at anything all. Anything at all. Oh, sorry. Yep. I want to... I want to go see a fountain. 
and and paint it for you. Fucking brilliant. I also just just point out our dialogue box. It's been there the whole fucking time. <laughs> oh no, it's the fucking rock all over again. <laughs> yeah. There's a fountain here? There's a park not too far from here. You can barely see a fountain in the center of it from the window. You can't see it right now in the storm, but I want to go there. I think I know of it. The one in Stig Equestrian Park. That's wonderful, Olivia. The Attican stumbles a bit. I rush to give him a shoulder. Some shards of glass crunching under his feet. Huh. Good thing the power's out. No cameras up or anything. Won't you get in trouble for this? I'm always in trouble for something. Fucking Yadikin's the best. <laughs> <laughs> and ordinarily, I just take the hit. Especially for something like this. That Mia chick can take the fall. To hell with her. Hell yeah! <laughs> Drag her ass! Olivia manages another small smile. I'm looking forward to that painting. You better get it to me. I will. You better help. Of course. Yetikan motions for us to wait by the school's entrance. For a while, we sit there. Hell fucking yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have one yet again. Hmm? Do you have something you want to do? I'm already doing it. No, oh, really. Really? Teaching high school is a great job and that no one ever regrets. You should pose that question to Inko there. No, don't do that. <laughs> All this character development and he's barely said a word. Alright, Inko, what about you? What do I want to do, huh? If I could pick anything... I guess... I want to find true love. Alright, let's, uh, let's pop this here. Uh, yeah. To yeah. be honest, like, his character specifically, the stupid thing is he's supposed to be like, Anon, right? Like, yeah. every man. He's actually his own character. You didn't have to make up this blank of a, you know, like yeah. the design didn't have to be a blank slate. He has his own ambitions. I think that's just going with like their previous stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, like what what he would want is to make plenty of friends. That's what he would say. But he's already he's made wanting. plenty of friends. That's the thing. Oh, so like he's aimless right now. Okay. And college is a cop out answer, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the true love is the only real answer. A more ambitious dream. I can get behind it. It's a bit unimaginative. That's just hater talk. Should probably start looking more into how and not the what. Like you would know. I can totally do it. <laughs> sure thing, Mr. Successful. Your block doesn't even have 10 followers. You looked me up! Yeah, got bored. You could at least follow me if you're gonna cyberstalk me. And I'll follow you when you make good content. Also, your interpretation of Godzilla you copied from a video essay sucks, and you should feel bad about it. I copy Yadikin's motion with the axe and karate chop Olivia's leg. Didn't feel that, jackass. Well, I guess some banter is a form of motivation as well. Sounds like you have quite the promise to uphold now, Ingo. Boo. Even with the disses being thrown around, what stood out the most was the wild grin on Olivia's face. Between the staccato of rain and the uproarious laughter, time seemed non-existent. I could feel the muscles in my face ache, brought on by bouts of laughter and grinning, which made the taxi's arrival so disappointing. As we were escorted out to the parking lot, our mirth was replaced with something more. Calm. Comfortable. An easy quiet that let my thoughts wander back to the things that we said to each other. 
Back to what our terrorist teacher said. Navigating the world alone. For all the time I spent around Olivia and her friends, it never really occurred to me that she'd harbor something like loneliness. I mean, Damien alone is like a wild crowd composed of a single madman. And Liz, she's practically the group's nanny or something. Hmm. The driver of the yellow van leans into his horn. I can feel the baleful leer on me even through the haze of the fog and raindrops. Olivia draws her hood up, and I hold my jacket above my head. With a final look to Mr. Yadikin, we thank him. No need for thanks. Seeing my students grow and prosper into adulthood is all the reward this old fossil needs. With a wave, he sends us off into the rain. To the irate taximan's van that yells at us about his burning gas. While Olivia works to get herself situated in the cab, I try to Hold back. on. Hold. How does this world have gasoline? And oil. Shh. Shh. We don't talk about that part. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> well, I mean, there's dead dinos still, right? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess so. It's just a little more morbid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yadikin is sagging, meandering back into the building. Only oh, hurry up. Right, right. It's been about a week since the typhoon. The days after were surreal, with how things just realigned with the old schedule. Yadikin was serious when he told Olivia to keep off that wrist. He effectively banned her from painting until it got better. Meaning all week I've been doing our group, our work as a group. It was exhausting. <laughs> but it's gonna make me better, right? <gasps> oh, why are you on the train? But today I'm pretty excited. For the first time, Olivia is actually joining me on the metro. We're headed for the city. It's going to be a bit of a trip. For the last several nights, Olivia has been using my inbox to store sketching ideas with her wrist while her wrist heals. On Thursday, she even attempted sending a few left-handed sketches, but gave up after the third or fourth malformed rat. Then Liz sent a game-changing invitation through our group chat. Her uncle has some business in the city, and he told her she can do something with the time since it's her car. So she's invited the rest of us to join her for lunch at a fancy place. It's got us pretty thrilled. Uh, it's got me pretty thrilled. Well, you understood. I'm so thrilled. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited. Date with the gate. Good. Olivia understood. I'm tired. You're tired. <laughs> How long has it been? Seven hours. Seven and a half hours. Shit, Shit man. Well, okay. What chapter does this put us to? When did, when did Jen, Jen say we were on chapter here? How long ago was that? Uh, I think we probably are on like chapter 12 now? If I were to take a wild guess? You guys will be starting 10 of 19. When was that? Fuck. Well, I mean, I think there's the uh, running away from Mia, and then there's the Typhoon. I think. I think that. I feel like that was one big chapter. Just the, no, the whole, the I feel like that was too split up. I mean, nothing really happened with Mia. That was just like the intro. This might be the start of 11. Fuck. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, well, so, okay. So do, do you want to stop or? Uh, yeah. Okay. We, we gotta get back to this. If anything, I'll just cancel, like, every stream plan I have so we can finish this fucking game. <laughs> okay. Uh, so how many chapters did we get through tonight, then? That's it. Five. Yeah, yeah, go back to where... Jen, when is the... The, uh, what's it called? The party. The summer party. Whatever chapter that is. Because that's where we... whole thing with me is was a giant chapter. Yeah. Bing 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 bing. Okay. Um. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've, we've, been, we've been going for seven and a half hours. That's f technically fine. Ugh. Though, if I'm honest, I would just as soon just go through this whole fucking game. <laughs> 
party was chapter four, so we did five through oh, ten. Jesus. Five, six. It was 19. We did six chapters today. Holy fuck. In seven hours. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> I mean, I'm grateful for the content. There's a lot here. There's it's a lot here. There. there is. I've, you know, I, I'm gator-pilled, so I'm, I'm happy. Okay, well... <laughs> Man! <laughs> Oh, okay, so then what do we so what do we do then? <laughs> we just keep playing until we finish it. It just have to be on a slower pace unless you want to do like a day stream. But even then, like, this is a full time job of streaming right now. <laughs> we did a fucking eight hour shift. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> For something you chose was longer. That's true. But we did breeze quicker through the second route in the wedding. We didn't like reread everything, only things that were different. So that didn't take too long. I love the timestamps. You can see the time slowly in in incremental. <laughs> yeah. We've got, uh, let's go back over here. Uh, starting today, uh, where was the first one? <laughs> yeah, we didn't really save much during this chapter, did we? Okay, I think this was like the first one today, right? Yeah, 2235. Yeah. And then we go seven hours ahead to 515. <laughs> oh. oh my god, the elevator scene was an hour ago. Dude, the lights out was a long fucking time, bro. You have to understand. Shit. Okay. Let's see. What, when all right, when's your availability? Uh, I basically every day but Tuesday. Every day but Tuesday. Alright. Should we do another big stream even earlier tomorrow? Uh, I don't know if I can promise an earlier than 6.30 for me. Dude, I, I'll be honest, I can stay up fucking late as, late as you do, so... I'm just saying, however late you want to be able to go, like... That's when we'll start, you know? Because the, here's the thing, right? It's taking us this long to get through all of this. If we if we don't keep doing longer streams, this ain't getting finished for a while. No. No, it's not. Uh, how long can date night be, right? How At long worst, it's another hour, right? Are you saying let's run it? <laughs> Are you saying let's run it, my boy? Oh, shit. You need to go get, like, some caffeine? I don't think I have caffeine in this. Oh, no, we do. We have coffee stuff. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, right? If you want to run it, I'm fine with mulliganing my set and my Sunday. I'll just do that as my recovery day. I think I did that last week, actually. Gonna be up for it after we get home on Monday. Oh, yeah, never mind. Monday, we have a... Monday's like a thing. I probably won't be back uh, okay. on time on Monday. That's fine. Anyway, let's just do this fucking chapter. Why not? Let's fucking go! Go, go, go. All right. So where were we? I think we were, like, right here. Olivia understood the order to stay off her hand, but that doesn't make her less manic about wanting to get back into painting. Why'd you agree if you don't want to go? Well, a trip to the city won't suck so bad if you're here. Look at those eyes. Even if I really, really want to start that painting... You're almost done healing. It won't be much longer, I know it. But I... I had... Why is it when I don't see his name for like five <laughs> seconds, I suddenly forget how to pronounce it? Iadakin said you should at least wait to, uh, for Monday. Yeah, that too. Besides, I don't want to be around Damien while he's... Ugh. Oh, Damien doesn't know in this universe. True. Poor guy looked positively miserable when I picked up... When I picked up Olivia. When I picked Olivia up, bluff. He was pale and shaking, on the f and the floor between his feet was left bubbling after a particularly powerful sneeze. Okay, so he's sick. Uh -huh. 
Has it ever been that bad? It happens like once a year. And one reason we don't share a room. One moment he's fine, the next he's inebriated. Huh. This car is weird. You ride this every day? Yep, this is even my seat. Right next to the folding accessibility seat. What, did you start accounting for me before we met? <laughs> Maybe I did. She mouths something and rolls her eyes. There's a clear smile after she goes back to watching to, uh, the passing buildings. Compared to a car ride together, this felt a little more intimate. Even if there are more people in close proximity, none of them paid us any mind. Just Olivia and I. Several stations later, the metro grinds to a halt at our stop. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Olivia shoes my hand away when I go to help her out of the metro. We step out into the chilled air of the city. I'm already getting goosebumps. That cold front is really making itself known. We should find Liz quickly, before Olivia starts shivering. Are you seeing a long, big green neck anywhere? None that I know of. Great. That sounds awesome. We looked around, through the alleyways, into the closest shops. Maybe she's in the bathroom? Wait around, but I don't want to make Olivia wait out in the cold. Did we go to the wrong stop? Just text her already. Crap. Alright. Dumb. Bing, 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 bing. What the hey? Where'd you go? A moment later, her head ropes out the door of a nearby coffee shop, followed by the rest of her. Hey, Inko. Glad you guys can make it. Yeah, I just got confused. Didn't know you'd be in a cafe there. Really? I've been in there the whole time. I messaged Damien when I went in to escape the cold and... His ass ain't the here. the fuck is he? <laughs> Why are you guys Where's... even here if you're not bringing Damien with you? Where's Damien? Oh man, he got nasty sick right before we left. Couldn't make it. But, but... Is he fine? He'll be fine, I think. Okay, alright. Well, that just throws a wrench into all my plans now, doesn't it? Could still have fun without him, right? Yeah, I know. It, it was just, uh... Okay, we know Inko's dance. Is, uh, is Olivia dense, or is she kind of just pick up on what the fuck's going down here? I don't know. Well, I was hoping between the four of us... It'd be like a double date. Huh? Yeah, Damien and me, you and Inko. All together for a fancy lunch. Uh, Liz, Olivia and I aren't... Oh, uh, oh. I'm sorry, I just assumed. Boy, this is embarrassing. Whole day seems like everything's gone wrong for me. It, it's fine. Yeah, well, we could still have a good time. Yo, Inko, the way she's looking at you, maybe you need to, like, I don't know. Think about it for Take a minute. Take head. Still having lunch with friends. I'm sure you guys will love it, too. Come on. Liz leads us through the streets, pointing out our destination when it comes into view through the towering skyscrapers. <laughs> Big building. Is that a fucking spider? <laughs> <laughs> On my building? God damn it, somebody airstrike that shit right now! <laughs> Sorry, that's the hell divers talking. <clears throat> the building is more akin to a narrow spike aimed skyward, with a large disc like room built near the tip. And you see that space near the top? That's the restaurant. They built it in a wave where the whole thing slowly rotates, so your view changes while you eat. You can see the whole city, the ocean, and even the mountains. Whoa. Where the fuck are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I've gone here with my parents all the time as a kid. I've always daydreamed about bringing friends and important guests there and... Well, you know, business type stuff. This will be my first time on my own. Well, you know. 
Yeah. You see, there's even a... Oh, hold it. We lost Olivia. We turn around to check on our errant gator friend, who's a bit farther behind and grimacing. She comes slowly rolling in, fighting to hide the slight winces every time she pushes herself. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Sure you don't want to help? I, I can manage on my own, please. Alright, you want to lead the way? Alright. It's that space needle looking place, right? She rolls ahead. Liz and I follow behind, continuing her conversation. The restaurant is an impressive spire, with the actual seating area 30 floors or so up. After Liz verifies her reservation, we're led into a special elevator with glass in front. After a minute or so of rising above the city, we stop and the door slide open to reveal the restaurant. It's a circular room, with the seating by the windows and an inner ring for bars, and the kitchen making up the center. You know this place is omega expensive. Oh, you totally. ain't getting a lot of food for your fucking platters, that's for sure. Four dollar signs on maps. <sighs> Definitely a carefully crafted place. I wonder if it'd be the kind of place my parents would bring me to. The waitress greets us and leads us to a table by the windows. One of the seats closest to the window is moved so Olivia's wheelchair can fit by the table. I fucking love Liz. Yeah? <laughs> can you go back to the sitting down animation? Sure, sure. <laughs> Did the head go down too? No. <laughs> yeah, that makes it pretty good, huh? Oh, fuck. Okay. She approaches the space and stops. She's looking down out the window. Can we switch seats? Afraid of heights. Oh. Shut. All right. I oblige, shifting the seat over so she sits instead by the aisle. Quite a view, huh? see why I'd make you squeamish, Olivia. I told so scared the living daylights out of me. But like, scaled up, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you afraid of heights, Liz? Oh well, yeah. Isn't anyone? Everyone? What? That doesn't make any goddamn sense, Liz. Your head hangs three stories above your shoulders, and heights scare you? Look. Uh, acrophobia is the irrational fear of heights, okay? <laughs> what the fuck, Liz? So of course it doesn't make sense, but still. That... whatever. Heights suck, we can agree on that at least. So, what do you think? It's very nice. Let's see why you wanted to come here. Liz nods. My family usually comes here once a year. Uncle Ferris has to remember to bring along a letter from the owner saying he's fine to let in and that he won't bring the whole tower down. I mean, Ferris is like a two-ton man, so it's fair. <laughs> that was bisque. Olivia's looking into the menus. Right, we're here to eat. Lobster bisque? It's lobster tail and a creamy kind of soup. Then why not call it lobster soup? Bisque is just a stupid word. I look down at the menu myself. It's all your standard options, between pastas, sandwiches, cuts of meat, some weird novelty things, but I actually like trying those. Guess I'll have... Chicken pizza, the chicken is the crust. Double the tropical cheeseburger with pineapple sauce. Entire leg of cow, carnivore section. Samies with Olivia. Volcaldera kebab. The wooden steak is even carved to look like the restaurant. <laughs> which one are you, which one tickles your fancy, Jeremy? <laughs> yeah, we, this isn't important. We need to save. On this the could be immensely important. I think these two are a no go. I I just want to see chicken pizza. Like I just want to see what chicken bean the crust looks like. Yeah. Okay. It won't show us obviously, but we can order the chicken pizza with the chicken crust. Uh, you sure? Why is she judging us? With onion rings. If 
you want it, I'm buying. They serve breakfast all day, too. I'm going with the pancake platter. We have ways of, uh, waves a waitress over and we give our orders. Nostalgia pick? You got me. It takes me way back. She stares out the window. I like out the horizon as well. The view has shifted a bit to show the mountains. We all look out for a long while. Maybe a little too long. Ordinarily, this would be about the time Damien would say something that kept the conversation going. Oh, right. She's the one bringing this all together. Yeah, it is strange to think about, but Liz and Olivia aren't really more than acquaintances. During lunch, it's Damien that always makes sure everyone else is included in the conversation. Oh god, it's the friend of friend group. Nothing comes to mind. I don't think I'd make a good Damien. One moment, please. Okay, hold up a sec. I want to I want to run it back and see what like all the uh, stuff here is. Uh, so what about the cheeseburger? <laughs> all right, same huh. thing. Okay, same thing. All right, now what about the Volcadera kebab with onion rings? Okay. <laughs> Are we supposed to batch her? <laughs> what? With onion rings. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It does not matter. Okay. I say go back to the original pick, so, Chicken uh, pizza? in case it didn't matter. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We'll do the chicken pizza. <laughs> I could probably hit skip and it would work, but I'm just going to do that real quick. I ring Damien up in the hallway. He's sick, yes, but hopefully he'll have something for me to use. If he picks up. Please. Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, no. <laughs> the final oh, boss has showed no. up. Oh. Oh. Hold on. Chris oh, Burr, fuck. you need to leave. Get out of here. <clears throat> Testing! Testing! Yep, yep, coming through loud and clear. Yellow! Vinny? I uh, want to talk to Damien. Mom's with him in the backyard. He's puking his guts to a bucket. Why? Pest controls. <laughs> oh god damn it. Pest control guys buy it from us for fifty bucks. Gross. What do you want him for? I can tell him when he comes back in. No, why not? I want to know how he always keeps our friend group so lively. Like, I was considering small talk, just bringing up movies or something. Ew. No, movies suck. Nobody actually likes them. What? <laughs> I'm playing Fortnite. I'll turn it down so you can hear me. Is this supposed to be like a Mr. Beast type deal or something? That is a Mr. Beast, like... It's like a dino, you know? But, like, the thing is, dino that could beast. also just be, like, some Fortnite YouTuber's thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that's totally Mr. Beast. But, but dinosaur. I heard what you said. It was just dumb. Was it? Uh, yeah. There's a pause for a moment. Movies always sucked. <laughs> like, when they started in black and white, and without sound, they never really got any better. Even when they peaked in the seventh. Uh, what is he talking about? Uh, oh no, homie's yapping. Have you ever watched The Godfather? Dad made me watch that stuff and it just sucked. No, you probably just didn't get it. That explained the whole plot to me. Begins and outs. I think it was just me. Trash. <laughs> that movie won awards. You can't just call it trash. <laughs> yeah, <I can't. laughs> Movies are trash. <laughs> he makes better video essays than he can. Very fucking true. <laughs> Even the best ones are usually just polished turds that waste your time. Okay, then. What's a good movie? <laughs> Toy Story. Shrek. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> Mr. Beast! Mr. Mr. Beast! Mr. Mr. Beast! 
Jerem, you can't. You're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> How about story time animations? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm not. Any popular content on you, Snoot. <laughs> it's more value for your time than the classics that you people fought over. And it all sucks. Those aren't even movies. <laughs> they move, and I watch them. Not my point, you troglodyte. As if you could ever even think of comparing that slop to the likes of Star Wars, The Godfather, Blade Runner 2049. Movies are one massive pile of doo doo fart. <laughs> but even it can sometimes make something mediocre. Dude, I'm fighting like my inner demons right now. I'm 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 arguing with a child. We've tangent so hard. What the fuck is this? These are billion dollar franchises. Millions of people would disagree with this deranged nonsense. <laughs> Do no fight! Oh my god. You little <laughs> Listen, you little <laughs> chump. Next time I see you, I'm gonna wring your little neck like a rosh rag. What? Who is this? Shit. Calm down. <laughs> Hang up. Calm down. Kill him later. Nuts. Didn't get the advice. It was a good thing the mom never learned caller ID. <laughs> For real. I sulked back to my seat and slumped down, catching my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are right? Your eyes twitching. I don't think I've ever been more angry in my life. <laughs> what happened? I don't want to talk about it. Rub the tension from my face. Fine. I can be a good Damien all by myself. So, uh, Liz. Yeah? You mentioned when you, we first met you wanted to be an art dealer. Getting the right people, the right paintings, right? How's that going? Oh. Yeah, it's going great. I got accepted into Marshland U, actually. Oh, snap. Yeah. Your mic's cutting out right now. Cutting out? Well, it was, it's not like necessarily cutting out. It was just like you were, it sounded like you got covered up. Like somebody was smothering you with a pillow. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the ground running once I graduate. Yeah, you're good now. That's pretty cool. I'm still figuring things out. You too, right, Olivia? I only got short-term goals right now. But I'm interested in what Liz is talking about. Right. I'm sure it wouldn't be a problem for Olivia to re replace the stolen painting. What? That's the story they went with? But what was annoying was having to contact the treasury and administration about the broken cabinet. I guess at that point, yeah, it would have gotten around, right? Yeah. I mean, what even happened? Whoever did it, I wish they could have dealt with Miss Scaler's neurotic tantrum the way I did. We're still finding glass shards all over the floor, and I get screamed at as if I'm the one responsible for it. Taylor needs to put the coffee mug down sometimes. Jeez. Not a problem anymore. We've already ordered a new display. Should be installed next month. Oh, uh... I got off track. What were we talking about again? The art dealing thing. I'm actually interested. Oh, well the plan is to be able to open up my own business. I'll start online and work my way up to having a physical collection. First, I need to start with NFTs. Oh, physical well, location, okay. by the way. This is what? This is physical location, not physical collection. Oh, my bad. You're good. Uncle Ferris told me he's willing to help me figure the legal part out. I've already gotten a few connections. Some people that might be interested in being involved that run some pretty decent prices. For me, I mean. And I'll be selling my own works, too. I've gotten better at painting since the start of the year, have you noticed? I think you have, yeah. Although, since I'm no artist, I'll admit some of the details are probably lost on me. Liz nods. Maybe I'll buy one sometime. 
You'll give me a discount, right? Huh, maybe. Um, Olivia, have you painted anything good recently? No. Oh, sorry. It's fine. Well, I got one I really want to be doing. Why don't you? Because I got dragged here instead. <laughs> Dang it, Olivia. I mean, not that I'm mad. This looks like she wants to say something. The thought dies on her tongue. <laughs> yeah. The conversation, and the tense tension, thankfully, gets interrupted as our food arrives. The social media influencer in me itches to take a photo of each plate, especially with how good the presentation is. I think I should have brought my camera along with me. Wait, I have my phone. Say, Olivia. I turn just in time to see her clamp her jaw on a hunk of meat, tearing it right off the bone. Huh? Never mind. Uh, how's it taste? She takes a moment to chew her food before sending it down the hatch, then smiling as she gives me a greasy thumbs up. Liz chuckles from Olivia's good review as she lowers her head to get uh, the first bite of her pancakes. Even though her neck is making movements equivalent to doing the happy dance. <laughs> I'm guessing that the pancakes are good here. My view had changed again, and now having noticed it, I can almost feel the slow rotation in the room. I savor my onion rings while watching Volcadera Bluffs pan right by us, taking in the amazing view. My thoughts reach out for the, my camera, already calculating the restaurant's rotation with the proper settings to capture the full 360 panorama I could achieve. And a separate section of my mind recalls the other panoramic of the city I saw. The one that is now nothing more but shredded debris. Say, Liz. The Brachiosaurus takes a moment to respond as she attempts to cram her snout into a glass of water. Ah, stupid glass, no straw. Yeah? So you mentioned one without wanting to be an art dealer and be a part of that system. I guess it could be cool if we work together. Come again? I don't know, just seems like a decent idea. No, I get you. Now it's Liz's turn to pause from her food, sit upright, and carefully tap the napkin on her closed lips. Um, uh, maybe, but I don't think you'd want that, honestly. Hmm? No, that'd be cool, I'd like that. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure. Not sure? Yeah, I'm trying to get this whole thing off the ground on my own. Without others' help, right? Like how you feel about your art stuff? That's... different. The point is, it's important to me that my start is as self-sustaining as possible. But you just said you had connections in your uncle. Yeah, family and such, not a... Uh... Choose your next word very carefully here, Liz. Olivia raises that iconic mm. eyebrow. Friends, or is it just me? <laughs> Olivia, don't even start to make a scene. I have to do something. Olivia, Liz, come on guys. Can we finish lunch first? How am I making a scene, Liz? I'm just curious about your life for once. Well, not like this, then. I'd rather you go back to giving me the silent treatment. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 what have I done? What's your deal? Damien and Inko want us to be friends. Here I am actually trying, and... What, am I not worthy you enough for your stuck-up... Ugh! You didn't want my friendship before. Or Damien's. For years. It just sounds a bit like you just want to be friends now because you can get something out of it. I want to be friends, just not like that. Honestly, that feels like a pretty good defusal. In my opinion. What do you think? Mm. Like... It's like, I, I mean... mean defused? It... Yeah. Situation defused. I mean, it's obviously not going to be diffused, but you know. 
I thought things would finally start getting good. Olivia, there's lots of people less fortunate than you. Okay, never mind. You have the support of your friends, all the offers. You can't blame me if you just ignore both. And all right. The fire's you... been stuck right back in. <laughs> Liz, I. Let me finish, please. I'm not mad. I envy you. I admit it. Anyone would. Effortlessly getting that attention and help. I hate it. I know, and I know it's wrong. That's what I've been thinking for a while. All these things you have available to you all these years, and you just take them for granted. I think it's just a wasteful way to live. Look, sorry. I, I appreciate you guys. After telling to my face how you'd rather be elsewhere and not here while eating at my expense? Oh no. You know what, Olivia? This is the most nice I can do for you at the moment because you really don't deserve anything else. Liz! Oh. Liz clasps a uh, hand Andy. over her mouth. Olivia doesn't respond. She looks down at her plate. I'm going to use the bathroom. She pushes herself away from the table and through the aisle. Oh no. I'm sorry, Liz. I didn't mean to snap. It's alright. So if he gets back, you can apologize. No, I don't, I don't think I can. After everything, I think I deserve that much. Good god. Brief was, the brief was to just get these two talking, have a good time, and it's like a grenade was thrown into the table. Wow. I'm a terrible fucking Damien, let me tell you. Liz? Yeah? Why didn't it work? Uh, wh why didn't what work? I know you two aren't in the greatest terms, so I tried to keep the conversation going. So it wouldn't get awkward, nobody would get left out, like Damien does. I feel like this is somehow my fault. But how? I did everything I was supposed to. Mm, I don't think you did anything wrong. Why does this never happen around Damien? Good question. I don't know. Liz picks at her plate, popping the yolk on her over easy egg probably not in the mood if I pushed any further and said anything I wanted to say right now. Olivia wouldn't like me prodding right now either. There's no options. Try to think of something to do, but nothing. I can't think of doing anything at all. Not without making someone uncomfortable, or worse, getting them mad at me. I've never even anticipated something like this happening. It's frustrating. I can't do anything, but I can't do nothing, obviously. I don't want to smooth things over. Right now, Olivia's in the bathroom. She's actually just fooling around the hallway, but the point is the two are separated. I can work something out. Should I keep trying then? I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. I... I think I'd rather you didn't. Hmm... Just go to Olivia. Liz isn't our girl. It's true, but does that really push the needle forward at all? I mean, I imagine this whole chapter is just repairing their friendship now. I'll drop a save here. It doesn't hurt. Because honestly, I want to try maybe this one. I feel like this is a little too direct. It's not really going to do anything. Yeah. I'm going to run this one real quick. And then we'll mm -hmm. take a look at it. Go find Olivia. Liz? Yeah. 
Should it be the case that doing what you're supposed to do doesn't always work? Is that a trick question? Did you no, say it? Of course it isn't. Sorry, I don't know why I thought that was you saying that. You're good. Is that what you're thinking? Well, you guys got in an argument over it. Maybe I got hurt over it. I feel a bit responsible. Nonsense. This stupid stuff is for our own petty catty squabble. Well, I want to do something to fix it. Hmm. Well, I have an idea what to do. Thing is, I really don't want to upset anyone. Or worse, get them mad at me. You only want to do things that others will support then? Yeah. But here, it's not an option, I don't think. Catch-22, sure. You're great with people. You're on the school council and probably have lots of arguments there. Like you wouldn't believe. What do you do, then? Look, uh, Liz looks out the window. I guess that's a good question to ask. Well... Here's how I see it. If I have something that needs saying, I'll just say it. Doesn't matter how others think in that case. Some things you just have to be cold with. That's just how some things are. Oh. Sorry if that's not the answer you were looking for. No, I'm just good. I appreciate your perspective. It's actually a good example of itself. That's what I needed to hear. That's a good way to put it. Thanks for the advice. I'll try to make things right once Olivia gets back. Okay. Focus on my food and what I'll say while we wait for Olivia's return. Liz offers to trade her bacon strips for a few onion rings. Sucker. Finally, Olivia yeah, comes yeah. rolling back to the table. I'm back. Hey, you were gone for a while. Yeah. Things cool here now. I was actually about to say something about it to resolve everything. <laughs> You're trying to say who's right. <laughs> Damn. Okay, well then I wonder if you going to talk to one person just gives you their perspective, right? And you get yeah. this one anyways. So we'll take a quick peek back. Because we have the skip feature to quickly go back if need be. So let's go find Olivia. A heavy breath escapes me as I stand from my chair. If you'll excuse me, Liz. Her head tilts comically further than needed in question. Just want to check on Olivia. Oh. About me. She waves me off as I turn away. Making my way through the restaurant, a part of me marvels at how I don't even feel the room spin. Kind of makes me dizzy, honestly. But it's just mental busy work to distract myself. After all, I have no idea what I'm going to say to Olivia. Hey, should I ask her how she is? Go. Well, I'm on the spot now. Hey, just came to see how you were doing. Thought I had more time to think about things, but instead of being by the restrooms, Olivia was... Why are you here by the bar? I wanted to see if they'd give me a mimosa. What? Mimosa. You know, like OJ and champagne. Olivia, you can't drink. Says you. She takes a long sip from a glass flute filled with orange liquid. <laughs> I make to slap it out of her hand, but her tail stops me. I'm choking, jeez. It's like you, Inko, a virgin. She grins at my scowl and continues sipping on her drink. Want some? She holds out the glass to me with that smug smile of hers. Taking the flute, I can clearly see where her lips had touched it. Olivia looks to be leaning forward as I stare at the glass. Ignoring the heat at my cheeks, I take I tip the glass above me, carefully pouring some of the liquid in my mouth. Mmm. Oh. That's just juice and ginger ale, Olivia. Handing her back the glass for a split second, I thought I saw some disappointment in her eyes. Pfft, maybe I'm just seeing things now. With a shake of my head, I refocus. I came to check on Olivia and fix things between her and Liz. You okay, Olivia? Y yeah, totally. Why wouldn't I be? Her eyes are wide open, yet not looking my way. Well, because of what Liz said? Oh. 
She sags on her chair. Olivia? No, yeah, that was... Her finger circles the lip of her glass as she thinks. Not hurt, just frustrated. She looks at her glass one final time, and then downs the last quarter of it in a single swallow. Afterwards, Olivia sets it on the bar, on top of a couple crumpled dollar bills. I mean, this doesn't get it, Nico. Maybe she walked a mile in my shoes, she would, but... I hate to see you guys go at it like that. Yeah. Maybe it's been a long time coming for me, but who cares? A long time coming? I know she's been a bit frustrated for a while. Probably been holding that in. Doesn't mean I want to hear it, though. All the time I've known her, she's just been so far ahead of me. You hear her yap all about how she's about her art's getting better, how many connections she has, and how it'll get her a billion dollars or whatever. <sighs> I'm the better artist, but I don't even know how to start getting my crap together like that. I look at the chasm between us, and it fills me with dread. It's just jealousy. I know it. It's just been getting worse every time she mentions getting further in life. Well, I can't even convince myself to try. It's different actually getting her upset at me, over this specifically. I just mentioned being someone she'd consider a real acquaintance and she blows up like that. You want to talk about it? No. You sure? Is that what you wanted to see me about? Partially. The other part is I'm a bit confused. I wasn't expecting things to go the way they did. So I came to see you to ask for help to make this right. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not apologizing if that's what you mean. Okay. I guess we just have the same option. <laughs> right. Funny. So, okay, so if you stay with Liz, you can ask her to either help you out or explain what she does when she's trying to avoid upsetting others. So I'm, I'm going to guess this one's a bad one on both, you know? Because that doesn't actually Probably. resolve anything. Yeah, I mean, you're on it. Yeah. No, that's not it. I bring my scalp to help my thoughts flow. I just let my words come out unfiltered. I'm serious here, Olivia. I need some help. I have her full attention now, and my words just keep coming. I feel like I did everything right, but it went wrong. Even Liz got into an argument. Though it wasn't heated, you got hurt. And that scares me. For a brief moment, Olivia's gray eyes widened in surprise. I have a few ideas on what to do, but nothing that won't make someone upset, or worse, get them mad at me. Why do you care about her opinion so much? Because you're my friends? I want us all to get along and enjoy the lunch we got invited to, but I don't know how to fix it. One of the things I can think of will probably just make you guys upset with me, so that's why I'm asking you. Me? You're, a uh, self-reliant. You're strong in your stance to never accept help on account of your condition. For the longest time, that confused me. Well, still does, but you do it. Confuses you? Well, it's like, others are willing to give, and giving feels good. So when you deny it, it's like telling them those thoughts don't matter. One way to put it. That's the part I don't get. Even though everyone stands to gain something for the sake of your goals, you don't accept it. You take the hard road. Saying it out loud, I like it. I'm willing to give it a shot, but I don't know how. What do you do when there's no good option? Wow. Uh, well, thanks. I guess. I'll put it this way. It'd make an alcoholic happy to give him alcohol, even though it hurts him. But sending him to rehab, and that's painful. It's not a happy journey to make. But it's good for him. Absolutely. That's my point. Don't worry about making others comfortable and happy if something needs getting done. Make, make, uh, blah, 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 blah. In my case, that means ignoring the help because my own goals need to be done. If it means if it makes some uncomfortable, then it's their problem, not mine. When something needs doing, you just gotta do it. And when no option seems like it'll make people happy, well, you do what you can. That makes sense. I'm making this up as I go along. I think so, yeah. If it's the right thing, you'll get the support you need. After all, I got you. And even if you don't, standing alone for your standards is cool. You'd be trying, and that's what matters. Yeah. Thanks, Olivia. Hey, you're welcome. Saying all that aloud is helping me understand a few things, too. 
ready to head back. I have an idea how to smooth everything over. Sure. I'm curious what you have in mind. Even if you think I won't like it. Okay, and now I assume we're going to get back to the decision here. Start heading back to the table. Olivia follows close behind me. Hey, you guys are back. Everything good? All cooled off? Yeah, everything's great. Let me give my two cents. Try to resolve everything. Ooh, interesting. You're both wrong. Yeah, because when, when we only talked to uh, Liz before, we only had uh, these three, right? Yeah. Interesting. I'll just tag this one real quick. But yeah, I, I want to do the one that just showed up here. I take a deep breath. I don't really want to have to do this. Olivia watches carefully. She talked me through this. I can do it. She won't stop being my friend over this. Get over yourself, Finko. Just say what needs to be said. Either that or this is going to be the fucking kill shot. <laughs> and it ends everything. <laughs> I think you're both acting silly. Really? Both of us? I didn't know what trying to get you guys conversing would... I didn't know that trying to get you guys conversing would make these sour feelings come up. And that was my mistake. My bad. But it's just ridiculous. Liz, I get Olivia was a shut-in and didn't open up to you back then. But that's clearly not the case anymore, is it? That was a question. No, I guess not. Then what use is it holding a grudge? Accomplishing your goals on your own is fine, that's your prerogative. But when you say Olivia is just treating you differently because she has something to gain, you know that's not right. And Olivia, I hate to say this, but you've been pretty thoughtless here as well. Liz is trying to do something nice for us, and hey, we all get to have a nice dinner in this crazy place. But when you say you'd rather be home painting, it's not just insulting Liz, it tells me you'd rather not be here with me as well. I love how much you've opened up to us, Olivia. What seems to be, what seems to me is that both of you just refuse to see eye to eye. Too much pride going on. As soon as we stop trying to get other, the other to act the way we think they should, the better. I thank you for your advice. Hope you'll be mad at me for saying this. Just please be a little more considerate. Get the fuck out of here, Inko! Scram! <laughs> That's it. Again, sorry if I went too far. You're right. That's a little eloquent for such a little argument. Oh, it was bothering me. And it would have turned into something more given time. Alright, that's fair. I appreciate the effort. That's what you had in mind when you asked me for advice? Yeah. <laughs> I figured it'd be something a lot worse. Like the roast of the century you've been holding in against us. But if that's it, then that's also decent. You're usually pretty thoughtful, so I guess I can see how that was a lot for you. Wait, yeah, thoughtful. I thought it was thoughtless for a second. <laughs> We're nearly adults. That's not going to bother us. At least, shouldn't. So, are you good? Yeah. Thanks, Inko. Thanks. Wow. Gator Wife gave us the advice just lambast them both. <laughs> That went much better than expected. After things settled down, we finished off our meals. Well, Olivia finished our meals. Liz had noticed it first when one of her whole pancakes simply vanished. And I thought my onion ring pile was looking smaller by the minute. Looking Olivia's way, she simply waved at us with the most bizarre concoction of onion rings, flapjack syrup, and beef on her plate. What? I'll make you guys better food than this later. The theft of our food stopped shortly after that. And though the portions had diminished, we were all thoroughly satisfied with the meal. I offered to pay, or at least pitch in with the check. But Liz refused. She insisted since it was her idea to begin with. But I had always figured it was the man's place to pay for a date. And this was a date. Kinda. Neither our hands neither of our hands lifted from the tiny leather booklet. <laughs> and I don't know how long we spent playing tug of war over it. Olivia at least found it amusing, even recording our stare down on her phone. 
But victory was mine, and I managed to palm my debit card to the waitress before Liz could give her back the bill booklet. With that done, all that was left for us was all that was left for us here was making the most of the view. Olivia led the way to the observation deck on the floor beneath the restaurant, and she immediately regretted it, as the blast of cold air even had me shiver a bit. The altitude plus the late fall weather meant the deck was mostly clear of guests, but the view was easily worth the cold, as I made a mental note to come back here one day with my DSLR. We slowly moved to the railing so we can fully take in the skyline, from the bluffs and out toward the ocean, along with the city skyscrapers that were dwarfed by the spire. As I scan over it, I double down on the mental note, because seeing Olivia silhouetted by this beautiful view is... Ugh. I don't get how you two could stand this temperature. Liz doesn't look that cold. All she's doing is rubbing her arms in a theatrical manner. I'm gonna be by the elevator, guys, okay? Her head moves next to Olivia, and there's a hush whisper <laughs> shared between them. You better make the most of this, you little fuck. <laughs> Did Liz just wingman us? Right. Finally, Liz's body turns and leaves, her head following shortly after with a beaming smile. Olivia? D don't ask. Her eyes remain on the horizon. Maybe it is a little colder, though, as Olivia's face is slowly turning red. Something up? Well... Her eyes trail down and her hands raise up until she's carefully examining her wrists. Watch as she carefully tests her hands, and occasionally she slowly flexes and rotates her hands. Oh. Mistype! Incorrect spelling! About he painting! About he painting! <laughs> Painting. About the painting. Not until you're better. I know. I've been thinking about it. I'm gonna be way out of practice when I'm all better. So you're going to practice? She smiles as she turns to me. Probably excited about the prospect of starting work on that soon. Yes. I have a mental image in mind. F I have a mental image in. <sighs> I have a mental image for it in my mind and everything. Her smile lessens though, and her tone becomes uneasy. I just want to make it perfect. I have the mental image, but I won't have the skill. Plus, between the carpal tunnel and rushing out all those pieces for me, yeah? I think I understand what she's getting at, but... Her smile's back again. Once I can paint again, I need time for practice. I want to show Mr. Iadikin that... <clears throat> Mr. Iadikin, the greatest piece I can create. Do you need anything? My words cut my thoughts off. No, you have all the paint and... No, I mean, do you need any help with your practice? Her face, her face glows red again. Dude, I'm just, it's getting bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping up way more now. M maybe. Well, I don't know how much up I can be. With, uh, what with my complete lack of painting talent. But otherwise, yeah, I'll do whatever I can for you, Olivia. I promise. I cement it with a smile and a thumbs up. Thanks. I think we only stood on the viewing deck for a few more minutes after a particularly cold draft had swept over us. Olivia figured she had had enough of the chilly air here. We made our way back inside to the elevator station, where Liz was standing idly. She and Olivia looked at each other for a moment. The two held their stare locked in on each other for about half a minute before Olivia looked to the side. So, uh, what else is there to do here? A lot, evidently. Once we had gotten back to the terra firma, once we had gotten back to terra firma, I guess just the ground, right? <clears throat> Liz had taken it upon herself to walk us around the entire block. The whole area was like a miniature theme park with a lot of street vendors selling tourist trap gifts. We spent the rest of the day just wandering the city park here, enjoying the late fall day to the best we could. Eventually, as the sun sunk below the horizon, Mr. Ferris found us. I had forgotten that we'd come here in the first place because of a business meeting of his. Liz and him waved us goodbye as they broke away and headed for the parking lot. While I pushed a very tired gator girl to the metro station. I don't think she minded much, honestly. She clutched her tail to her chest and used it as a makeshift pillow. She looked so sweet like that. It was the perfect background for my phone. She must never learn of this, though. 
because I don't think I'd survive. But it'd be worth it. Give us the picture now. <laughs> After Come going, on. we're not getting it. Oh wait, maybe we're gonna pull up our phone. After going home that night, Olivia texted me all night and well into the morning. We ended up talking about all sorts of things. Mia, our art, various shows, just about everything. Never seen that excited before. For someone with sore hands, she sure types fast. And for someone that doesn't much like talking at all, she sure types a lot. Certainly can't keep up. And when she didn't want to talk, she sent more doodles and sketches. Sleep wasn't really an option on my end either and Guts Doodle Ventures were quite entertaining to read. Since then, we've been texting more every night. Not as much, since I do need my sleep. But right now, I'm just waiting for art class to end. Mr. Triggums is apparently one of those substitutes that demands complete silence until class is over, but doesn't care beyond that. So even though I'm sitting about two feet away from Olivia, we're having to text each other. She's quite the storyteller with all these doodles. Like, right now, as I try to keep up with the tale of Guts riding a... What's he riding again? He's piloting the main golem from Gundam Finn. A giant robot from one of the shows she's been wanting us to watch together. I mean, we would. I totally want to. Just Olivia and I sitting side by side on my couch. Maybe as we're getting tired, we start leaning against each other. I could even offer to keep her... Mm -hmm. Daydreaming. Oops. Catching my phone on the precipice of my desk, I see that Olivia had sent an even more detailed version of the previous guts drawing. Like, he has to be cognizant, right? Like, he has to be like, oh yeah, I, I, I love her at this point. And this is why, for how dumb as it is, Finn is still fun to watch. What hmm. the fuck am I looking at? Is this texting arc right now? I guess so. I don't get it. Right. Yeah, I don't get this at all. What the hell am I looking at? You almost didn't get your phone just now. Hey, fuck off. If you'd watch it, you would. Angry rat! Though, only if it's with her. One day, yes. Teacher, don't want to lose my phone. After a couple minutes without any alerts, I accept that the Gator Girl really is done for now. With a quick look at the clock on the wall, I figure I've only got a few more minutes before I absolutely must hide my own phone. The Attican's been out for about a week and a half, so we've been stuck with Mr. Triggums. Oh, he doesn't like electives. I swipe back, looking through the pieces she'd sent me over the last couple hours. A lot of the references go over my head, but the few that don't earn a hearty chuckle from me. Then there's more detailed ones, the drawings that'd be good enough to actually render. Smile as I save those. I'd be meaning to ask if she'd finish one, back when she started doing this. But I never got around to it, simply saving it in a folder. A folder that's grown to a couple dozen now. Could Jerome Clarkson please come to the office? Would Jerome Clarkson please come to the office? Thank you. <laughs> the announcement makes me nearly drop my phone again. Who the fuck is Jerome Clarkson? They've been going on all morning, just calling random students to the office. Are they interrogating people? Maybe. About what? About the painting or whatever. Well, didn't they blame me for it? No, oh, I don't. Doesn't sound like it officially happened. Yeah, maybe. Like that wasn't the official story. A buzz from my phone has me check it again to see another message from the Gator Girl. Never mind. Teach is acting weird today. Weird? I look at our substitute. Mr. Triggums isn't paying any attention to us. In fact, he's just kind of looking through the desk he's at. Weird? You think they fired yet, uh, yet again? Yeah, probably. I, know, I was thinking it was the short day, maybe. That was another thing. I think the entire class realized something was up with how fast class periods were going today. Duh. My phone. Yeah, you're so easily startled. Yeah, well, sue me. What if it's Mia about to come get me, you know? 
Look at Jumpy my phone on the fuck. floor. The corner of the screen chipped away. Damn it. Picking it up before any of my classmates can step on it the way to lunch. I also just noticed that Ben wasn't here in class either. Ooh. What do you think happened? I no! Hurry up. Short day means lunch is earlier. And we got Spider-Man edition. <laughs> All right, Logan, I'm going to stop you here before you sneak in the other arc. <laughs> We're already like a good <laughs> six of the way through this, through text messages. But Jeremy just got juicy. Oh, fuck. What do, you, what do you mean juicy? There's no food. He's not hungry. But we're going to lunch, and Ben's missing, and everything's weird. It is very weird. Okay, are we actually calling it? Yeah. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, I mean, we got, like, another little arc there. Hopefully that was a chapter. Hopefully. Yeah, it felt like it was. It, it was feels... like a shorter one, though. It wasn't as long as the fucking Lights Out Monsoon chapter. Holy shit. Well, cause, well no, because it was like an hour, right? Well, we took an hour. Well, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, well, we're going to go ahead and end there then. Um. Oh, boy. Uh, do you want to try and do another stream of this? Uh... Well, I guess today. <laughs> today yeah all right cool cool uh when do you want to like try and run it you think yeah i'll let you know okay sounds good we'll plan it off stream uh but you're uh, i assume you're just gonna go ahead and drop out now right yep all right bye everyone goodbye jam i'll talk to you later we'll figure this out yeah all right well chat that's another that's another gator gator stream on the books Holy shit, I'm glad we actually uh, <laughs> decided to really jam this out this weekend. Because uh, who would have thought that we'd be here this fucking long? Certainly not me. I'll, I'll tell you that for free. But, uh, yeah, we'll be streaming again, hopefully sometime around the same time we started today. Earlier on than we usually do, so that way we can, fingers crossed, crank out the rest of this. Uh, I think we're probably... If we're on, okay, let's see here. Jen said we had finished chapter 11. If that arc where we were in town counted as a chapter, then that's going to be, means we're going to be on chapter 12, chapter 13 out of 19. I think we could probably finish that in one more stream. So get excited. Probably one more big stream, and then we'll have uh, finished up hugging, oh, excuse me, hugging that gator girl. But yeah, anybody who's in chat, be lurking otherwise, hope you had a good time watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. And I'll catch you in like, I don't know, 15 hours? <laughs> Bye.